Oh, I saved it. I saved it. I brought it back from the dead. I literally brought that back from the dead. <laughs> oh, that was dead. That... How we did that was... Ooh. Right. Now we can start the stream. Jesus Christ. Welcome back, everyone. This likes to get right, isn't it? I'm going to start by wiping my uh, lenses. How is everyone, by the way? Getting quite a nice view of the lenses here now. You can see that's just the grease from last time on it. So it just, it, it gets greasy. It just, I'm telling you, it just gets greasy in here. Oh, welcome, Bobby. Here with me, very honest on PSVR 2 is my deciding factor. I think, honestly, Bobby, I don't think I'm any more, well, I don't want to compare myself with people, but all I would say is I'm still using VR 2, so when I was deciding to buy it, when I was reviewing it, when I was playing it, I was thinking about it from the perspective of someone who, you know, this is a lot of money for me, for most people. Casperi77 oh, said. Also, hello, chat. Oh, Jesus. We're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> okay, hopefully, the text speech will just be to me now. NN1N said. What the hell? Been waiting six minutes, Kaman Kyrief. Smiling face with open mouth and cold sweat. It's Smiling live now, face it? with open mouth and cold sweat. Fire, fire, fire. What the hell? said. I agree, Bobby. He's made my decision easier. Time to head off to the PS store. Why is streaming so complicated? Bobby McGee said. Stop it. Yes, Shmwakal. Roman Setko said. There we go. I think it's with me now. Ooh. Hopefully it's... Yes. Only I can hear it now. Right, let's get into VR. Now I can hear you all. So welcome Funky, welcome T, welcome Roman, welcome Bobby, welcome Schmoikel. Schmoikel's such a good name. Welcome Nathan, Kaz... Ken Scott in the house as well. Kate, Latka, Willow is here as well. Welcome, Michael Sutton as well. Ivan's here. Get ready for some open lobbies. Get ready for some open lobbies. Right, let's put on... Oh, it's not going to work like this, is it? Let me get my wheel on as well. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, how do I turn it on? Welcome, Amanda. Let me actually just change my battery as well while i'm here you know what i should have why is my life just so busy i would love to just arrive here with like time to spare chill out a little bit make sure everything's working you know maybe do a test stream why not stuff like that instead i have to arrive last minute run from the car get here just turn everything on this isn't working which worries me greatly because this is my battery. <laughs> Please. It's working. Can you hear this? That's what comes in my ears. I need a par. Angela Cullen. Yes, let's get Angela in. What would she do with me? I'd retire her. Oh god, it's all falling off. Okay. Hopefully, we don't have... We had some weird shakes last time. Welcome, Al Capone. Oh, nice on the rating. Gonna work. Nice 
Right. We're rolling. We're rolling. We're in. Right, now the stream's going to go funny because we're going to set up a lobby. Let's do it. Actually, what's the legend? To, how much? Oh, I'm going to cash. And look at me like a mug looking at this. Someone in our Discord just brought the McLaren F1 for 20 million and they're... Oh, yellow F50. I don't have the cash. Oh, 911 GT1. All I can afford is an e E-Type's not bad. All right, let us know who's in the... Right, it's going to go funny here. It's going to go funny. Oh, shoot. Yeah, don't forget to smash that like. Also, uh, this is a giveaway stream. Let me pin this. It's a illusion, optical illusion, because it's camera looking good, screen looking from a camera looking good, screen. Uh, so if you want to win a Logitech G29... Bear with me, let me just get this. Oh my god, I'm such a bad streamer. You don't see the pros do this. You wouldn't see Key 25 like this, would you? Let's be honest. I'm not going to be the Kirith 25 anytime soon. Messing around like we are here. I want to copy this link. I can't see. God, I might need to go to the opticians. There we go. Blah, 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 blah. If you want to win a free steering wheel and actually a headset, then just click that link. Oh, hangover, Michael. Tell us about the hangover, though. That sounds like fun. How did you earn the hangover? Yeah, spa. Oh. Let's do this in group twos because this is the combo next week. Huh? Why is it not giving me two? I think this is going to be too fast. Let's go on inters. There we go, chat. Let's go out like that. And what what did you earn, Ivan? You're in Ireland, aren't you? Ireland won the Grand Slam. I honestly, this is the first year of my life I haven't followed the Six Nations. Oh, bull of bull of the Grigio. Very nice. Very nice. How much money do I have? 769 credits. 1,000 credits. 769,000 credits. <laughs> Nathan, do you want to do something fun after this race? What we could do is, I can call you on Discord and you can give me info in the thing. If you want to do it, we could do it. We try it. Let's try it for one race. Oh, nice one, Takea. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, the the, the re responses I have on PSVR are so mixed. Like, half of them are like, I'm returning it. I've, I've, ret I've actually returned it. And half of them are like, I'm actually loving it. There's very little in the middle, to be honest. Oh, God, I hope I got a car. You can't buy a car here. What we'll do in an in an, in a race in a little bit, Nathan, is you will spectate the race. Or I will run in no hard, and you will spectate me, and you can let me know what's going on, and I'll call you on Discord, and you, so you'll be in. We'll I'll, we'll add you to the stream basically. 
It's a concept I have in my head that I can't really explain. Is this Inter's weather? So this is the combo for next week, but it won't be wet probably. Oh, that's how I flash. Twenty loves the PS4. I mean, it's a lot of money, so if you're going to love it, then that's the best of both worlds, right? Let's do it in a few races, Nathan. Right. I was going to go out and just check everything. Oh, don't do that. Just check everything's sort of working. Let me know if it's working in the stream. Because I haven't driven since last... Wow, well, I can't remember last time I drove. Ah, we're in VR, very nice. Oh! Ah, oh, there's nothing like being back. I love this one! With the head-up display. Two and nine cars. You know what I've been collecting recently? I've been collecting... No joke. I've been collecting uh, model cars. Now, can you see, chat? The camera's going a bit weird. Let me just park it here. The camera's going a bit weird. Can you see? It might say lost tracking. Why is it moving like that? Because I'm very well lit. I'm very well lit. Make sure I pull my shorts down in case we go camera on. Don't want to get anyone more than they budgeted for in the stream. There we go. Yeah, can you see can you see chat that the camera's moving around a little bit? It's very weird, isn't it? Oh yeah, happy Mother's Day to all the um mothers or children out there, which I presume. Yeah. So let's just keep an eye on this tracking. I mean I love this car by the way, so it's, what the hell is this? What the hell is this going on? You see? There's something very weird we're tracking. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to re... Ah, uh, everyone's ready. Okay, let's let's do a race. And if I need to redo the tracking, I'll redo the tracking. Let's crack on, let's go. Oh, okay. Let's wait a little bit. Can people see that with the tracking? Welcome, David. Welcome, Big Ready as well. Big Ready is the top level supporter of this channel. Highest membership tier. Can we get some claps out for Big Ready? Like, the support he's giving is absolutely unbelievable. I just bought a new camera, which is just such good quality. And this is all thanks to your support memberships. Welcome, Encrypted. Come on! Oh, let me do the grid as well. It's like I've forgotten how to stream. Who wants to come to the bat with me? Nathan! Who else is coming back to us? T, I know you're fast as well. Let's go to the bat. We're going. We're going, everyone. We're going. White smiling face. Welcome to Yes Films. Ah, oh, Ken Scott with the claps. Another legendary member. Let's go. It's going to be grid start, everyone. I can't see the full start, Jack. I can't see the lights. How am I not going to full start? They need to fix this. <laughs> oh, big moments. Oh, there's a Honda going the wrong way. Okay, this is a really nice display, though. And I like the yellow arrow on the dash, it's like in the middle of the screen for me. Not on the dash, on the uh, windshield. Okay. Come 
Right, got another Nissan ahead there. I can feel the tree force rattling everything. Welcome, Harry. Best person in the stream today. Oh, there's a TCR driver here. They did beat us in the team versus team, but we put up a great show. Huge congratulations to everyone involved in that. Nice, right, got Alexis in the rear view as well. Oh, a bit of contact. So much downfalls in these cars, I'm not used to. A bit of spray, indicating it might be wet there. Try and dive up the inside. Oh yeah, exactly, David, thank you. You must be buzzing right now as a magpie, right? Oh, look everyone running right! <laughs> I can flash people, can't I? Yeah, look at the flash button! Anyone in chat watch um, Sabring this weekend? Huge drama. Oh, that's a flat corner there. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, I didn't like that. It's decided to stop us. Oh, no! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Just be... Let it be okay. Let it be okay. Come on. We're okay. We're good. We're good, please. We're good. Oh, man. Hang on a second. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm gonna have to re right. Why is it struggling? This handbrake wasn't working in there, sport mode, was it? Is the stream doing okay by the way? There's a stream quality kit. Hang on. Hang on, let me just load it quickly. Okay, fine. Okay, weird. Uh, Hang on. So let me just set this play area again. Just looking around. It really doesn't like it. I feel like one of the cameras isn't working or something. This is shuffling around like I wonder if it's actually broken. Is it actually broken? Is it maybe the gyro is broken or something? Because it's not mapping one to one. Let me put that on the right like that a little bit. Yeah, some is going up with everything. Hang on. Oh, bear with me. Bear with me, chat. Let me just scan everything. Yeah, network. <laughs> Hang on, chat, bear with me. Welcome, Bobby. Again. Come on, why are you tracking this track already? 
Okay, it's tracked. But it's still something is not right. We might have to go we might have to go non VR. Might have to go non VR. Something's not right. Yes. It's like some it's it's like it's can you see it shuffling around? Where are these hang on. Where's my clock? Here's my clock. Okay. Stop! Oh, is everyone waiting for me, by the way? Let's get out. <laughs> okay. What if we wipe the... You can see what I'm doing here, can't you, on the camera? Wipe these lenses. Okay, let's see if it lights it. Let's get in a car. Let's get on. Yeah, there's so much downforce in these two. So I think, on chat, it's like when I look down, I feel like it moves, doesn't it? But I wonder if it's better than before, but like when I move down, it, it kind of puts me in a different position. Like, why the hell am I this high now? What's going on? Chat, what is this? Something's really wrong. I feel like it's the gyro. I don't feel like it's the cameras. I feel like the gyro is messed up. Has anyone had this issue on PSVR 2? Where it's just not locking, like... I'm, I'm quite well lit. It's daytime, there's a window, I've got the light. So what's going on? This is so frustrating. Screw it, let's just do non-VR. Let's go old school, but... Something is not right with this headset. I've been very careful with it. No, I, I, I did it the other day. I think the stream's better now, by the way. Let me turn this off. So I had, when I was making the Nautilus Life video this week, I had the same thing. So I, I reset it all. I did it with a light off, the light off, light on, light off, which is why when I did the last video, um, I had the light off because all the time before I've been getting light on, light on. Um, I've scanned around many times. The lighting situation is the same as it's been. So something, something changed, basically. Something changed. Oh, Cheech wants it in the bin. I haven't tried that yet, Michael. But let's start a race here. We're going to be in a non VR. Okay, going back into non VR. <laughs> Are we going to be okay? There was some big issue with the frames, by the way. I don't know what was going on, but now it seems to be okay. I don't know if anyone's come across that issue before. Not a fun one. Welcome, Arian. Like, am I going to be any good in 2D? This is my first race in 2D. 
on GT7 for about two weeks, I think. So let's see. Well, firstly, everything feels so far away. It's like I have to, I want to be closer. <laughs> I feel like I'm an old person sort of having to... You know when like old people look over their glasses? It's definitely not as intuitive. The graphics feel a lot better though. I mean, I'm, I'm driving. I'm overtaking people. I, I instinctively went to look at the mirror there, but you can't do that in TD. Oh! Oh! No! Can I save it? No! Oh. <laughs> well, that was that was like Sabring last night in IMSA, wasn't it? Catch up. We'll find some cars on our way, I'm sure. I don't have the benefit here of the HUD, actually, which I probably... There's no point really driving in... Hang on, let me get onto bumper. What am I doing? Get onto that bumper view. Okay, now this is my old school view. And it's kind of like... Oh, I was going to say, it's very comforting to be back. Come on. No rev indicator in this view. <laughs> this, this... The concept of driving in this... With no HUD, it's just stupid. Like, there's no benefit to having no HUD here. So what you see, chat, is exactly what I see. Yeah, Ken Spring was a um, made the headlines, didn't it? Good weekend for endurance car racing. I think. Definitely more, you have to be more intuitive because I can't see the rev limiter. I won't be as precise, but it is a bit more involving. Can't see the rev number either, but they That's important. Schmorg says final hour of spring as well. What's next on the calendar? Welcome Yasser as well. Corvette. Uh, Chevrolet won, didn't they? What is the lobby name? I uh, can't remember. Welcome Kit. I think it, it might just be KCR lobby or something. But yeah, this, this VR headset, just randomly, this week, one day I went to make a video, I was like, this is weird. Everything's moving around, nothing is locking, it keeps losing tracking, and I haven't done anything different. And there was no update I installed in between, so I was like, Ooh. And all I do is I take it off and I put it here and I put it on again, so I haven't dropped it or anything, I haven't done anything silly with it. And the lighting conditions are the same, so I, I really am at a loss, I mean... In a way, it's a good thing it's happening to me because I will investigate it and I will make a video on it. It's obviously quite wet there. Long Beach. Ooh, Long Beach. Wow, there's going to be some crashes there for sure. Um, back on. YouTube Live Lobby. Okay, there it is. Schmoikel's got it. You can't change HUD, by the way, when you're in a lobby race. Bit of a weird thing, as I found out in a one of our KCR League races. I have to say, though, it's kind of like... With PSVR 1 in GT Sport, when I was playing in PSVR 1 in cinematic mode, it took me a long time to get back to 2D. But I found it really difficult. Whereas now, I'm, I'm basically... I think because the graphics are a lot better, in the PSVR 2, it's kind of, I think, a smaller jump. I don't know if anyone watching has been playing in PSVR 2 and gone back. I'm 
overlap the thing. I think... I think from a pure driving perspective, I think I can now say that PSVR 2 is just hands down a better experience than GT7. You have that sensation of speed. You feel like you're close. Like the, the amount that my this TV takes up, my monitor takes up my vision now is really small. Like my field of view is like from here to like here, and then the monitor's here. So I feel less involved this engage. We're gonna be streaming to about nine o'clock tonight, Kip. We're gonna be doing some lobbies as we're doing now. Then we're gonna stream the um, finals of the Logitech G challenge. And then we're gonna uh, do some lobbies after. Yay, we didn't spin that time. Are my lights gonna work? Let's see, let's try the lights. Yeah! Nice scenario. It is literally a different game. I mean, they could have sold it as a different game. They, they could have made a lot of money <laughs> by selling GT VR. I'm, I'm convinced. And maybe they should get more credit for not having done that, right? I mean, it's arguably one of... The, can anyone think of a more generous free update in a racing game? Ever. I mean, let me know. I mean, even Forza charges, like, money for, like, little sort of nonsense DLC. That's a bit harsh, but... The GT7 DLC is not a nonsense. This is like, it is a whole game, basically. Marino no longer race without VR. Nice. Can't believe how much time we lost. We didn't gain it. I feel so lost here. Don't have any Delta. Okay, I can see the cars now, but... They wouldn't get a player base. Uh, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. To be a business person, but that what hasn't stopped a lot of. If they if their pure thing was money, I think they could have made more money. I think, but uh, let me turn that HUD on. Uh, let me turn that HUD on. And let's let's go GT three here. I, I feel like I haven't had a race yet. <laughs> Actually, now it's given me two things. Uh, group three. There we go. Let's go group three. DC, fair play, mate. You're the first YouTuber I've seen to cover that no HUD is the future. Yeah, I mean, it's a little... It's a, it's, I've just turned it off. But <laughs> um, I'm really worried about this. I feel like the gyro is broken or something. Because it's the same setting... Unless it's this microphone always in the way. But I feel like it's when I look down. So when I do the scan thing, it scans the TV, it scans the wheel. There's really not a lot of space here. So when it loses tracking, is it because it hasn't got anything to track? Or maybe I need to track. I just don't know, chat. I just don't know. Welcome, Brendan's Hobbies. Is the prize cheaper? No, the prize is a G923 and a wireless headset. Here, those GT3 cars. What should we go in? Let's go in my Peugeot. I look at that full GT, this looks so good. Nice from DC. Sweating in VR doesn't make CS films yet. <laughs> well, we did the hour long race. We did last weekend, we did three hours of racing back to back at Spa, and it was the best. I've uploaded the highlights video of one, two, and next Saturday we'll do the, we'll finish the trilogy with the last uh, race from that. It was just so good. So good. Peugeot, I said G3, exactly, exactly. Look at this livery. Flash the lights. So good, isn't it? Oh, break. Oh, we got the HUD back. Look at this. Now I can see if I'm riding the brake. I can see how much brake I'm applying. I can see the moisture meter. I can see all of this sort of stuff. So let's let wait for people to uh, join up.
and then we'll go. Yeah, those races were just, as we said at the time in the stream, you kind of have to be there. Is that a bit better? Can you hear me better now? Let me know if I'm cutting out or not. Oh, everyone's joined up. Nice. Oh, look at T66 in the nice livery. You love to see it. Let's wait for our friends here. You can hear awesome Brendan, thanks for the confirmation. There's a Supra there. Nathan is in the Ford GT. We gave away a pro, we've given away a Logitech G Pro. You just gotta make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're in our Discord, and then you can win a G Pro. Someone in our community has won a Logitech G Pro. That's all I can say. If you're not subscribed. Welcome Andy. Andy, we Andy knows we're racing in his livery. Right, let's crack on because we got we got a race basically. Welcome help stuck. Have I watched yesterday's I don't have any plan I didn't watch the whole thing, but I've seen some highlights. I don't have any plans to do to bring in iRacing actually. Um but I guess VRS will be there. Maybe I can do VRS. Who won the G Pro? A guy called Midnight on it in our Discord. Right, let's go. Back in 2D. 2D fans are happy about this. Let's go. Oh, someone's full started. We're on the intermediate tides. Is that going to be the best tide to be on? Oh, the Citroen's very slow. Or the Peugeot, whatever it is. Oh. Look how many Porsches are... Oh, there's a big murder. There's a huge murder. Officers. Officers, arrest someone. That's a huge murder. What has happened there? Did anyone see <laughs> how that panned out? Here's Ken Scott. Oh, we're going to take to the escape road. It's Peugeot against Peugeot. Look at this. Come on. Come on. Oh, here's Nathan. Yeah, don't mind if I follow you. Oh, Nathan's gone. <laughs> People taken to the escape road. They're going to come back. There's two by two here. It's insane. Vassals everywhere you look. Definitely going to go up the inside. Oh, my. I will say in 2D, the graphics are so much better. Like, the graphics are just so much better in 2D. It's, it feels... I'm looking at, like, the lights and everything. It's just so much better here. You do miss that in VR. If you buy a VR thinking it's going to be the same graphics, it is not going to be the same graphics. Please, please, please don't do that. Come on, that's much grid. There's T66. Awful rejoin. <laughs> I think I probably had a bad one there as well. Is that the leader up there? We can see. I'm still kind of used to driving that group too. Let's see if we can catch up with our teammate T66 been representing the community extremely well some of our competitive races if you want to race for curious pt racing just join the discord hit the emoji and you're in not the not the strictest of entry requirements someone by the way is loitering at eau rouge i can see on the map so just so we know someone's loitering is it my first rodeo? <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh, no, 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 no. I saved it, kind of. Come on, back. It's the worst bus stop ever. Terrible. Just watch out, Eau Rouge, everyone. Watch out. Yeah, they flags are out. It's a lapped uh, BMW here. Stop to let the bus stop. On. Yeah, exactly. It is called the bus stop. Someone's rejoining it. Oh, Rouge, here he is. Here they are. But we're just going to go past them. Oh. Failed, failed, filthy driving attempt evaded. Yes, give us the big boost, Nathan. That's what we're talking about. We want to get to the front here. 
Who wants to see us do more karting with Nathan in real life, by the way? Let us know. Oh, I've gone wide. Go on, Nathan, I'll follow you. Somehow it went. Oh, whoa! No! Nathan! Nathan, wait for me! Wait for me! Let's go. It's carnage. It's filth. Sun's out, mate. Anyone start the dry times? Look at this very respectable Genesis here. Very respectable. Oof. Didn't give him a lot of space, to be fair. <laughs> we sort of bullied our way through there a little bit, didn't we? Hinters are going to struggle. If there is anyone on dry tyres, they're going to massively profit. Box. People saying box. What do we think, chat, about that call? Should we box going into the last lap to save our intermediate tyres? Do you think that's going to be a good decision? Let me know. Oh, the Genesis is quick. Look at this. Apparently LEDs. Oh, maybe it's the... But the thing is, Ivan... Oh, well, I do have LEDs on the right. But nothing's changed since we had it before, so... But I appreciate you looking at the... We need to work this out, really, don't we? Because it's very weird and unusual. What I have is I have a big diffuse light here, and I've got LEDs there. And what can happen is the frequency of them can be different. Ferrari straps, yeah. <laughs> Lou says you are a Smeagol. I'll have to take it as a compliment, Luke. That Genesis is absolutely destroying us. Thanks to the escape routes. See whether we can catch up with Caramel, but I'm, I'm not optimistic. Halbstart's down here as well. Halbstart might be on the dry tyres. Oh, Halbstart's catching us quickly. I need another rain shower, really. Look at Nathan's already in P2. Okay, we decided not to box. I think that's the correct decision, but I might be wrong. Oh! My tyres are struggling, Alps Dark's here. Let's go try and get around the outside of it. A bit of contact. There he is. Funky's in the house now. Lock up your Porsches. Oh no, I've made a terrible choice here on the tyres. Welcome, Odell. Made a terrible choice. Someone's waiting. Someone's waiting before the bus stop. Look at the track map. <laughs> we can see them. We can see them. Presumably, presumably, they're watching this street. And they're going to let us go past, and then they're going to ram us at the bus stop. Presumably that's the intention. Let's see, maybe I'll... Or do we work out their little plan? Find out. Find out. Welcome, Metal GT, good to see you. Hope you're well. Funky's in the house. Coming in now to the bus stop. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. We can all... We can all have a push in the pool. You right? Everything okay with you? Everything okay at home? <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay at home, mate? Ooh! When you got robbed of P... What happened at the top of that race? What happened? I wasn't expecting it to dry out. It's kind of a big gamble, isn't it? If you're not using VR, can you move yourself down the screen? Ah! Oh! Yes, we can. Andy just... Andy just knows everything. Hang on a second. Whoops. What about there? Nice. 
He wants a hug, yeah. Let's give him all a hug in the chat. Um, let's give him all a hug in the chat and... Um, uh, thank him for the content, basically. Soft tyres. I'm going to go again on softs. I'm going to go again on softs. Top tip from Andy. Well, unfortunately, we have to kick our uh, friend here. Just created our account. <laughs> Dutch gens. Unfortunately, is uh, going in the bin. But he'll be back. Right, let's roll. Let's go. Soft runners messed up at the front. Yeah, I'm going to try and... I'm now on the softs, I think. Please do VR Le Mans 10 hour endurance all race 24 hours. Hang on. In, in your comment, Ray, you went from 10 hours and it escalated to 24 hours. <laughs> right, we do. Anyone who's on softs, we're going to struggle. Okay. <laughs> we're going to struggle in this one. Starting on the soft tyres in the rain. Are we mad? Yes. Let's just get around last source. Oh, a lot of cars coming in. Got the KCR livery drivers. Oh, very clean though. Just evading some drivers. Time to get up a rouge. Look at that. Not even a track cut. Out to P9. It's going to condense massively here at Lake Key. Look at the moisture meter on the bottom left. So we are really in danger here of spinning. See you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a little wave. Oh, it's terrible rejoin. Look at these positions. Up to P4. Up to P3. Oh, the scenes. We're on the soft tyres. What's going on? I just everyone's on the softs now. Oh, sorry, bro. <gasps> no, 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 no. I've gone round. Can we YOLO it? Can we YOLO it? Can we YOLO it? Yes! Hopefully we didn't lose too much time though. Oh, sorry. Side by side with help stop. We are the soft. We, we had so much momentum in that race. We just got to try and um, keep it up. These are all the soft boys, isn't it? How start, Nathan. That caramel soup is in a little bit of trouble, isn't he? Nathan with a big moment. Maybe the Ford GT is quite difficult to control. Look how tall I feel in my RC's head. Oh, look at the Supra. <laughs> look at the Supra. Oh, I've got mine as well. We've all gone. Saved it, saved it, saved it. Super fast indeed. How is it big? Oh, went a little bit deep there. Just by a couple of centimetres. <laughs> Heisenberg's pitted. He's coming off the inters. He's, that's the, that is the real strat. If Heisenberg can pull that off, that is the strat. But let's see. Side by side. Oh, compressing. Look at the radar. Oh, we got someone out of Rouge. We got someone out of Rouge. Look at the mini map, everyone. Look at the mini map. They just want to hug. They just want to be loved. They just want to be loved. That's it. Watch out. There's someone causing chaos. Oh, no. <laughs> we hit them. We hit them. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. I know Funky's going to be... Oh, no. 
We've got a rolling roadblock. It's very even harder for us. That sense of speed down the Kemble Stray is absolutely insane. It's like uh, Quidditch, isn't it? Right, no damage, luckily. We've come out with Heisenberg. Deary me. Deary me. Right, the tyres are coming into um, operating range, though. Should be able to push, push, push. 18 seconds, including some inter runners. Can live channel last forever? I mean, <sighs> kind of, I guess, yeah. Oh, there's been a big crash here. Big accident. Terrible luck. Right, can we catch a Canadian driver in PSVR 2? Let's see. Five seconds. Presumably people on the internet will have to see. Is there a quick way to find the lobby? If you search Kirith in it, it should come up, but it won't show if it's full. I don't know if the lobby's full right now. TS Film says, please get dirty drivers. Who's the dirty drivers? Anyone being dirty in this lobby? Surely not. I'm back up with a super. Come on! Last lap. Where can we get to on this last lap? They're, they're just around the corner. We are catching the leaders here. Super must be on Inters. Just put in the long side. Oh, side by side into a Rouge. Side by side. Not really side by side. Oh, fair play, sir. Fair play. Fair play. That was bravery from the Supra. And he's in VR as well. Can you imagine what that felt like in VR? <laughs> oh, yeah. We have to find out who these people are. What a moment that was. I think we got our battle right here, to be honest. Half decent drive. Again, it's side by side. Oh, I can't get past the Supra. I can't get past the Supra. Come to the bus stop. He's gonna come to the bus stop. Here we go. All right, we'll have a look, Ken Scott. It's gonna have to be ascend. It's gonna have to be ascend. Maybe round the outside. Turning. Oh, a little bit of contact. Oh, I think we made it. I think we made it. Let me see. Let me know you saw that one in chat, by the way. Recovery. Oh, I think we could have done so much better. I think we could have done so much better. But uh, really close at the front there. Look at that. Help start Nathan coming back. Oh. Right. Should we try and do... Do we want to do another one here? This is quite a fun combo. Should we do another one? Nathan's Ollie needs to go. Oh, I don't know. This this guy's definitely not related. Definitely not related. Definitely not related, this guy. Definitely not an alt account. Who is this guy? What do you like playing? Oh. 
Ah, uh, he's not he's not as good at us as Project Cars. He hasn't got the Project Cars experience that we have. Look at that. What mutual games do we have? He likes playing Minecraft. He played Minecraft 20 days ago, so he's probably like three. Um, and he absolutely loves Rocket League. Look at him. Look at this guy in Rocket League. Revenge of the Battle Cast, Chaos Run. Look at that. He's actually almost completed it. Hours played. 861 hours he spent playing Grand, Turis uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. Seek help, my friend. Seek help. <laughs> Didn't like Project Cars 2. That was too, probably too um, technical for them. Liked FIFA 18. Liked FIFA 18. We were quite a similar FIFA 18, actually. He liked the crew. What else has he played a lot of? He really liked FIFA 16. So he was a big fan of FIFA 16. He likes UFC. He's been playing FIFA 23. Didn't like ACC. ACC a bit too realistic for him, I think. Um... He likes playing FIFA as well. 780 hours on Fortnite, everyone. So, absolute chad. This guy, I think, basically needs to get out a little bit more. I say we let him play. I say we let him play. I say we let him play and he's just sort of like the village idiot. Let's do it. We're going to do one more with... Uh, this guy in here and, and see what he does we just have to avoid him we'll do one more and then we'll we'll get rid but he is he must be a fortnite professional i just want to check how many hours is this guy spending playing games hang on a second hang on hang on a second 800 hours so he's he spent a thousand hours in rocket league and gta alone and then he spent 500 hours in Rainbow Six Siege. 700 in FIFA 17. This guy literally does not, unfortunately, have a life. So I say we pity him and we let him play. That's what I say. So let's roll. Oh, KCR, Define Affinity is near. Let's wait for him to join. I say we do a charitable deed here. And we kind of make him feel like he has friends. Um, I'm going to start on soft skin. No, 1,000 hours in G7 means you're, you're a connoisseur. You're a racing enthusiast. You're a car enthusiast. 1,000 hours in G7 is very different to 1,000 hours on Fortnite. Let's be very clear about that. <laughs> well, we can't start while there's a KCR driver joining. That's just not right. Right, wait for him to join. Then we're going to be good to go. Might have to grid him. Oh, do, is he going to put us at the back? Oh, he puts us at the back. Nice. Okay. Right, let's roll, everyone. And then we'll go to different track. Go on, different track. Welcome, Martin. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Let us know how things are going in Martin's world. Odo says, a thousand hours in Fortnite. Is that same G7? No, it isn't. I think everyone here knows that it isn't. Should show up, Martin. Let's go, let's go. Hopefully the rain's going to be heavy. Oh, no, we're starting on the soft tyres. Soft tyres want the rain to stop as soon as possible. Let's go. Here we go. Three. Olé. Nice, nice, nice. Gaining positions, we love it. Funky's leading us out. Up a rouge. It's getting dark now, you love to see it. Just about making the corner. Someone's coming up. Oh, it's Nissan GTR. And the Genesis. Oh, I'm getting swamped here. Absolutely swamped.
up the inside, get a few... Oh, I've gone a little bit deep, to be fair. Someone's facing the wrong way, got reset. Coming in and around the KCR drivers now. There we go. Get a few... Oh, the WRX has gone, or the Lancer even. And there's a Porsche going, and someone else has gone as well. Was that T66? We're up to second place. Chat, have you ever seen a start like it? From second, from last to second place on the soft tyres in wet conditions. But we get swamped again. What a race this is turning out to be. Going to try and hold the inside here. Heisenberg and the Porsche goes wide. Oh! He's going to rejoin there. How's he rejoin Heisenberg? Very good, very good. There's a Lexus now leading us out. Maybe on the intermediate tyres. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, what a start this has been. It's like a Max Verstappen next start, isn't it? Try not to get on the uh, rough stuff there. Lost a bit of traction. Try and force people to go around the outside. Is that a Lamborghini involved? How suck in the Lambo? Not a four-wheel drive in Group 3. Neither is a GTR. Oh, this is on the edge of your seat stuff. Try and slot in now. We actually made the corner a little bit. See coming back at us. So I think Define is probably on the intermediate tyres. Looks like it stopped raining. Heisenberg is probably on the soft tyres. Oof. Yellow flag. Oh, there's someone. There's a dirty car. We've got to get past the dirty car. Look at the mini map. The dirty car's waiting before Eau Rouge. I forgot. There is the dirty driver. Here is the... There's two of them. There's two dirty drivers. Oh, no. <laughs> there's two dirty drivers. Oh. It's absolute chaos. It's a joker. Absolute carnage. We've lost out there for sure. Here's T66. It's a level. It's not. Oh, but there's another Genesis. It's blind. Uh, I think PSN the same as the uh, name there, I think. Oh, no. Right, that dirty driver is going to wait for us again. It's a Lambo going wide. It's half start. Back up into P8. There's a Porsche reversing off the track. Very unusual. Oh, I've done that. T66 with a huge drift. That's avoiding. Okay, back up to P6. Back up to P6. Is there a dirty driver? Look at the dirt. There's one of them driving backwards now. Look at the mini map. Absolutely. Phil Kimi Velocini wannabe. Look at the sunset though. It's all kicking off. Someone is driving backwards from the bus stop. Watch out, everyone. They're waiting at the bus stop. They got no friends. No one to pick them up from school. So they've got to take the bus. That's why they're at the bus stop. We're coming around with some with some hugs and some support. Let's see. 12 seconds off the lead, but anything can change. Really anything can happen here. Literally anything. Here we go. What's going to happen? Keep an eye on the mini-map, everyone. Someone's driving back over the start-finish line. Yellow flags are out. Yellow flags are out. There's a bit of carnage. There's a bit of carnage here. Oh, I don't think he really succeeded. I think that's a big F for that one for the dirty driver. What have we got coming up here? Someone at Eau Rouge. Oh, they're here. Way! <laughs> That's how you deal with a dirty driver, everyone. That's how you deal with a dirty driver. Deary me. A little bit embarrassing, isn't it? Makes us look good, though, so I'm great for it. We're out to P7. Funky's ahead of us. Two KCR drivers. Let's see what we can do. Anyone? We think Define's on the intermediates in that Lexus, so surely he'll start to struggle. Let's see if we can follow. Fun Funky's done a really good run here.
last lap, but um, hopefully we can get quite a few positions. Some chopping and changing up there, let's see. Go purple. There's a super gone wide, go go around the outside a bit. Oh funky, I killed him! I've killed funky! I've killed my mod! <laughs> I've killed my moderator! Sorry, funky! <laughs> He's gonna be letting all the spam bots in now. Surely we got... Oh, Nathan's here as well. What's happened to Nathan? Nathan was in the Lancer. Oh. <laughs> Go late, very late. Go defensive very late, I should say. Look at the sunset. Here's a Lexus, which we think is on the Inters. That's P4. What a race this is. We've got Nathan to deal with, and we got a car ahead on Inters. Nathan's going to try and get a better exit. Oh, I've gone wide. I've gone wide. There goes Nathan. That might work out to be more advantageous, though, because we'll get the slip. What about a big send into the bus stop? In my Peugeot. Oh, he's got a penalty. <laughs> he got a penalty. No, Nathan. I didn't see any penalty, but let's... Oh, they've got their driver names out. That's why. Up, up, up. Oh, we got a dirty driver. Two of them. There's two of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it didn't work out for them, did it? Didn't work out for them at all. We're going to go over. I imagine we all just going to get that penalty. Dirty drivers hate him because they just can't ram him. Just unrammable. What a race that was. Finishing in P5. Or P6 even. Nathan got a huge penalty there. Huge penalty. That is going to be some content. That is for sure. The thumbnail on that one is going to absolutely pop off. Oof. People scribbling notes. Martin's in as well. We gotta kick him, yeah, we gotta kick him. We gotta kick him, unfortunately. Who is it? Who are these people? Which people are they? GT7 Battle Royale, yeah. <laughs> it was like, it is a really interesting dynamic, isn't it? Because you kind of see people that, like, even if they get past you, you might see them again because they might get taken out. Ah, oh, they left. They're just, they're just jealous of the community we have. That's it. They're just jealous, chat. They're jealous that we stream and there's a hundred people watching, and we're having fun in lobbies, and then we go have fun in the Discord. They're jealous we have our own liveries, and they're just jealous of all of this, isn't it? This, that's why in a, it's actually sad because it's kind of they're there to be pitied. Really. Nice one, Billy. Let us know who, who, um, who, which uh, thing you are. Let's do one more. I, this combo is actually quite fun, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. TS. It's 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 sad, isn't it? It's sad, but we don't need to worry about them. We've got our own community to have fun. Loot says go outside. I could say the same about you, Loot. Right, wait for Martin. Martin on the A+. plus. Woo! It's hotting up in here. Anyone need to come down the order? Or is it working quite well? I think it's where Oh, Robin, Temp Robin Tempo snuck in here as a B. Let's, let's get Robin down. Down to where he should be. So here we got Jurgen. Jurgen and Durden. Oh, Ari's in here. Very nice. Gonna go again. Sorry to hear that TS running the gauntlet. Thanks, Jurgen. AKA Super Jurgen to his friends. Uh right, let's wait, Martin, let's crack on, let's go. I saw you, Robin. I saw you sneaking in there. I saw you. Right, let's go everyone. Martin's very carefully considering his car. Vid name says, I killed my mod. Can we note, can we note that one down? I killed my mod in Gran Turismo 7. Funky's not that angry with me, I think. I think Funky's okay. 
Right. Martin, come on, man. We've got to roll. We've got to roll, Martin. Yes. Right, let me put myself to the back. It's only fair. Nathan here as well. There's the bad boys at the back, really. It's like the bad... You know, like, on Nathan, you you were so at risk of not being in there. I can't tell you how at risk you were. It's like the uh, coach. Actually, let me know in chat. If you go on a coach, like a bus, where do you sit on the bus, on the coach? Do you sit at the front? Do you sit in the middle? Do you sit at the back? Just write front, middle, back, or driving it, if you actually drive a bus. I sit at the back. Right, that is my space. Usually with some fellow people of, of likewise bad intention. Right, let's go. Can we win a race here today? Starting on the softs in wet conditions. Someone traversing next to us. It's Martin going backwards. We took off the TC there a little bit early. It's wet conditions. Around the outside of Nathan. The new 4 GT and the old 4 GT here. Oh, almost uh, spun the Genesis around. Best flashing lights as well. Gonna come in here a little bit. Oh, that's a big old lag <laughs> from the AMG. Watch out! We just got past. Back like more step, yeah. <laughs> that's where I like to be, though. Right, Genesis, and then we've got, oh, Porsche sneaking through. Run the outside. Oh no, what on earth has happened there? How was there so much death in that corner? Okay, we're up to P9. Three wide situation, going into the hairpin. Oh my word, that is the best overtake in history, chat. Did you see how many cars I overtook in that corner? <laughs> Did you see how many cars I overtook? <laughs> that is legitimate clean. Was that like a four car overtake in one corner? They're all coming back though. They all want my lunch. No. Come on. Someone's drifting, someone's gone on the minimap. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Define might be on the Inters again if he's seen the same strats last time. Oh, side by side, they've got more grip. There they are. Dangerous place for me to be here on the outside. He's giving us a space so very kind of him. He might be the man on the move right now if he's on the optimal tyre. Back left of the bus, okay. A oh, very nice ship. Is that a 207 GTI like Peugeot? Five seconds from the lead. We've got fast people catching us though. Take to the runoff here. As did everyone. Don't break too late. Oh! Yes! <laughs> Just stuck up the inside. They're still there though. Gotta be careful we don't get washed out. Oh, good battle with Funky. Nice, nice, nice. In between two other KCR drivers. Very respectful place to be in between two KCR drivers. No chance of danger at all. Oh, look at that from Define. Big moment. Big moment. It's kicking off on the top of a rouge. Or is that Radion actually? <gasps> Was that move okay? Was that move okay or did we just kill someone? I think I got a bit carried away. <laughs> I think I got a bit carried away. Let me know, chat. <laughs> I saw a gap. If you see a gap or half a gap or a quarter of a gap and you no longer go for it, then you're just not a racing driver, right? <laughs> Was that a gap though? Does it let me know if that was a gap or not? Oh, up the inside. Look at us now. Finding the grip here. Side by side with Super Jurgen. And the cutback. Yes! No! Yeah, no! 
I don't know if it's a good moment. It's definitely a bad moment now. No. Yeah, maybe a replay for that. Oh, no. Why am I going to third person view? This is an intense race. These races are so good. Can we go up the inside of the finish driver? Nope. It's good on the brakes. Look at that sunset. Around the outside, yes. Nice. We're going to be heading on to the last lap here. We're only six seconds off the lead. Northwall saying there was a gap. I see Northwall. Northwall in every video comment with the support. Incredible to see. Does, does not go unnoticed, I should say. Little lift to carry the speed. There's a GTR rejoining. <laughs> I could not break any later there. I could not break any later. Have a few. We'll have a few. Come on. Up into P7. Catching the leader. Just going around that corner now. This is the blind driver. Up at Rouge we go again. There's like a three car battle for P3. And a three car battle for P4. That's what I'm seeing. He's got the hazards on. Little hint of relief. There's a yellow flag. Someone might have been there. Oh no! T66 in the wall. On the top of a rouge. Or Radion. Deary me. Ooh, look at this battling. Don't mind if I do as well. I'll have some of that. We've got a little bit wide though. We've got a little bit wide. He might come back at us. Have to go defensive, but they're queuing up. It's a Genesis again. And I've gone deep here. Somehow get it stopped. The Peugeot is really good in its brakes. Remember we're on the soft tyres now. There's still moisture on the track. Stay off the kerbs. In P5, 5.2 seconds off the lead. It's Ham start now in the lead. that about <laughs> what have I done there we race on I'd be a terrible real life GT3 driver I just have to stop here and admire the uh, sunset we're coming off this Genesis it's a blind driver he was in the lead maybe that means he was on the intermediates they might be cooked right now they might be cooked let's try and get a good exit we go purple up the inside past the blind driver Oh, gonna try and make this guy go right outside the Super Jurgen. Super Jurgen's coming for us, and then there's a queue of cars if we mess this up. Super Jurgen does it. Someone's been reset on the corner. Someone's been reset. Who is it? I turn it on. Oh, no, it's Half Stark in the 4 GT. Now everyone's coming. Where are we gonna finish? P4 is Nathan. Hit limiter on the line. Oh, man. <laughs> These races are just too much. The top 11 within... Top 12 within 10 seconds. That was 12 cars in a row, like with less than a second in between them. Ooh. This racing is just too good. Right, we're going to have to go a different track. Time for a different track, everyone. But the racing is so good, it should be illegal, frankly. They, they have to regulate this sort of stuff. Where should we go? Got to go to the seaside. Surely. Surely. Off to the seaside we go. Custom. Let's customise it. Randomise it. BPM 180. I need a heart meter. Yeah, Martin, you went backwards at the start, didn't you? Right. Man. 109 people watching 68 likes chat we can get we can get to the 100 like front we also we're going to be streaming the we're going to be uh co-streaming whatever the word is the logitech g challenge finals we'll do some fun and games there 
and um, and then we'll come back to this in lobby. So let's. I want the lobbies to go quickly because I think that's going to start at five o'clock. I think five o'clock that's going to start. Help start. That is a ridiculous take. Gardens over seaside is the most. That is the hottest take I think I've ever heard. If you just say that on Twitter, Twitter will just implode. The lobby won't show if it's full. I don't know if it's full at the moment. Man. You know what? I really miss going karting. I haven't been karting for so long. I miss the smell of motorsport. I miss the... What I've just had there is a thrill. I miss the smell. I miss the vibrations. I miss all that kind of like... I miss the buzz. I, I miss the particular moment, period of time when you've had a race like that and then you get out your cart and you're walking back to the podium, whatever. Gary in the house! Check your Discord PMs on the stream ends. Ooh! Sounds like drama. Welcome, Gary. Member for 22 months, just two months away from that big 24-month badge. Which is going to be great to see in you. Ivan hates gardens. Yeah. Gardens should never have happened. Gardens was a mistake. <laughs> gardens was an accident. Let's wait for old Heisenberg to come in. Then we'll roll. There we go. Right. Dragon Trail Seaside. With Dash Cane. And I'm not racing in VR. And I think, I think I'm acclim acclimatising quite well actually. And the stream's working, and I wasn't sure it was going to work. I did nearly everything I could to break the stream. I didn't actually stream it the first time. Then I streamed on the wrong inter internet connection. Then my headset battery went out, wasn't charged. Then the PSVR wasn't working. Then the stream wasn't uploading. But you just can't stop the positivity. 31st, yeah, I'll join you on 31st if you've got space, actually. Let's go. Here we go. Dragon Troll Seaside in our Peugeot RCZ. Launching off the line, there's some drama, as you might expect. That's how we roll here, we roll with drama. Okay. Technically this is T1, so what's going to happen at T2, T3? Oh, the Honda and the American flag, a decent run. We've all just about lived. We've all just... There was a moment in time when we all lived side by side with someone here. What are we going to do? Oh, he's cut us up very nice. There's a Ford GT smashing into the barriers there. Who was that? Little kiss on the outside. Who's this coming up fast? It's a Viper. Let's go into the S's. Oh, so I'm on intermediate tyres. I'm on the intermediate tyre. Why the hell? Chat, are we all on intermediates back here? Is this the intermediate crew? <laughs> okay, it's a multi-class race, everyone. It's a multi-class race. <laughs> this is the intermediate crew. There's going to be two podiums. Come on, Inter, boys. <laughs> I'm on the Inters! I'm guessing that's why the Ford GT speared off. Hello. We're going to overtake a car in the next class. Oh, what? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do there? What, stop and cause another accident? Stupid penalty. Stupid penalty. Oh, Super Dragon will be back. Come on. I reckon Defy's on the Inters because he's been racing on the Inters. Is Blind Driver on the Inters? We're only 8.5 seconds off. Come on. You know what? It's so funny. I didn't realise I was on a wet weather tyre until, like, I got to this hairpin. I got this whole way, like, oh, this feels pretty good. Yeah, car's handling quite nicely. I oh, know it wasn't here. It was when I went into the yes. I was like, oh, that's really not a lot of grip. So this was absolutely fine. I was like, yeah, this is all right. And then I turned for this left-hander here, and I was like, oh, no. Maybe not. I've gone purple. We need to work out after this race, you know, when it concludes, who was on which tyre, so we can work out the real podiums. 
That's what we need to do. I'm gonna go defensive. Too late, maybe. See the tyres, uh, the tyres, the brakes glowing there. Alp starts here as well on the full GT. <laughs> Look at him. That's a properly old school full GT, isn't it? No, Alp start. No. There's been a big death. And I've profited significantly. Who's this? Oh, it's T66. Okay. Three second penalty. Come on, ref. Come on, man. Killing me. Alright, let's catch up with Funky. Uh, I'm guessing Funky's on the Inters, so this is going to be an even battle. Let's go. That's Gary. Yeah, F1 starting soon as well. How's Verstappen going to do? 151, so we're a cool. Is that 15 seconds off the pace? Take it. Can we catch up with old Funky here? 2.7, it looks like it's going to be difficult. So many Finnish drivers in today. Maybe we're really growing the community in Finland. Look at the sunset. Not going to rain, unfortunately. Physically impossible for it to rain here. All we can hope for, chat, is that someone bins it in Deshikane. That's it. Look at this sunset. Whoa! Look at the lighting, chat. Look at this. Look how good that was there, that sunset for a moment. GT7 can look obscenely good. Helicopters winding round for another approach. Yellow flag board. Yellow flags are out. What's going to be on the other side here? Oh no, I think my tyres are cooked. Anything? Anything? No! We're on the wrong tyre. We had fun though, the journey was fun. The journey was fun. Oh. Maybe we still won the intermediate class. Get a flag. Anything here? Yes, there's a car. Oh, we're overtaking Martin. Right, we need to work out who was on the intermediates there. Be honest. Be honest, everyone. The DJ Sprint's Brass Monkey for Casey, our funky. Maybe we need a DJ in these streams. Like, we can just have someone can be the DJ. Right, let me, uh... Mm. Let me get this time of day to morning, actually. Sunrise. And then I'm going to make sure I get on the correct compound of tyre. Halvstar, tell me you were on the intermediates. Tell me you were on those inters. It should not let you be on wet tyres at a track where it is impossible for it to rain. That is not good. That is not good. UI. I don't know what the word is. That is not good idiot protecting. <laughs> is what I really want to say. Martin was on the full wets. Ari had dirt tyres. I don't believe you. But rate it. <laughs> How up was on slicks. Okay, that bodes well. That bodes well. Wow, look at the um, driver lineup we got here. Look how many Finnish drivers we have. We've got three Finnish drivers. We are now big in Finland. I want to say, how do you say hello in Finnish? Hang on. Hang on a second. Let's say hello to the many, many thousands that are watching in Finland. Hello. Translate from English to Finnish. Hey. Hey, meet and mene. Hey, meet and mene to our Finnish friends. I think a DJ. We should, honestly, we should get that working. I'm all for just trying crazy stuff that just breaks the concept of what a stream is. As you will know. Right. Space to finish in. Kaz is part of the Finnish fest. What's going on? 
Maybe we got a big push in Finland. Maybe you'll st maybe I'll start to produce a content in in Finnish first, and I'll have to localize it into English. I'll get someone else to dub it into English. Ah, oh, define ones on intermediates as well. Well, let's get everyone in chat. Moi or hey? Hey is a bit like the English one, isn't it? Right, chat. We've got to get. We've got to roll. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start it. Because we're just we're on a limited schedule here. Limited schedule. F1 grid what time? So what are the predictions in chat for the F1 by the way? Verstappen starting what 15? Is Verstappen if Verstappen wins this race, because we need Red Bull will want to just it's too risky to not give him everything they need, all the power he needs. So if he wins this race, season over. Season is done. Wrap it up. Okay. Let's go in our Peugeot RCZ. Let's get over to TC. Get a good start, a good launch. Off the line. Very nice. Off the TC. Back onto radar. Let's pick and match what we can do here. At the first main corner. A little bit of blinding from the lights. A bit of smoke. I'm trying to see we go around the outside here. Avoid that Porsche. <laughs> oh! <laughs> How did he end up going past me that way and then back the other way? How on earth does that work? Nathan's in the wall as well. I, can, I, I have no idea how that accident happened. <laughs> There's a car on the left barrier there. Oh, big. I'll tell you what, that would be pain. If you were driving in real life and your car survived, that would shake you up. Up to P9, no? Car spinning backwards there. Here's a Porsche. Another Porsche going over the barrier, so we'll eat it up. Oh, this is the new livery, isn't it? From um, GT3. It's Martin. He's, <laughs> he's everywhere at once. Watch out behind everyone, gentlemen. Oh, wow. That was a great line. Who's this? Well, you're not going to get me now. I'll tell you, I'm not going to concede. Oh, my word. That's one of the best overtakes I've ever seen. Fair play. Fair play, sir. Fair play. Oh. Here's a Ferrari. Trying to get pivoted in. There we go. Oh, whip! Don't go in the pits. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get a penalty for crossing over the line though, right? Oh, we had to, we had to start at Ari. Because we got something at five. Up the inside, Robin here, let's see. Nice. Once you sort of claim that line, there's not a lot people can do around it because the, the way up is so narrow. You can't really, unless you time a cut back nicely on the exit, it's very difficult. Oh, a nudge. Something next to us. It's a Ferrari. E5 now, only 2.4 off the lead. Come on. Oh, there's another. What on earth is that? Gonna be a really bad exit from us. I'm gonna stay defensive straight away. Seven seconds. We did we lose five seconds in there? How on earth did that happen? He's gone quite deep, to be fair. Come on, Peugeot. Ah, oh, no. Oh no! It's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. It's okay, we're, we're okay, we're okay. Come on, come on, come on. Oh no! Stay left, whichever way we are, stay safe. <laughs> oh, we were too close going into Death Chicane, I think. Weirdly, we only lost five seconds. Still side by side a little bit, both getting on the brake, snatching it. Run wide on the kerbs. 30 seconds going into the last lap, but anything can happen. We've seen so many cars go wide. It's like blind drivers running away with it. I don't know where Nathan Maximum is on track. Oh no! 
two. There's been some sort of dive there and it hasn't worked out for both of them. <laughs> We've got a FOK. We're actually gaining on the leaders, really. Let's keep going. Try and get in that compression out of second gear. The yeah, Lamborghini was an experiment. No! Not the easiest car to drive, that Lambo. Had to correct there, but we'll be flat all the way out. Have a look at the exit speed here, MPH. 133 is not too bad. 133, 134 will take it. They're all going round now, this hairpin. So might see some action on the yellow flag front. I'm actually getting into it now. <laughs> forgot how much I like driving this car here. Any yellow flags? No, not yet. See, that's what I wanted to do previous lap. The guy ahead might have lifted a little bit. Eating up this Lexus. Eating it up. Can we get a good exit here? Nah, not really. Uh, I think we could have done quite a bit better there, unfortunately. Welcome Simba, new member Simba, new KCR driver. Can we get some claps out, please, Simba? Look at this guy just do donuts. <laughs> Can we get some claps out for Simba, please? New member, new KCR driver. He's creating liveries as well. We absolutely love to see it. Where are my claps? Where are these pink hands? Oh, here we go. It's the pink hand. What does pink hand mean, by the way? What's the meaning of that? It's not... There's no other meaning to it, is there? Oh, I'm going to start the race then. Right. We'll do... It's to... I just wonder if we go somewhere else. Uh... Oh, you know where we're going to go. You know where... What did I do there? I have no idea what I did. Sorry, for one. I didn't want to do that. I just... I think I loaded the same settings. Um, hold on to your horses. Everyone's going to be groaning like, oh, he's changed it again. He's changed it again. There we go. No! I'm such a fool. I'm such a fool. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to work, chat. Because we're in the... Uh, we're in the thing. We'll do another one here then. Oh, I like that one, Garzini. Blood flow restricted hand wave, yes. <laughs> no worries, um, Robin. Patrick in the house. Is that two separate names, Patrick? I, I mean, Patrick. Our Finnish drivers here are planning something. Can you see? They haven't chosen a car. They're planning. They're very organised. They're all going to come in with a strategy now. They know what they're doing. Hopefully we can have a better race here. Waiting for our Finnish friends. You've got to be in it. I can't. If I if I start this race without any Finnish drivers in it, I'm going to be public enemy number one in Finland. But they are the only drivers not in there. I don't know if there's some sort of thing going on in Finland. Maybe there's an internet outage or something. One is on full wet. Oh, was someone driving full wet? Yeah, make sure to change it. T, thank you so much for the 10 euros, T. Glad I joined KCR. Great community. I love to be with you all. Hopefully it's going to play in the background. Keep up the great work on the channel. Thank you so much, T. Hang on a second. I think I turned off the... Now let me know if that played for you, that ping, because I want to... Um... I want to sort out. But thank you so much, T, for the 10 euros. Yeah, honestly, the community is just... Oh, we're always good to go. The community is just, it's all of us. It's not one person, it's not two people, it's just all BR, of us in the community. BR, T-Super oh, Chartered $10 and 65 cents. Glad I joined KCR, great community, love to be with y'all. Keep up the great work on your channel sign of the horns light skin tone. <laughs> I think it struggled with the Yule there, didn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much, so much T, the 10 years, I appreciate it so much. We got a new camera in yesterday that is just going to take the vlogging take the event stuff to the next level so 
And I know you're driving extremely well. I hope that we're helping you sort of with your driving as well. Let's go, let's go. Dragon Charles Seaside. Off the start line. Porsche on our insides. Ooh. There we go. The sun's going to come over that mountain. I saw a gap. I sort of had to try and go for it. My word, I've never seen so many cars in one place. <laughs> that didn't feel like a 16 car race. That felt like a 30 car race right there. We all hit the brakes, so a little bit worried. There's a beetle going cross country. I might just about on the inside. Corvette's going to come back. Very nice. Here's the VW. We're going to push the VW a little bit. Sun's come out now. Oh, side by side with the V-dubs. Oh, what battling this is. Look how much the Corvette gained there, though. Look, you can see his little helmet. <laughs> you can see his little helmet. Where is he? There he is. Oh, shoot. Oh, we got that stopped. Oh, no, side by side is a bad idea. Look at this ahead. Oh, the Lexus is all over the shop. Watch out. Take advantage. Ooh. Up into P4. Who's this? Oh, it's the little guy. It's Halfstark in the VW. That, that is actually Halfstark in there, everyone. Oh, we got a nice exit, but. Hit him on the exit as well. Four seconds off the lead. Look at the scenery now in Croatia. Nice. Have we got the inside here or something? I don't know. Oh, ho, ho. this is good racing. This is good racing. Try to hang it around the outside. Try to hang it around the outside. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I will take that every day of the week. Fair play to Halfstock as well. He's going to come back. It is. That VW's on the Terminator. Just can't drop it. And look at the car just behind. Oh, someone's gone on just... Someone's gone here as well. Porsche's all over the shop. Bit wide. Halfstar's going to have a better exit. That's the leader in a Viper. Nathan's in the Corvette. We go purple. Yes. So satisfying when you go over that. Yeah, the graphics in this game are just... It's, make, it's a lot better when it's not in VR, I've got to be honest. Anyone who says that the graphics in VR are like just as good as GT7 2D as a reviewer is just not taking it seriously enough. That, I'm not saying that they're being dishonest or whatever, I just think they're not taking it seriously enough. Because if you've really looked at it, you'd be like, you know, it is better in 2D. Is there a potential... Wait, no, we're going to come under fire here. <laughs> Let's start defending what we have, I think. Halps out goes to the inside. I've gone a little bit wide. It can be side by side. Enough space on the outside. Yes, there is. Great driving. Funky's in the mix as well. It's a three-car five for the podium, and Nathan's going for the win. Oh, my word. What a line that is. What a line. What's my exit speed going to be here? Have a look at the MPH. 136 on the exit. But then I'm wide. That was insane. That's the best line I've ever taken through there, ever, I'm pretty sure. Now, if anyone steps up here, we're going to pick up positions, hopefully. They're battling behind Funky and Halbstark. Netherlands versus Germany. Then the two Brits, and it's Finland at the top. Is everyone going to make it through? Let's see. Have a blink on the... Oh, no, he hasn't. The Viper's gone. Up into P2. Nathan's going to win it. It's going to be a 1-2. Akira Esports and is Funky going to make it 
A top three for the KCR drivers. I think he's going for it. He's going for it up the inside of the Corvette. You love to see it. Look at this. KCR one, two, and four. How start can P3. The racing's just so good. The racing should be illegal. I'm telling you. You don't need to take any drugs, kids. Just play Gran Turismo 7. This is just so good. Like, it's just so good. It's so good. I can't believe I don't stream more. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I agree, guys, with that. Thanks, Decoy. Decoy in the house. With a Z at the end of it. Clean race, yes, I agree. <laughs> Right, let's go. Let's go to Monza. I think we're. I think we're ready. Monza's like, if we earn it, we go to Monza. If we prove that we're clean enough, we can go to Monza. I think we've earned it. Yes, we're going to Monza. I think we got. We got to go because I'm meant to start the stream in nine minutes. Not start a stream. I meant to do the. We're going to go into the co-stream. Monza, exactly. Check your tires, everyone, please check your tyres and then we're going to go like because ideally I would love to do two races here but we'll see we'll see Michael might, might have to be in the next one because we're going to do the co-stream and then we're going to come back to lobbies this might be the last race actually um, for this part of the stream yeah gr uh, great racing half start by the way amazing 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 racing half start there Maybe see if we could do a video of that one, showcase some good Gran Turismo 7 racing. I don't know, T, I'm just... I think I'm just... I don't know how why I'm just back to 2D and driving as good as good as I was driving in 2D before. I don't know. We've got to go. We've got to go. I'm going to give it like 30 more seconds, chat. Let's just, just get in. Jump in your vehicles. Jump in your vehicles, everyone. I'm going to write 20 seconds. That's it. seconds that's all we got when the lobbies continue lobbies will continue after so we, the stream's not going to end but on this stream we're going to watch a g challenge we'll have some fun there we'll kind of see who looks good i don't know too much about the runners and riders nathan was in it though nathan got quite close to being in this final right we're going to roll we're going to roll let's do it rock and roll this is it What's the breaking mark for the first 10? It is a 150 meter box. So if you're not too sure about your braking, just break at the 200. Okay. We need to get an info thing, Gary. Maybe we need to, in the Discord, share what things we have and we can update them. A couple of Corvettes here. The Peugeot is not going to be the best. Right, here we go at Monza in the Peugeot RCZ. Some very fast cars around us. 4GT is going to be quick here. Corvette is going to be quick. Supra is going to be very quick. Skyline Super Silhouette's up there as well, we can see. Let's just take it easy going into turn one. Anything can happen here. Anything can happen. It's not about what you gain on the way in. It's normally about what you gain on the way out. Get back on that road. We lost nothing and we gained nothing. We, as we were. Only five seconds off the leader, so I'll absolutely take that. It's going to condense up here again. See, we've got a Porsche going up inside the Scarlet Super Silhouette. And let's start getting some position now on the exit, usually. Think about going up the inside of the Lexus here. Keep it narrow, see what comes our way. There we go. That's our bonus, that's our reward. Now we get the move done on the Lexus. He's still there, actually, to be fair. To be fair, he's still here. Look, there he is. Nathan Maximum, I think, in a spot of bother there. He'll be coming back up fast. Someone to watch. Casey on number plate there glinting at us, adding that extra 50 brake horsepower. No! 
Okay, where's Nathan? Where's Nathan? We need to work together. There he is. Let's go. Let's go. Taking some fluids on board because we're going to need absolutely everything now. Absolutely everything we've got. Take a nice tight line. We might need to just push this forward like truck and trailer. Use it to give us a slipstream. Let's see. Probably have to go for the kill here, actually. Kill shot. Okay, I think someone's facing the wrong way here. Around the outside of the Lexus. And then is that a beetle? Might be a beetle up there, let's see. Yeah, something, oh. Something's kicked off. Contact on the way in, but that's fine. We'll just use it to rotate. Okay, positions now, very clear. Funky's here. Nice, nice, nice. Hope you can get a good Ascari. Catch up with the Supra, 1.5 seconds ahead. A little bit hesitant on the turn in, but take it. There has been a change of position now. It's got ahead of the beetle. 1.2 seconds. Nice boost. Sun already coming down at Monza for the last lap. There's a lot of cars queued up closely there, so I imagine there's going to be some carnage at turn one. Martin again giving us a healthy push. The Lexus is sort of loitering. Nathan Maxman with the fastest lap, never give up. Yellow flags are out in force as well. Last push from Martin. There's a queue of cars. See, Nathan's just got past all of them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five cars ahead of us. I think there might be two Skyline Super Silhouettes in there. Might struggle a little bit with the acceleration. The dependence on that massive turbo. We go purple now. Boost from Martin. Running wide a little bit. We dive up the inside here. As yes, we can. Oh, oh no! It closed on us! We went for a very opportunistic... Oh, no! No, no, no. Right, let's see what's going on at the front of the race. Oh! Too optimistic there for that, I think, from us. Too optimistic. Oh, the silhouette's gone off. It's rejoining. Oh, no, there's drama! <laughs> is that Nathan Maximin? Surely not. He's going for a sort of podium. Where is Nathan? Here he is. He's going after that McLaren. Some other drama in the back and he's gone into the podium. He's gonna hunt I mean from dead last place to get a podium. It's quite scary. Look at the silhouette spitting flame there. Get some great shots from this lobby. Madness. And he gets a fast stack on the line. Never give up basically. Never ever ever give up. Even though we gave up this race. But that exclusive never give up, obviously. <laughs> Damn, I always hate it when I never have a good race at Monza. I just want to go again immediately, but we're meant to. Let me save this. Let me see if everything is happening as I expected it to. So we are meant to. But it was a bold move. It was my... I, I went for a gap that was... Barely a gap. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so what I what I have is I have a stream that I'm meant to co-stream as part of this Logitech giveaway and, and as part of the whole thing we did. Because we 
we and Nathan's been in the video as well. We've done the G challenge now for months, and this is the culmination of it for this year. Yeah, Nathan, we're streaming the G challenge finals. I need to. I'm just waiting for their stream to come through. Don't save that one. What happened? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna quit this race. I'm gonna start it so you guys can race. So I'm just gonna make. I'm not going to enter actually. I'm gonna start it again. So you guys can race just while I'm sorting this out in the background. That's okay. Cleanest lobby ever. <laughs> Doubt. It's all kicking off. You've got, in terms of stuff happening today, you've got Formula One at Saudi, you've got Lost Chat G Challenge, and then you've got KCR Lobbies in that order. Ascending order of importance. So there's a lot to watch. Let's see what's going to happen here. Oh, funky with a false start. Apple Porsche off the line. Blind driver. And then look at the Finnish driver really looking to uh, make a move, perhaps. On board with Wallace now. Oh! Oh no. You hate to see it. But also we love to see it. Here's Wallace in the AMG, hunted down by Nathan. Very nice, very nice. Oh, Nathan looking for the move. Let's go on board. Oh, Wallace goes wide. Nathan's going to take that because um, Wallace is going to get reset. What's going on behind? Not a great view here. Second chicane. Oh, that full GT. Been some big drama there. And that's Martin mixing up with Bass. Martin going to try and go up the inside. How's that going to work? Just about a little bit of contact on the exit. The two KCR drivers up here. Line driver Ted Robin going through up the inside. Now looking to get on T66. Funky side by side with the blind driver now. And um, who's that other half? Really sort of falling down the order here at the beginning. Side by side, who's that? The Corvette going around the outside of Halbstark. There's two Corvettes leading this race. What's house like going to do? Where's the McLaren going to be strong? Oh, big crash in the background there. Big crash. Thanks, Dean. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Let me just um, see what's going on with this stuff. Oh, it's going I can't. I think. Oh, I've got to look at this. Mysteriously, uh, Coke and hopefully some rum. Um, Alonso leads. Yeah, keep us updated, Gary. I just need to see. I think Jardy is doing the same thing. And what's. How's he doing this? Bear with me. It's nice to focus. Right. What's going on in this race? But let's get those standings up. Oh, Nathan's running away with it, to be fair. 
Where's the close battle? Oh, look at this. It's the close battle. Wallace goes off. Oh, no. Huge crash for Wallace. Huge crash. Huge crash side by side. Reed doing that other half and Define coming through. Define down in ninth place. Oh, that was a big moment side by side. T66 up into P4. Robin trying to catch him. Here's Funky. Then Wallace. Then other half. Then Define. Define going up the inside of other half the Porsche. Looks like there was a slow Porsche ahead as well. That might have been Funky. Where is he? Here's Funky. Robin's got ahead of him. So Funky going to try and come back at Robin Tempo now. What do you mean incorrect starting position, Gary? What's that drama? What can consume your stuff? What do you consume? Because there's definitely some rum in here. By the way, I really like these glasses. They keep drinks free. Do you mean incorrect start? Was he out of his box? Because don't they normally they have they have a bit of uh, tolerance with that, don't they? Here goes Funky, by the way. Let's go on board with Funky. Is he going to think about going up the inside? Robin's got the indicator. Funky looks to go up the inside. Backs out of it. Might try and go for a cutback here. Robin's gone quite deep. Going to be side by side. Don't think Funky's quite going to get it done. Oh, we can, Robin goes very wide. Funky is going to get it done. Look at that. Apologies for the direction there. Funky with a very late move. Nathan takes it, then Alves Dark. Ooh. It's a race. I quite enjoy doing this. Should we do another one? <laughs> it's quite, I'm wasting, basically I have a stream ready to go for me to put onto here. Like when I did the watch along for the um, Gran Turismo uh, World Finals. And that stream hasn't started yet, so I presume there's been some sort of delay. Um, Funky says, kick Jack Fatboy. Who's Jack Fatboy? Who is the who is Jack Fatboy? Jack Fatboy, announce yourself. Nice another half. Do you guys want to do another one? You can do it. Nice one, Kaz Perry. If you, if you want to do another one, we'll do another one. I'll broadcast it. Absolutely fine. Um, five seconds. So Alonso's leading and he's got a five second. Oh, that's such drama, isn't it? I bet he's going to be pissed in the car. Uh, what is going on? Alternatively, I have a Twitch stream I can pull, but that might not be okay for the music. Bear with me. My experience qualifying for Logitech McLaren G Challenge this year was... Uh, was really yeah. good actually i uh, i won the first three rounds i believe well i'm gonna guess they have an issue with that we're gonna go what we're gonna do is we do one more race and then we're gonna if it if the stream that i'm meant to use isn't working we'll stream the twitch one so we'll broadcast one more race you ready let's go guys let's see if anyone else is in okay we'll do one more race here i think everyone's in now so Alonso's got a five second penalty first pit stop what was the order you said Alonso where's Verstappen Gary we need Verstappen updates I presume Verstappen's already in like a tenth isn't it Jed has got that at the end of that long windy straight you can up from my uh, F1 manager days. Right, let's have a look and see what's going on. Thirteenth, welcome Mojo, good to see you. Hope you enjoyed the videos. What have we got? Other half, oh, Funky with a big moment off the start. Sort of pulls over, here's Jay Wallace up into third place profiting. Blind driver going to go side by side. Maybe going to take the leader's blind driver. Takes it inside. Up into the leader's blind driver. Can he make the corner? Contact behind. Other half gets hit by someone. And Ken Packen is going to go through. There's Jay Wallace as well. Oh, he's gone around. The first driver's gone around. He's got to rejoin. Funky also at the back. He sees it's Funky. Two fast drivers at the back. We've got Mar oh, a fish tech and Martin in the four GTs. Then we've got definitively trying to go around the outside of the Italian here. Let's see what happens into the second chicane. 
Martin also sort of lurking. Defying goes for it. Makes it. Oh, there's contact ahead. Robin Tempo's involved. Does make it around the Spaniard, though. Is that a super? Yeah, Robin in the super here. Then we get up to the other half. The American in P4 in the Apple livery. Help start blind driver. And then Jay Wallace running away with it here. Who are we looking at coming through? Where's T66? We know he'll be on the move. Here he is on the back of Martin. Martin's in the Ford GT, which is a very fast car. Here we go. People drafting defiantly. Fish tech in the, GT, in the Ford GT. What's coming up here? It's hard to keep track. There goes James. Robin trying to go round the outside of the Italian. Fish tech also trying to fall in. Robin gets it done. What's going on behind? There's Fish tech as well. So the Italian's been absolutely swamped here. But I think we lost the Ford GT. Yeah, we lost Fish Tech. He must have gone very wide. We lost him as well. That there's all the runners and riders. Very, very, very complicated. Blind driver here looking to go up the inside of Halbstuck, I think. Thinks better of it. There's the other half. Tempo as well. Martin under real pressure now from T66. Let's go on board here with T66. See, what is he going to do? Is he going to be bump drafting? Is he going to go for it? What position is Martin? Where's he going to position that car? Look in the uh, rear view as well. A lot of interesting things going on. Thinking better of it, but you can see here other... Oh, Robin Tempo there running wide. Oh, he comes back on the track. Chaos. Robin Tempo. Oh, he's been spun around. Instant with the finish. Driver blind drivers lost that massively as well. He was right at the front of this race. Look at this gaggle of cars here. Going all the way up into second or third place. Can't quite work out. I think it's third place here. And Hal start looking to make a move on the leader ahead. On board with Martin. Oh, has to avoid Fist. Oh, no, he doesn't avoid him. Contact between the four GTs. Oh, and some more contact here. Oh, the Finnish driver is involved. Definitely been in the wars. Here's the other half. Funky moving up. Martin somehow was getting... Oh, but something at the top here. Here's Halbstark following Wallace. Might decide to go for it. Let's see. And here's... Oh, some huge moments back here. Defiantively involved. Fishtail going past. Blind driver now. A lot of fish tailing. Robin's coming back up. Going to be a drag race there. But let's see going into Ascari. It's really condensing at the front. T66 now. All the way up with the leaders. T66 was down at about ninth place. And heading into the last lap, he's going to be right up there in the Supra. Arguably in the best car. Where's Funky? Funky a little bit further behind under pressure. Let's see what goes on here. Halfstock might go for the inside. James Wallace defends. T66 might just decide to keep his powder dry here and try and have a really good run into turn one or try and get someone on the exit of turn one. Halfstock now in the lead. It is going to be the last lap. Here we go. We see on left hand side final lap. T66 on board with the, with the fast lap. Halfstock going very defensive. Off the track, T66, what's he going to do? Looks to go round the outside. A little bit of contact for Wallace. He's got a wheel on the grass. But Wallace goes past Halbstart. T66 is going to turn in. Halbstart claims it. Uh, Wallace surely going to get reset. Yeah, he's been sent to the Shadow Realm. That's going to be causing absolute chaos behind. Surely. Defiantively up here now. Oh, no. Blind driver gets punted. And the four GTs in the war again. The Italians here going backwards. Is he going to make contact? No! Ghosting. Okay, right. Let's going up the front of the race. Side by side. T66. We just see it taking the lead. Up the inside. A little bit of contact. Where is the next driver? It's a finish driver. Unbelievably. In P3. Funky's not that far behind as well. This is the top four. 1.5 seconds. And frankly, any of these drivers can win this. Let's go back up here with uh, the finish driver. Did a bit of drifting. Verstappen up to 11th as well in real life. A bit like a T66 moment for him. T66, let's go on board with Halbstark. On the offset camera. Is he going to go up the inside? Yes, he is. Has he got the move done? Goes deep. Where's T66? Here he is. He's going to try and get him on the exit. The finish driver as well has got a very good run. Halbstark now under serious pressure. Funky probably too far behind. It's going to be a three-wide situation. I think he goes for it. It is a three-wide situation. Come on. Come on. Who's going to win this? Who's going to win it? Last corner, last lap. It's the finish driver goes up the inside. But anyone with a comeback is going to be Halmstark. Funky with a great view. Halmstark maybe can get it done. But I think the finish driver is going to win it. It's going to be a one, two, three. Ooh. What racing that is there, chat. That is racing right there. You love to see it at Monza. Huge. 
huge, huge, huge. Big congratulations to everyone. Big congratulations. But chat, I think now it's pretty clear that this uh, YouTube stream isn't working. We have to go to the backup. We're going to come back to the lobbies here. So we're going to chill out now. I'm actually going to have to end this uh, lobby thing because I don't want to keep people in the lobby that I'm not going to be using. That was a phenomenal race, that one to watch. Definitely watch that back on the stream if you're involved. But now we're going to try something a little bit different, a little bit new, that I hope is going to work. I'm going to get the Twitch stream up. Uh try and make those pushes forward but coming up on the final lap it's still only running with the 142 yet to breach into the 141s maybe a little bit difficult to try of the grid now yeah i'm looking at the times here there's nine tenths of a second separating our whole field but factor in the fact that mccormack is two tenths clear of p2 you, you know sort of seven tenths separating second down to 16th that is so so close i think it will get closer with the gt3s as well all i right, think this will be the that. furthest we'll see the, the, the field spread nice one uh, gary all of this dj in the house with dj Martha gary is trying to get back right, let's see if this is going to work that front row also if you're watching at home right now there are some watch parties you can get involved in yes uh, jimmy broadbent jardier with uh got Kirath, and we have that's us chat OG. Uh, is indeed George Boothby doing some watch parties to so go along and, and check them out. They'll be giving you some insight. More Chat, insight that's us. Can, they just called our name uh, out. They're like, well, they're, they're all exceptional sim racers. I'm oh, not yeah. much. I just uh, sit here and talk. Yeah. Guys, exceptional sim racers. Yes, that's us, Chat. Finish things off here now. You can see the last Why few of our so racers starting to round the final few corners and get themselves back over across the finish line. To exceptional sim racers. That's all of us. We get ourselves started with the race. Just about right. a moment or so. so I think we've like actually arrived just Donald in time because this is be locking in that qualifying start right here with the fastest lap at a 141.575. Yeah, you can see yeah the welcome right everyone to now the, the... Uh, timing tower there. Whitehead's in the pits, he's done. Seville in the pits, he is done. Lukasek in the pits, done. Right. Apostle now, done. As we see Harteveld, Chris Harteveld, hello. Nice. Up into P2. Here we go. And that is, I know he's a very quick driver, but that is a surprise there. That's a surprise I was looking for. I feel like the GT4 is going to throw those Here we surprises go. up. Yonkers now moves down to P4. Tinker van der Velde Thanks, Cal. Thanks, Ross, Nate. Thanks, Cal. Ken, Flatka. He's just overturned his teammates. It might be. Uh, yeah, I recognise this commentator. So Dara McCormack. This one. Uh, to be honest, when I saw the entry list, uh, you know, oh, to be fair, I didn't yeah, that, the, uh, is that, that's um, actual vision, isn't it? Stuff. When I saw Dara McCormack's I don't know. If, I don't know who actual vision is. I think I've seen his face around. Is that him? I was like, yeah, he's First already, sure. already. Yeah, chat, we are all exceptional sim racers, as you know, confirmed by one. these and race people. One, qualified P1, <laughs> it's exceptional from him. A very young driver, but pound for pound, not only on ACC. Right, I'll so chat, what we've got to work out is who, who is in this right start, race, well, this final, in that P1 and who do we think is going to win? Because the, I think this is a $100,000 prize pool for this one. Quite a few challengers sneaking up as they got their third or fourth laps in there during qualification. I think it's going to make for a very interesting starting grid now, as it's a lot of the big names we were looking to see ending up at the top of it. So time, I believe, now to head back to the track in just a moment and see who is going to end up winning that battle to start things out as we get ourselves ready for the first actual race of the day here in EMEA. Keep in mind, of course, we have our North American races coming up immediately after okay. EMEA finishes as well. So definitely going to be wanting to stick around not only for the action here in okay, EMEA. Okay, so this is EMEA. Well can well. you can you hear everything, by the way? And final region for the Logitech G Challenge. Yeah, and we've got Welcome three back, Brendan. tracks, and we've got three different cars. So we start off with the GT4 McLaren here at Mazzano. Then we head to Brands Hatch, and that is going to be in the 650S, the old GT4. GT3 car, and then we head into the 720S GT3 at the Hungara Ring. And we've seen from the first two regions that there was a wet track, but it was dry. Okay, so we got GT4, uh, for, then we got 650S, and then we got 720S. It was wetter than an otter's pocket, so maybe there's a Okay, race one, race two, race three. During so the then we decide the winners. Marco Jonkers, I recognize that name. Grid, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ourselves Luke Whitehead, I recognize Luke the Whitehead. Race of the day. Darma Korak starts us off in pole, moving over to Chris Hartevelt in second. Luke Whitehead takes takes third start. Marco Yonkers will be in fourth. Dominic Blyer in fifth. Tinko Vanderveld in sixth. Robbie Staple Ford gave seventh. you a part. Leonardo Dialcamo going down to eighth. What's Rutel? Why don't you take us through the rest of the back of the grid? Yeah, Lucas Mateja takes us into ninth. That's on Ken Scott. Martin Swiderek in tenth. We've then got Armadio okay, Castellino. Who do we fancy here? David I think 
I, I, I know Mario, the name Mario, Luke White. I think Luke Whitehead's really fast. I feel like Marco Jonkers. I feel like I might have raced him on iRacing. Tinko van der Velde is such a sim racing name. I feel like he's going to be quick. Oh, thanks, Brendan. Thanks, Gary. Guys, who do we think is going to win race one? This is Masano. I'm going to ask you a question now. Where are the big action areas on Masano GT4? Jonkers. What do you know about Jonkers, Mojo? I feel like Jonkers. I'm going to go Whitehead. One, two, three. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Whitehead, Jonkers. Uh, and then I'm going to go Van der Velde. That's my that's my one, two, three. Specifically in turn eight, and I'd say probably fourteen as well, because you've got twelve and thirteen that are really. Right, it's a twenty-minute race. This one. Set yourself up for a potential move into fourteen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we are getting ourselves ready now onto the grid. The starting line, ready to move forward here. Starting up with our formation lap. Chris course, Hartfeld is in P2. Okay, the call back. I'm going Whitehead, Jonkers, Van der Velde. Garzini's going for Chris Hartfeld. Okay. You're going for the guy in P2 at the moment. Chat, let us know who you, who do you think is going to win this race. <laughs> Well. Al Capone's going McCormack. Okay. You've gone McCormack. Mojo's gone Jonkers. Garzini's gone Hartfeld. Anyone going for anyone lower down? What about Seville? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are heading down towards turn number one and we are green light racing here. McCormack does take the lead. McCormack's already in the win, in the lead, Al Capone. P2 there, and I think Whitehead has indeed held on to P3. So they've got through nicely. Whitehead's in P3. Where's Jonkers? Jonkers in P4. Come on. This is like uh, racing. Kim's going Whitehead. Okay. Oh, Whitehead. Into P3. Why head into P3, Jonkers maybe just got overtook. The Iceman Jonkers, why is he known as the Iceman? Chat, what? give me some history about Jonkers. Let me find out. Maybe I should have gone Jonkers to win. All my Christmases and birthdays rolled into one here because P2 and P3, Whitehead looking for the move Let me go into Jonkers. I'll tell you what, by the time they get the exit here, it is going to be Whitehead just about ahead. What's his name? Full name? Very, very Jonkers Simracing. Unfortunately, just a little bit too much ground as they work their way around. Moving forward, we'll see. Marco Jonkers. Overtaking his flyer as well, sits just a few seconds behind. Going to try to cut inside for this next turn here. Won't be able to make any serious Racing gains for the next profile. two ahead. It's hard to develop Whitehead still duking it out. Whitehead is unfortunately not able to take control of that P2 position just yet. He's raced in real Finally life. To claim it though he's raced in real life whitehead claims it okay i'm going hashtag yeah, has, we need a hashtag for our favorite drivers i think Marco Jonkers dropping i'm going has, back hashtag and you think of the third John Crew. williams driver down in sixth position to hartevelt there hartevelt has uh, got a penalty right lost out to luke whitehead now he needs to filter in behind and blyer blyer for me this is the wild card race for him in the regards of i've seen Chat, whitehead is already into p2 in and Maserati in and that guy ran p1 ran a little month. bit wide there my warning he was exceptional in a car that wasn't the usual car. Last corner here at Masano. Start, finish on straight, ACC and then it gets very and tight. Th this first sector of Masano, it's not in G7, but in ACC, in it just gets there. so in tight here. These drivers, like, he was against like, the best drivers this, in the world. These so two corners just get so can, tight. You know, spring a surprise or spring a performance out of the blue. Last one, Gary. Dominic Blyer, already gained I think he's going to win that. Stands, uh, just falling a little bit further back from Whitehead. So Whitehead may be a little bit disappointed with his qualifying. but I think Whitehead's got this sewed up. Close there's a the there's a lot there's That's genuinely a loss of money. So I think I think there's a hundred thousand dollars on the line. Let me just confirm that. Let me go on G Challenge. G Challenge, how much wide at this point? Starting to separate further past that point. So we'll have to see now if Whitehead's able to keep up pace. Like you said, close the gap between himself and Dharma Cormac, who's looked single handedly dominant so far, both between his qualification run and the way he got himself off to his start on the first few laps. Yeah, Swiderek there trying to make a position up for P10. It's now you get twenty. So you get you get twenty. Oh, the okay. This is a regional final. This is Europe. Then it's going to be America. Whoever wins this final gets ten thousand uh, dollars and i think you'll find him whoever comes second gets six thousand and it goes down so if he, he, luke whitehead could get ten thousand dollars by winning this race massive run and yeah it's going to be Matasia. and you win you win this wheel that i've got and you win other stuff and i think you go into the draw to meet lando van der velde and jonkers these are my two drivers to take it cool take it cool take it cool gents take it cool Marco Jonkers has a bit of contact there, and look at Robbie Stapleford. Look at the okay, just filtering. Van der Velde, honestly. Final corner, and the real move oh, Jonkers got a penalty. Van der Velde into a top five. Jonkers got a penalty. Two. McCormack, Whitehead, Hartevelle, Blyer, Van der Velde. Stappen already passed five. Hamilton. Jonkers, that is Stapleford, uh, Alcamo, Castorino, and indeed Matasia as your point scorers as it stands.
So Whitehead's got a fastest lap. Whitehead's actually breaking the way. He was able to pass him for about half of a lap just a few seconds prior, but as we went on to his POV a few moments ago, once again, you saw it. This is, we're following Jonkers now. Back behind him in sixth place, still fighting for that retake. How do you win the wheel? If you, to win the G923, you need to click the link in the pin comment, and then you basically get entries if you do the things like follow Logitech on Twitter or join their Discord or whatnot. And that gives you entries, and then when the competition closes, that software basically it's takes all the entries and randomly so picks one, durable, but in a GT4 and that person wins. Especially if you slide in the car around, the tyres will become a factor later on in this race. You need to make sure that you're not overheating them uh, at the early stages of this race. We will see drivers drop back a little bit later on if they have pushed a little bit too John has dropped down quite a bit. I'm a bit concerned about race that. Race number one, if you're Dominic Blyer, how oh, much stroll are you out pushing completely. How much are you looking to try and get into that top three? I think you... How's his hand? Again, we're going to be proven wrong a little bit later on with uh, with this prediction here. But I yeah, so there, there were a couple of ways of doing it, Mojo. Podium, like, just you know, Logitech, levels up there I spoke with like them and said, look, really want to give something away. And they, that's great. a great idea, which is great. There's not that many companies out there that are so receptive, by the way, of, of giving uh, stuff to your community. But Logitech are all for it. So we thought about how to do it. And I thought about doing a, like a competition on this stream. Sector. You can't see me, by the way. Will not present the hell? An opportunity for itself just yet. So we're gonna have to continue chasing that. But that will yeah. yield moments of opportunity for Whitehead to gain some serious lead over. His <laughs> I disappeared for a bit. Unless you don't want to see me, they see me. Yeah, Whitehead not losing um, a lot of times McCormack. McCormack. But I thought the best way was to do an entry like this, where it's away, but just e it just means I can concentrate more and just we just chill out and have a good time. If I was doing like a competition, like we could say like. To make a potential oh, move and half of that, I think enter who you think is going to win at the beginning and whoever wins will do a random thing and draw. It's just, it no it really detracts a little bit. Whereas this is like, if you want to enter and win a wheel, that's running right now. Logitech have given us a wheel that someone's going to win it. It's in that link. No one said anything. No one said you're not here. I feel so unwanted. I'm going to go away again. I'm going. Uh, his That's momentum now one. has made that move on Yonkers. You can see the gap between... There we go. I'm out now. Right now is about I'm out. Half a second or just a little nah, bit more than that, actually, now. I'm back. Uh, Stapleford in P7. I'm expecting him to be... Right, Whitehead's 1.3. Do we think Whitehead might be tyres in ACC? The By the way, who in the chat actually John? plays There's ACC no and who doesn't? Because if... Off the pace. No if everyone in chat plays the ACC, then I won't talk so much about tires. To our championship. Very and if no one plays ACC, Jordan then I might explain like why the tires are so good. Really, really good to see, but that's what we expect from the best drivers in the world. Absolutely the case, and very much going to continue to be an even race, which anyone's race. Oh, Gasly! Oh, Gasly pitting out. Okay. The oh, they're coming out in P11. Okay. Early, early stops them, isn't it, Gary? Blazer got the fastest. Blazer is only 0 0.3 behind Hartfield. Who had Hartfield down? You had Hartveld. Well. Garzini, you had Hartveld. You feeling the pressure? Your man's under big pressure here. He's under big pressure. Look, here he comes. Shoot, if he gets past um, Hartveld, he's going to come for my guy, Whitehead. Okay, I appreciate it, Garzini. <laughs> also, I wore a McLaren shirt today just to be more on brand. It's That's the to dedication I go a to. A couple of tents gained on that final uh, on the last lap. I wore McLaren had, shirt. Uh, Whitehead. I, I don't think Whitehead's going to be too disappointed with a P2. Al Capone, you had McCormack, didn't he? Wasn't that your driver? Around Brown Hatch and yeah, you got. You got. We could have done actual bets. Here. <laughs> I love the challenge. Three different cars. McCormack is might McCormack while. might be checking uh, out though. One point five seconds. Well, I'm just out. hoping that Blazer and Hartfeld fight. Gonna That's going to bring Vanderveld and Yonkers up and take the pressure off Whitehead. So I need Hartfeld to like make this a really big fight. So Mojo in ACC, the tires are so important. It models the tire pressures. It models like how inflated the tyres are and therefore how much grip you get. So if you think a tyre, I'm trying to represent a tyre here quite badly, and this is the tarmac. If you think a tyre is not inflated, it, it like changes how it can be overinflated. You, you want the maximum contact with the ground, basically, and the tyre shape changes depending on how inflated it is. As well, so it's certainly going to test the limits of all our drivers that they have indeed. Blasher still got fastest lap, but can't get past Hartveld now. Someone's going to win $10,000.
uh, effectively. You've got Swiderek just in behind them. Then you've got Caterino just up ahead. Delcomo. By the way, I'm Delcomo. hoping that next year, I'm hoping, at the head of this field. you know, if this all has gone well, that hopefully we can be we can be more involved with the G Challenge and like do it a bit earlier. And I think that'd be a really cool thing for our community to like try and do some stuff with the G Challenge and, and support drivers getting through and. Uh, so the big thing I did with the G Challenge at the beginning is that if you don't know, with the Logitech McLaren G Challenge, it's a massive competition with $150,000 in prizes and some money can't buy experiences like going to meet Landon Norris at the Ripple Ring. You become eligible for those prizes just by basically entering. When I say entering, you have to do some clean laps. So a lot of the content I produced and the live stream I did earlier, a few weeks ago, was about demystifying that and encouraging people to just enter to to um to basically be in the mix and actually so, like nathan entered nathan won a pair of headsets because each week you enter they do a draw as well so hopefully we can do more stuff around that next year it's good for logitech because they want people in the competition it's good brand exposure i think it's good for us as well because it kind of curates another racing experience like a good quality racing experience mclaren hopefully like it because it's also mclaren branding so just about trying to make it work for everyone guys he's saying hartville's going to drop back to save tires from off fight early completed that move up to a p6 what do you think mccormack do you think mccormack might be burning his tires then it would be great to have some overlays here wouldn't it of the tires G2 Esports are in here, wow. They're a big team. What's this battle? Is this Van der Velde? Where's Yonkers? Why is Yonkers dropped down? Yonkers is dropping down. Yonkers is now held up behind Stapleford, isn't he? Pressure continues to prevail out against him, and as we enter, indeed, the true second half of this race now. Oh shoot! Yeah, you're right, Gary. It's only nine minutes to go. I think this is timed race. Nine minutes to go here. Nine and a half minutes. But there's three races, so they're like, this is the first race is GT fours, and then the next race is going to be 650s at Brands, I think they said, and the last one's going to be 720s at Hungary. So GT fours are really weird to drive. They're weird to drive for me anyway. In ACC and I racing, they're weird. So I think there might be some drivers here that just are really good in GT fours, but a lot of drivers are going to be very good at GT threes. Oh, stroll out. 2.1 second is the advantage. Hopefully he didn't have a big Matt crash. And Luke Whitehead actually just just momentarily going up to 2.3. So if I if I'm so let's say I'm Luke Whitehead here, right? Who well, I don't know too much about, but I've heard his name. I might be thinking I back myself in GT3s. I'm going to solidify the P2 here, and I'm going to I'm going to try and win the 10 grand on GT3s. That might be the thing. Sprinkle a little bit of magic onto this race. I think so. Uh, failure. Yonkers okay. I hope you're just a casual. That Alcomo is trying to get up ahead of Yonkers as well. Uh, they're a bit further back. That's now given a bit of breathing room. To so that's what I think. Place. That's what the I think. The battle's all over the place here, John. That's what we want to see from yep. these drivers. You know, with it being Leonardo de Alcamo. What a great in name that is. Challenges. Everyone scores points. It's, uh, that's always how it's been. But now it's the top ten as we see. Oh, a little bit of. Oh, is it only top ten? Scores points. If it's only top ten. Oh, Yonkers, my guy. Yonkers is out to P9 with a penalty. Just about keeps it within track limits. I would imagine. Maybe Yonkers is. My guy Yonkers here is just. Oh. Now in such danger. He's now under pressure. Is anyone watching bet on like horse racing? I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be able to do it. Any of room to maneuver down towards turn number one. It's a quick corner. Can't really make it. Dalcamo is a bit of a cork in the bottle here, isn't it? Even Stapleford's got three. Turn number two. It's not going to happen. But yeah, it's gone from bad to worse for Marco Yonkers, unfortunately. Oh, Yonkers, my guy. What's our host track? Yon risk of even we, need a, we need like a hashtag when something bad happens to Yonkers. There we go. Come on, Yonkers. P9 to P1 <laughs> in seven minutes. Yeah, and this is the race you have to take overtaking opportunities if they present themselves. Because if Brands Hatch, they're going to be an absolute minimum. Well, and that's a good point ring, from the commentator there. Brands Hatch is so going to be very difficult to overtake. This is the one that if you've you know, qualified out of position, <laughs> you really have to pinpoint as much as you're some, making overtakes. What's some beans, see like? here, uh, Pertile, we're on board with Pertile in P13. Looks like he's making uh, a move there. We've got Ayamulo. Oh, well, there's contact. No! Wide. We are Don't tell me it's 
and that is uh, Pertolo. Oh, it's Pertolo. It's at the back. Okay. Okay. All the way down <laughs> I to thought it was Yonkers there. We've got Apostol who gains a position up to P15. Pertolo now is in P14 and not ideal. We are seeing battles at the back there, but that was not the battle we want to see. It's not how we want it to. Yonkers in P9. Oh my word. Be able to try and move forward and take another position in a moment. We'll follow that up soon. As once again, we're back on so the mid. Chat, are we here. thinking McCormack's yeah, yeah, got this? Who is McCormack? What's the background on this guy? There, McCormack. So over the course of this race, great qualifying there, pace to get him up to near fifth starting position, but has dropped off a cliff since then. Now almost out of the points entirely. And we can see the intensity of that battle here. Oh McCormack shoot! Trying desperately to take over. There, McCormack is the guy who exposed ACC cheating a few days ago. Put Yonkers into a worse spot as we enter those final five minutes or so and he's an time. ESL yeah and, and Yonkers hasn't really been able to put Dan McCormack's in the ESL R1 he's, he's a big defending for the entirety of this race yeah that he did this tweet it blew up on Twitter it got 300,000 views about Zora cheating in ACC P5, looking to move up into P4 <laughs> <laughs> Dominic <laughs> Lyle with that fastest lap we need some other who else we got fastest lap that we've had over the course of our championship some so other far, ones. Hang already on. had APAC and LATAM happen Tigger van der Velde tries to fake a move up the inside forcing Blyer into a mistake but Blyer is a wily old fox he's not going to be too worried about someone in his mirrors he won't be driving with his mirrors why is my brain Velde, gone blank he's going to make an overtake <laughs> he's going to have to why is my brain gone blank to do it with Dominic Blyer they're actually also now catching up to Hart of Hell. Luke Whitehead maybe about to be under a little bit of pressure yeah the, these four I've got a great a one. Bit. A couple of laps to go in this race. Four minutes, or just over five minutes to Check go. Check that out. Check that one out. Probably McCormack once again, who's been able to maintain dominant pacing up. McCormack's just dominated well this point of Luke Whitehead. But aside from that, Hartville's coming back at Whitehead. Five, there is an active battle for most Van de Velde is really behind. Come on, Van de Velde, man. You're my other one. That is now potentially being made there, but it's cancelled the last second. Just not enough closure. So Dan McCormack is like, yeah. So he continues to hold back. Vanderveld as well restrains himself as he waits for a better opportunity to try and get the pass. Does anyone else know anything about any other drivers here? Yeah, 100%. He needs to get something done here. I don't think P5 to start off with in this field, especially, is going to be good enough. I think you need to be looking at a top three to, re to, to, to really feel confident and also. Yeah, uh, I can. I can see, with the format, I can see that. I mean, Brands Hatch. I don't know if it's don't reverse know, grid, mixed you know, grid, or qualifying again, but qualifying. If it's qualifying, qualifying at Brands is going to be so important. People said that they might be battling for six thousand um, dollars if Darren McCormack keeps racing like this. So he is so far ahead right now. Two yeah, P2 is six thousand dollars. It is a huge margin. And he looks like he's managing it really well. Whitehead hasn't necessarily been in the battle with the three cars behind him. Uh, just is like, Sapphire you know, already up to four? Dara McCormack. McCormack is a special talent. And, well, Jesus special Christ. So Come on, Van Der Velde. Come on. See how the rest of the pack continues to try and take over positioning. Like you said, definitely want a finish Come on, Van Der Velde. Come on. To keep your chances in good straights to be able to end up in the big money at the end of the day here. Once all the points are tallied up at the end of the Hungaro Ring race. Staying stable here. Find that passing That's up crazy, Gary. Yet. He's gonna win, isn't he? Two through five are the focus right now. You see as well, still three and a half laps to Mark three and a half minutes to go. Has continued to go on but if, if maybe Luke time, Whitehead is thinking it's just not worth it. It's not worth me pushing the tire, risking it. But I have to say that Whitehead is coming under pressure now. Whitehead is coming under big pressure. In fact, Van der Velde is almost caught up with Whitehead. There's Whitehead. Look, this is a four-way fight for P2. So Yonkers right now just need to stop the rot. Make sure you guarantee yourself at least one or two points moving forward. Yonkers isn't going to win this, so let's be honest, right? Qualifying you just had, that is going to be demoralizing. And, and, you know, how fast and, and how sharp this championship is. You know, we're in the next race within a few minutes. You know, we're in the third race, you know, within 30 minutes of that. Like, you've got no time to... So if you're, even if Yonkers wins the next two race races, race if vital. McCormack does a 1-2-2, it's over. It's McCormack's one, has McCormack so. is off into the distance. Uh, I think around the just made a little mistake, actually. Made a mistake through turn number eight. Uh, we'll see if Whitehead's going to hold on a couple laps to go. Nine and ten on the previous lap. Uh, but has caught back up to this pack. I'm, I, I don't know, I just... Are we going to see any scent here? Are these drivers happy with being in that top five and, and look to make moves? Uh, it's a good point, isn't it? It's a lot of strategy here. Really Welcome, Phil Norman, a new that. member. So, I'm assuming Dominic good Blyer to see you, Phil. Hope you're doing well. Podium, and at some point, we'll have to take a chance. It's been pretty tame from the Let us know how Again, things are going in Phil's world. Let us know who you think out of these drivers on the left-hand side is going to win the $10,000, by the way. have to see someone take a risk here. Try to go for a send. See if you can push that I think the person here who would really go for it is Van der Velde. Because if you're Van der Velde, you're thinking, hang on, I could maybe get PT. But he's dropped off a little bit. Huge amount of respect being shown by all the drivers on the grid right now. No one 
try and risk anything this late into the race. They don't want to give up their own personal positions either. It's leading to very respectful final few laps. Um, so got, I think the way it works, Garzin, is there's three finals the list here of and then they tally the points from each one and that's the winner the so this is the first one then we're going to go to brands and 650s and hungaring uh, in 720s Brandon Abraham. I think that's how it works. So that the second one in 2020. Sebastian, Malcolm Humphrey, that's why they might be thinking, yeah, I'll just take the points. If you're Whitehead right now, you would 100% take P2, obviously. Igor Rodriguez, Philip Simard. He is the only driver who has a chance to become a two-time. He will be in the North America um, one, Championship later on today. Matt Danson, Oishin Walsh. All right, Philip Simard wants to watch in North Nick America. Ossinger, Mohamed Ibrahim, Martin Van Lozenord, Gonzalo Pio Perez, which remember last year was very emotional with his win, and Brandon Hawkin. We will have a new name added to the list from the EMEA region. And, well, is it going to be Dara McCormack on the evidence of this Actually, I wonder if it works as a grand final as well. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a little bit of a mistake Maybe. there. Give, presenting a slight opportunity to Tinko van der Velde. And if I know Tinko van der Velde, he gets a snifter of an opportunity. Go on, van der Velde. He's absolutely going for it. See if van der Velde's able to capitalise on it now. Coming up to pretty intense breaking zone for all of our drivers in a moment. So we'll have to see if he's going to be able to take it. Indeed, van der Velde coming oh. back around. A bit of contact as well. Go on, van der Velde. Oh, van der Velde got through to P4. Out, loses P4 Penalty, to van der Velde, though. And he'll push ahead now. Or under the investigation. The race. Yeah, naughty, naughty there for me. I think uh, van der Velde <laughs> might, be, might be asked to give that position back there as he leaves the door open. I, I, he, I think he's just giving it to him. Is there, a, is there a mistake? Has he given that back to Bly? I think he's yeah, given he that back to Bly. Do you know what? I genuinely think that he's done that intentionally there, which Van der Velde, what a guy. Just tip your hand and what go, a guy. Respect. Fair play. He was a little bit over the line on the overtake with Blyer. He's left the door wide open. He's tried to, you know, not lose any time at all, really, in giving the position back. Uh, ultimately, they did have a bit of contact. They're now out of touch with the. Do you know if Super uh, GT tried this? Second being Luke I Whitehead don't think Steve Bell, likes ACC that much. I know he doesn't really like iRacing that much. <laughs> Nicely played. Once so I don't. I think so. I know Jimmy's tried it. I know Dave Cam's tried it. I know Jardier's tried it. Because me and Jardier, we we did our things at the same time to like uh, raise awareness. Just crossing over the finish line, by the way, the same for P2 and 3. Whitehead takes second. Right, Whitehead and P2. But I just, I, I don't know if this goes to a grand final. Hang on, I think this might go to a grand final. Yeah, an exceptional performance there from McCormack. From start to finish, qualified well and ultimately managed to get the result as well. Never really looked troubled, if I'm honest. This is the strongest field we will have all week. I feel like there's long. a grand final. And yeah, McCormack has, has made that look relatively easy. I'm sure he's sweating. I'm sure it wasn't that easy, right? You know, but from, from our perspective, it looked pretty good. Uh, Whitehead was under pressure from, you know, start to finish as well. Managing there might be a grand final. Spot, uh, and as well, did, you know, didn't really look back. Didn't, didn't really they, they might tell us to worry about yeah. Hartevel making a move in the end because he positioned his car in a perfect position which i think will help him moving forward in this challenge commentary is very good to be fair like you know, if you've dealt with pressure once this is very good again, i don't think i could again. so maybe he's in the lead at do you some think point, chat do you think i could do this you know stuff. battling for that lead position but the front five they seem like the standouts uh you know we had a little bit of sportsmanship at the end there with this Bly is very van slick van i assume it was sponsored uh, you know it was a little bit of sportsmanship maybe it was just a mistake from van der velde uh but yeah a good first race yeah absolutely very clean race between welcome the rampage good to see hope you are positionings over the course of it no one really gaining or it's quite nice having a American and like a British person as well. Oh, that's quite a nice mix. I wonder if they have a teleprompter. Well, they're just the really good. Once again, Dara McCormack ending up kind of dominating things here, both inside of qualification as well as the race itself. Leaves the question open, is that going to continue now as you move into the... So McCormack is in, is in the pound seat, 100%. $10,000 could be his. We'll be finding out very soon, ladies and gentlemen. I believe we're going to be actually taking a look here at the standings. For the race, let's go ahead and see that one final time. Dara McCormack ends up with the full spread. Up oh, the Marco Yonkers with the two points. Look Whitehead. how quickly they put this together. I'm, I'm impressed. 11, Dominic Blyer in nine. And once again, points continue to... Whitehead, though, if, yeah, if Whitehead can win position, this race seven, and McCormack comes second, five. then... Four, all to play for uh, race three, uh, isn't Como, it? We've then got Castorino with three points. Marco yeah, Yonkers do you think, Garcin, do you think I would be damage. like the person Most speaking more or less, though? What do you think? Did stop the rock, he was just Am I like more like Murray Walker or Martin Grundle? Who takes out your top ten and the what do you last think? Point. Fastest lap, Dominic Tinko van der Velde is just like sim racing. 
all championship long. So that's APAC and LATAM we've already finished. And uh, yeah, Three Dutch drivers, three lap. British drivers, two Polish drivers, three Italian drivers, a Czech and a Italian. Irish. Of the North American races are potentially going to be able to overtake that a little bit later on in the day. With that, though, we can now uh, take a look here as well. We have a giveaway going on over the course of today. You can see, uh, giveaway. To see one of these a little bit earlier over in the lobby. So that will be over Very on nice Twitch. Signed uh, Lando Norris F1 replica. If you guys are interested in it, you can go ahead and put explanation point McLaren. You can put that in, in the a Twitch chat. chat. Entered to win one of those. Yeah, that's a cool prize. I, I saw it in the lobby as well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, maybe I can maybe I can put it on the flight home, but it's actually really big, so probably not. <laughs> Make sure you don't crush it I think you'd be too polite. You'd be the other guy. Okay, well, I'll be the other guy. Who should I partner with? Over towards race number two, as we get ready to who should be who France. should be my as commentary partner? Much more difficult track overall for our driver, just with regards to trying to overtake over the course of it, correct? Yeah, and it's in one of the older McLarens. The you sound like English Dirt it's Rally Cage Rally right? Very nice. Uh, who is that? Is that? Because we have the 720S. That's used. Well, I knew who that was. Now, uh, within any leagues or any championships. Uh, oh, it's nice. Just McLaren, chill. Using the fastest one, right? Which is the 720S. My Logitech is joking. So it's a car that they might not have had as many reps in, which again could provide a bit of a surprise. You know, some of the drivers who are, right. let's say, they feel like they're outside that top ten might have pinpointed. Jimmy Broadbent. That would be interesting because in the Gran Turismo one, Tom Brooks is the speaking a lot and Jimmy's the colour one. Pretty unbeatable. So if I did with Jimmy, I would be the colour one, right? Whether that form happens into race number two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, quick break, and when we come back, it's time for Brands Hatch to see who will end up taking our second race of the day. Quick break. What does this mean? Oh, five-minute break. Okay. Hang on, I want to find out this G challenge. Hang on. Hang on. Can you see this? Logitech McLaren G challenge. Grand finals. So what's the grand final? It says this one. Okay. Um, schedule. Grand finals is today. Hundred thousand pounds in cash prizes. So this is the one that if you end if you entered it you go in the draw to win it and like Nathan won this one. Um, I, that was the first webcam I had actually. This is what this is top regional regional champions win the DD, and they win ten thousand dollars. And everyone in the top eight wins the wireless headset, and then anyone who finishes nine sixteen wins two hundred fifty dollars. Not bad. Grand prizes four regional champions. Oh, if you win the re if you're the regional champ, you go and meet Lando as well. And there's two sweepstake means that any like the sweepstake we've got here in the chat. If you went to that, you went into the draw as well. What's going on? What's this drama about? Oh, this is my wheel. This is my wheel. We've got a sizzle reel. Look at this. Sizzling away. S sizzling. This is the sexiest video for a DD I've ever seen. True Force. In game physics. Unrivaled realism. I'm doing the audio commentary. Designed. I should ask more often if anyone watching our streams is blind. I'm pretty sure. I get a million views a month on YouTube at the moment. I'm pretty sure there'll be a proportion of people who watch that who are blind. So that makes me think maybe I should do more stuff on audio description. I like this. That was put together. Boom. That was quite cool to see that design bit. I'm getting more in tune with this. I think the brakes, I'm getting quite a lot more in tune with them. This is how it looks, by the way, after however long of use. Billy's sight impaired. League, you're, so you're legally blind. You were racing. Oh, you were the blind driver. You were very fast, Billy. So how do you... How... What? How much can you see and what are your difficulties? What could, What could make your viewing experience better, basically? 
What's that saying? I'll never get the quick mixer. If you have everything under control, then you're just not going fast enough. Speed is a peculiar thing. The more you go looking for it, the more it starts to chase you. <laughs> that least, sizzle defined. That's how it always felt to me. You have sight out of right and... I've raced on slopes, tuned motorcycles, oh, okay. flown drones, chased cars and dreams. Rampage, I'd really oh, wish I could join in, but if I was to do it, I'd do it with Twitter points and I'd have more chance of winning this battle giveaway. Is a race itself. <clears throat> well, the entry has to be free. Perfect like, every starts. entry has to be free. Reaction times. But it does it's require times. you to sign up to sign up. Why can't I get this on? And lab times. <laughs> Why have I forgotten how my quick works? Oh, you have to top and bottom, isn't it? So when speed finally catches up to you, speed better be ready. Spin it. Is this Marshall Yonkers? Who's this? It's like David Guetta. Is that David Guetta? Nice. So, oh, some more sizzles. Well, you can do the join the Discord rampage. You can do... Anyway, I can't remember what else is in there. You still have an entry. You still have an entry. That's the thing. Oh, Verstappen. Well, I don't think Perez is going to put up too much of a fight, is he? Let's be honest. <laughs> well, we're going to be back for Brands Hatch, which is a track I think a lot of us will know quite well because of GT, to be fair. To be fair... Right, here we go, back, back, back. Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Logitech McLaren G Challenge Finals for 2022. Just finished up our first race on Mizano and now getting rip and ready for our second Tungaru in the background, Brands isn't it? Hatch, joined by Luke Crane, of course. Luke, no, that's Brands Hatch! How do we just see things devolve <laughs> on Mizano and what are going to be the keys? That's to definitely the Hungaru rig. That says Brands Hatch. I think it's going to be the same story throughout <laughs> this championship. It'll be qualifying. Qualifying is absolutely key. Uh, ACC specifically is built for an endurance race. So sprint races, it's difficult to overtake. If you're going to make an overtake, you've got to be absolutely perfect. And we had to oh, that that's very sensible, Rampage, very sensible. To make overtakes, uh, but also, Twitter is quite a... Really used as much can as be quite a stressful place to be as well. Could be the opportunity for, for people to, to maybe catch other drivers napping who've not got the experience with the car. We're going to have to wait and see if that'll end up being true. Obviously, we'll be working with the 654 this right, race two, so how's our man Whitehead going to do? How's McCormack going to do? What about Yonkers? Is Yonkers going to go on a mad one? still going to be interesting to see how we'll they see. try to adjust the cards for those who obviously are kind of newer to sim racing or watching these tournaments specifically for ACC in general. Uh, you'll know that ACC allows you to customize the car pretty much down to the wire in very specific ways, things that affect, affect even like the suspension, the aerodynamics, uh, any specific tunes that you're going to be expecting racers to make going into this one to try and improve the performance on the 650? Or? Well, I, just, I would expect Williams to be the strongest team. Three yep. drivers, they would have all been working Williams together, Esports. I, would, I would imagine. To a certain team. Extent. Of course, it is an individual championship. You know, if it's between you or your teammate winning 10 grand, you want to win the 10 grand. It's uh, it's, it's pretty easy. $10,000. Can you imagine who knows? You know, so many different factors in that Just regard. got 10 grand. You would imagine wow. they have the best setup for this situation. Uh, oh, yeah, setups as well. Uh, another driver with a, with a pretty good setup. But there's, there's quite a, a lot of setup. Like um, uh, companies out there now, so you can kind of get a decent say, baseline. I want to say, say Blyer is like like the head of one or something like that. As well, yeah, yeah, definitely. The they, they, they've all got the you know they've all got the fingers in those kind of pies anyway. <laughs> we made all a right, setup well, for this. It's time to get ourselves into it. We made so we made setups for every track. Onto the I track, as like we said before, moving ourselves into it. It's Brands Hatch for race number two here, and our drivers are moving out now, starting their initial run. Or right, two. let's see who's because this is six fifty F's GT three. GT3 is very different to drive GT4, is much more power, TC, different. Um, when you do the setup, you can see all sorts of stuff like there's a lot of setting, there's a lot more you could do with a setup of GT3s. GT4s, you can't change. Oh, here's Tinko. I'm 19 years old and I compete under Williams Esports. Tinko's a Williams guy. So how did I get started in sim racing? Um, I started in 2018 
on the controller. I just bought F127 for like a couple of euros and I really really enjoyed it, especially the competitive nature of it. So I just kept playing so I don't control doing everyone. races, trying to improve myself. And then in 2020, I started playing ACC, which... Sounds like a very calm person, doesn't he? Uh, I love GT3 racing. So from that moment, I started also doing link league racing in the ACC. And I'm happy to be here in Logitech McLaren G Challenge. How was qualifying? So how was my Logitech? McLaren I didn't get to do Challenge, Daily C uh, Rampage. It's one of my big regrets of this week. Very, very good. I, I didn't get to do it. Uh, Maybe we can do it later. Two, three, and the last Maybe we can do it later because so for VR, it I should be by. I need to work out my VR headset. In the previous split, so uh, uh, what's going on with this split, tracking? It's just mad. Smooth sailing for me and uh, happy to get into it. It's the crazy. I need to research see if anybody fixed this. Yeah, I really wanted to do like it. In the knockout grids, it was, it was quite good. Um, I had so much to do. The first few rounds were a bit easier. Oh, nice um, from Rampage. People got knocked out. It got harder. That's All a difficult combo as well. Through, so what eventually come into the last round, which is stacked with uh, really amazing drivers. Any final race highlights? That's for me probably turn one lap one. There was a small incident in front of me and I managed to go up into the inside of two people. That's what you'll so see Tinker. Here's Tinker going over the line. After turn one. So I knew this first lap, Tinker goes P2. Spot, so I was very, very happy with that. Nice one. Yonkers in the pit. Oh no. What's my game plan for the regional finals? Uh, I think you started last and won them. Will be key to be That's well, very difficult. I'd say one thing that has improved in G7 that's helped a lot is the points. reduction in the uh, rolling starts. That's a rolling start so race, isn't it? Should be looking good. I don't actually know because I didn't, didn't do it. Any advice for new sim drivers? I think uh, mostly enjoy it. Um, not everyone is going to be, you know, top esports, top level. If you enjoy it for a long just time, just enjoy drive, sim racing. That's the advice from Tinko van der Velde. So, uh, yeah, just enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. So, what was it like to move from a controller to a steering wheel? I think it was quite hard at the start. Suddenly having to learn to adapt to a steering wheel, to more like real driving, it's it's a bit weird because with a steering wheel you have so much more range of input. If you can make the jump, I would suggest it. McCormack's really in like the lead. Where's so Whitehead? Whitehead in P4. Man, McCormack is looking so good, isn't he? What is the benefit of a sim rig? Staying consistent. I think it's not necessarily improving in pace, but if you have to drive like for 60 minutes or stint, then it's going to be tough on something like a controller or chair that moves around the whole time. It helps a lot over a full stint, I would say. What will it be like driving my teammate Trump. there? Oh, who's that? Van der Velt's off! Um, no! It's going to be tough for sure. He's, <laughs> so strong. he's so calm when he's chatting. I'm like, oh, this, course, okay, this is calm. It easy and he always just went off the track. He'll be very strong. We'll both <laughs> oh, no. try hardest, as hard as we can. Who's that as well? People pulling over to make sure they don't. Are they wheel dragging or something? Right, coming back onto the track Who's that? Now to see our first Flyer. Of the and Man, oh, someone's off there. The I think so McCormack is looking McCormack absolutely dominant here. Inside of P1 for that was good to hear from Van der wasn't it, though? We did see him actually lose that lead for a split second, if I remember seeing it correctly, to uh, Chris Hartevelt. However, McCormack retook that lead literally a moment or two later. As they Whitehead is not up there at the moment, but that's still a few laps. Time. Yeah, Dominic Blair also got up to pole position as well. Van der Velde would get another lap in. Brief change, it was about 10 seconds. And yeah. Thanks Gary, appreciate it man. Sitters. And then McCormack went, no, I'll have that back. Uh, and as you can see, it's still at the top of the timesheet. It's not exactly sure what the time is. I'm sure we'll get that information up very shortly. But we are on board here with Tinko. It would be big Velde. drama. So let's take you on that from I'm not suggesting here. anything. So right -hander. No real overtaking opportunity. But it would be big here. drama it's, if uh, McCormack was to sure get punted in, in, in like Druid's lap one, wouldn't it? Because he'd re because he'd go from a position of being absolutely dominant. Like, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, we could do that rampage. Can't specify the car day, so you have to do open class and make sure. From the APAC region on the exit of this final. So Van der Velde's all warming the tyres. Got to be as far left as possible oh. on the exit. But if you hit that grass, you are in serious trouble. That's Here true. we go. A lap of Brands Hatch across the start finish line. Then for Tinko, and this is an absolute flyer. Uh, this is the best place to set an overtaken opportunity. My up. word, kind of he's gone wide there. there. Tinko. That is not clean uh, at all. Uh, if you want to try and force so the car to be on the inside of turn number one, so that they <coughs> have a slow run up towards turn number two, and then you can make the move into the apex. Turn two. You can't overtake through one. You have to set it up. And this is such a tricky corner. 
down towards turn number three. Graham Hill. You've got to try and set someone up to be defensive. On the Astro. So get a nice run down towards turn Welcome, Fafna. Good to see you, man. Hope you're well. Long time. Fafna's been around these parts for ages. Fafna's like you, you go to the pub and Fafna's... He's been there. Down in towards He's got the stories five, to tell. Go downhill underneath the bridge here. There's an uphill breaking zone, so you can kind of I can of tell. I can tell you, someone who's done Browns Hatch in a few different games, you know, ACI the, racing the GT. You, this is a fast lap. Like this is all. I don't want to say perfection, but it's like it's many, many levels above what I can. You just got to hit perfectly yourself. Don't give anyone a snifter of an opportunity. Tinker will get a couple of a couple more opportunities here. Will you get some slipstream? Oh. Bit of counter steering. Is he pulling over this guy? Yeah. Let's see what it's going to be. 122.9 to be. Wow, look how close it is at the top. I think he's going to go for another lap because he didn't go up the right hand side. Yeah, that was a second off. Welcome, Joseph. Good to see you. Joseph, you a man that likes ACC. The fine hope of. Yeah, the commentator Harpoon. Good luck, Rampage. Keep us updated. But yeah, look. I mean, look how close it is between first and second. That's basically. You, it's impossible to actually. I know we can understand the number. But in my opinion, it's impossible to comprehend that amount of time. When you think about how small that time is, it, it, it's just meaningless. But they should be tied. <laughs> So, you know, imagine what the times would have been in the 720S. So 22.920 is an incredible lap I would time. say that that, that lap time at the back is not... I think behind. Nathan can Absolutely do fast. nothing that. between the front two. Can Hartevel just get on the power? When Nathan comes back into chat, we'll ask him, what, what can he do at Brands in 650S? half a tenth. Further back, and then we've got because I did a qualifying guide here. Yeah, what was my qualifying guide? <laughs> it is very close here, John. Very, very close Hang on, what was my qualifying guide here? Top five that we were seeing yes. back on our first track as well. That continues to be competitive here. Luke Whitehead obviously a little bit more difficulties getting his qualification run in oh. this time, so he's dropped off a bit. Oh, on the absolute limit there, nearly loses the car. Would have qualifying lost a bit of momentum. Come up towards that start, finish straight, and across the line. It is a slight improvement still. So Van der Velde has found something here. He may have found, what, half a tenth? Hang on, my qualifying half a tenth. And well, with that mistake, it was a 124.8 to be found. I think there is. Think of Van well, will know that. Nowhere got will be that close to them. Here. As it stands, though, Durham McCormack still passed. Unless that was Half a Nathan Bell, lap. Is second. Blyer is in third but the lap we did a qualifying guide for on this channel was only half a second off this. Out there, John. Uh, the top five is the same top five from race number one. Oh, nice one, Joseph. But as I Carl say that, what to get the old comer, of course, has now got to put it up into that top six. Did not have a great first race. We actually saw him off the track at one point. But in the second race, he's getting mixy. Mixing it with the big dogs. I'll tell you what, this isn't looking good for Whitehead. Because it's looking really good for McCormack right now. That's what I'll say. Really good. But massive pressure on him. Because if he ends up in some sort of accident, then he just probably just wants to disappear into the distance. Last one, Joseph. Can you can you tune? Oh! Can you tune my RCZ? Oh, Whitehead up to P3. Look how close it is in the top three. Five thousands of a second. You can't even comprehend five thousands of a second. Oh, that's a mistake. That's off we go. Five thousands of a second between the top three. That is obscene. That is obscenely close. I can't even comprehend like how close it is. That's like a fraction of a second on the gear shift. It's like nothing. Just over a tenth of a second separating your top five. It's so close. Oh, we could be in for an absolute cracker of a race here. We said that we're on Brands Hatch, the start is very much yeah, everything needs I to agree. be as much as possible right out of the gate. Especially again, I don't know what ECF yeah, my car. I don't want to. I don't mind sure to go up Overtakes. We even had already seen that just in our previous race as well. So make sure you get yourself off to that booming start, as it's going to be very, very difficult to find it at a mid or late. These guys are really slick. Yeah, you know and overtakes cost you so much time around here. There's no such thing as a free overtake unless they're in, they're facing the wrong way in a wall. So if you're making a move, you've got to be. Very I don't think I could be this fast pace. I think I. For the drivers outside the top two. I think you sent I think I can't. To me, this is just so professional and slick. Yeah, you're making I tend to sort of wander about a bit. Uh, and ultimately, it could cost you a big performance. Take a pause. You've got to pick and choose your battles.
curious to see with Luke Whitehead booming, bumping himself all the way up to a uh, top three start as well here. I think I speak slower than this as well. Some additional this is like really well. lots of so good information. Pretty have the run of the track back on race number one here. Now I think he's gonna have a little bit more competition right from the go of it. Maybe just maybe he'll lose a little bit more of that pacing and have to fight a bit more aggressively to maintain P1. We'll have to wait to see though. I know it sounds stupid, but obviously being in the lead of a race is the best position to be in. Yeah. But for the likes of, it doesn't matter whether it's McCormack, Van der Velde, Blyer, um, yeah. you know, Whitehead. If they can get into the lead of this race, Maybe I they are all how exceptional front runners. And as you can see there, with the point How cheap could I get a, um, first and a kit, like a, what would be the margin. best car I could so buy, Joseph, in the UK to, like, tune it, like, cheaply? Of the race. Have fun with Here's it. Here's the starting order one more time for race number two, ladies and gentlemen. Dara McCormack in pole position for the second yeah, Fafna, time. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, Veld pretty blown away second. by what these guys can do. Dominic Blyer in four. Tinko Vanderveld in our fifth starting It's just so, for me, it's so, the pace is so quick. Because obviously seven, they're working Jonathan to like this is a very Seville slick Seville operation Seville. that Logitech have put on here. Yeah, ninth and tenth we've got Sebastian Apostle and Robbie Stapleford. Civic. Yonkers and Dario. S2000 wouldn't be cheap though for a good quality one. Would I be not getting a good quality one at the point? Well. In 13th, then got Lucas I wouldn't Spencer mind a Civic and then stripping it out. Position, and then at the back is Castorino and Lukajek rounding out your 16 drives. Yeah. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, just a few more moments away. Any last moment thing, thing is, if I get a Civic, we're talking what, like twenty years old. Um, what about Rust and stuff like that? Not really. You haven't got time to really a Jazz. About anything now? You've done your qualifying. It's all about making sure that you. Just what would you do with a Jazz? Up. If so I gave you, if I gave you two thousand dollars, what would you do with a Jazz? You just don't want to be involved in that because again, you lose so much time in terms of just running side by side through one corner here. You're going to lose half a second. MX5 maybe, a maybe, but they tend to. The old, the cheap ones are like really bad quality. Darren McCormack in race number one. Didn't give anyone an opportunity, yeah. right? So if you are handing him time by, you know, letting him just drive off and you battling with other people, EP3. What's an EP3? Right, because he just doesn't make mistakes. He's like a robot. I don't know what an EP3 oh, is. Oh, is that a um, eyes on sorry, a Civic? Prize, your eyes on the time as well. As that's what's going to determine who takes. The and what would I tune with it? Let's get ready to jump into it. As race number two is going live in just a moment. Once again, Darren let's say I buy a Civ an old Civic Type R. Is going to be starting out in pole. What do I actually do? Do I change the exhaust? Yeah, we've got a short formation. Do I? Final corner. They're not terrible. Are they? So and they have to all sit at the same pace. They get a little box on their screen, and they can't go further ahead, and they can't stay too far behind. Otherwise, they'll <laughs> get themselves a drive-through penalty. So you need to make sure that you're within that box. Are you sure about that, Jose? How are you going to get, get 911 cornering? The loud pedal down. Dara McCormack then winner from race number one. All right, let's see what's going to start at Brands because if you're McCormack and the pink and blue car, purple, the Sophie car, wants to win this championship, it's like so difficult, McCormack isn't it? Winning this race number two, in my opinion. Oh, they basically have to. Yeah, maybe a track, maybe something I could take down to Brands. Three. Who knows how the channel will go? Maybe it'll be two fun. of the EMEA regional finals for the Logitech McLaren G Challenge 22. Let's just see and how this kicks off. We are green racing once again, and McCormack gets a very good start. And actually, the front four all oh, get a really nice start. Whoa, that was close. There, Maybe that's that code. If you're if you're Hartvel, do you have to dive up the do you have to dive up the inside here? Three wide in the background. It looks like we may have a bit of our God racing is a so risky. Come through turn number two, but John, Red life Sunday Cup is that a real life racing? We come to expect it from now on, but. That was beautiful. Absolutely. I thought there was contact there. It might have been net case. Shenanigans around Druids for turn number two, but is unable to reckon towards anything. So oh man, just look at this bit of time chaos at the back. <laughs> going towards it. Away from that though, midfield is very. You don't want to be back there. Now. Where's Yonkers? No, the place. Yonkers, Yonkers is in the 16. Just yet, but it's going to remain close. <laughs> Yonkers, no. Yonkers is in last. Positions. Oh, Marco Yonkers down in P16. <laughs> he had a chance of getting a pick. The commentator's curse. <laughs> it didn't work out. Now he's right at the back. I think he's made one position up there. As there is some side-by-side -side action heading then down towards 6 and 7. Look at the lines uh, there. Yonkers cutting so much for that. Awesome. P16. So Lukasek uh, giving as good as he does indeed get. Tinker van der Velde trying to get back up into that top five. Because De Como is holding on to that top five. The gap I could get a Honda. I, not, there is a genuine top I could get a Jazz. At this point. Uh, I think there's a genuine top five as well. I think Tinko just doesn't feel that inspiring. But maybe if I strip it out, black the windows, yeah, get a big a, exhaust, uh, you know, invert the like reverse lights, get like the white the reverse lights. Like, you know, boxes. Like we said before, he had started things out. Um, the lower portion of the put some nice alloys on it. Put some side mount side skirts. What would I do? Put a front splitter on it. <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> 
I have the most ridiculous hunting gas and then take it for the MOT and just pray. Remove weight would be easy, right? You just remove the passenger seats, back seats. And not easy, but would you put a roll cage? You'd have to put a roll cage in. If Tinker Van Avella has to make an overtake, it's going to cost Man, look at McCormack here just dominating. And ultimately might render him useless in terms of... Yeah, just get... Of just four. prepare to have I lots of conversations with the police. No, not Spinners. Spinners, spinners were always fire, stupid. Got to be clever here spinners were never cool. If they start battling with each other too early, they could almost hand McCormack this championship in race number okay, two. Okay, Joe like, says, let's get Coilover's suspension and strip. They almost need to work together. There's not really That's not that exciting, though, is it? this circuit either. So, yeah, McCormack what about my spitter? <laughs> unbeatable today. Can I put an intercooler in it? A decent pacing ahead of Chris Hartevelt, a full second. What's a car, Josie? What's a car that has a lot of space in the engine bay? That means I can just add like stuff. I want that turbo that goes through the hood. Find opportunities to move forward here. Gain a bit more over Dara McCormack, who has just been so about like a racing gearbox over the course of our first few races. Yeah, he has, and it was it was pretty expected. Very three fast slap of the race. As well, Hartevelt. Uh, White has gone down to third place, by the way, everyone. Yeah, not having the, the, the worst race, by any means. Young is up to 15, got but the pressure of Luke Whitehead in behind. Does Whitehead look to make a move early on in this race? Does he well, try maybe, maybe for Whitehead, maybe you maybe hope Hartevelt really goes Michael. for it because Hartevelt needs to win this more, doesn't he? Drag him along. I think he's got two laps to make a decision here. Whitehead will be like, right, what's going on? Is Hartevelt doing the job for me here? Yeah, I agree. I agree. If that gap comes out to the front driver, I think you're seeing Whitehead send it sooner. Swap the whole. Later. But if I swap in the drivetrain, why don't I buy the Whitehead car that has the drivetrain? I'm swapping. Right. Isn't that going to be so team expensive team to swap a drivetrain? You have to buy the drivetrain, presumably the car with it, and bin it. The track. It's cost him a bit here. Then you've got to, you know, you know actually strip it and then swap it with that labour. And then it, there might be issues with it. He just can't afford to do that. These drivers are too good to be giving them free time by running off the circuit. It looks like Whitehead recovered nicely, actually. Mm -hmm. Still only three tenths behind Hartevelt. That could have been a race ender. Could have easily. What about tyres? The there, and that was game over. Yeah, yeah put like a sequential. Really well. Again, it, it, it looks flappy cool, paddles. What about tyres? What if about? Would you like would you change uh, tyres? Would you put, you put like really sporty tyres on it? Slicks. Made a mistake as well. As Whitehead went wide, it's yeah, but like 5k is quite, isn't that quite expensive for an engine swap? As opposed to just, how much would it cost you to buy the car with that engine? Gain there from McCormack, uh, considering that the difference in qualifying time was two. The fire says a car body says a vessel. Very philosophical. <laughs> Sarah McCormack continues to excel from his position. Wow, McCormack is just absolutely obscene. I think start writing the ten thousand dollar check to McCormack. More and more time to that, just like we saw back on Mizano for our first race of the day. It's been this tail of tape so far. It's going to continue to be the tail unless someone else can match that pacing, which just seemed an unfindable task for any of the other drivers on the grid here so far. Yeah, Robbie Staple for Dana P16 again, not having much luck. What about yeah, Joseph? If I buy a broadcast, like an uh, old 911, do they get really cheap? Final. I've never looked at old bicycles. And then I can just modernise the bits first. that well, even are the start, broken line, or failing. Unfortunately, it looks like his uh, potential of winning this championship is over here as well. Robbie Stableford, one of the one of the young guns coming through the ranks at the moment, has an exceptional bright future ahead of him. But yeah, if he uh, if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. We're on board then with Luke Whitehead. Who's trying to make a potential move on Hartevelt? Hartevelt, though, keeping firm. I'm this slightly surprised we don't see more like Logitech branding here. I know they've got the G, but like you almost see every other brand other than Logitech. That car Isn't in front. It Force them to take a more defensive line through turn number one, and then ultimately sweep underneath them up towards turn I guess it says quite close enough, but he tried to, to make something work there. As you see, Dara McCormack Man, McCormack is just so good. Perfectly. Just doesn't look phased whatsoever and not really a track you can bump for after incredible run of the last 18 months yonkers is just not looking good for yonkers unfortunately will fall behind in his pursuit of chris hartevelt continues to maintain that p2 once again going to go in short here not finding a proper opportunity to do it once again just has to kind of hold back continue to race on his line on his own pacing unless white has like i'm pretty happy to go for a pt a i'll take yeah, the six so and a half thousand thanks but then you don't go really meet lando relying on the driver in front to make a mistake so you almost just need to be old 911 be a death trap okay behind them to try and force them into a mistake but ultimately then you lose lap time as well by not hitting your breaking points perfectly because you just can't that? see it oh man so it's a real difficult situation to be in 
knowing that if you do have oh, it was a slide there as well from White Whitehead, you see he's pushing. He's absolutely giving that it everything. That's what we want to see. But you know that as soon as you even try and get involved with Heart of Elk, okay, what if I do this? Give time away. What if I do this, right? I know you can buy what, five laps now. Is it five? Well, it will be four laps by the time we come up to the end yep. of this. Uh, tell There's me this is a stupid idea, right? Come to the end of this. I know you can buy old, for example, RCZ for like two grand, three grand. That are just about possible. So what if I, in the knowledge right of how like how uh, they drive and how to maintain them, how I buy like a banger one? But it's a front wheel drive car. Exceptional from them. The still what if I got on? What if I got? What's the cheapest Audi Quattro I could get? As well against Luke Whitehead, who has been pursuing a pass. Uh, Audi TT Quattro. Is including Luke Whitehead now claiming the fastest lap time as well. Basically, so I want to get a Master. Really, I want to get. Let's be honest, I really want to get a Master MX-5. Right. He's had a few slides here and there, which has cost him those pivotal few tenths of a second, which could have potentially allowed. You maintain the Porsche. What if I if I get an old Master MX-5? And just yeah, convert it to track day. We are seeing Jonathan Seville catch up to Vanderbilt. I could put a big wing on it. Three seconds behind him is Vanderbilt. Also still pursuing a pass against DL Caldo, who took P5. I think the TT Quattro's will get cheap though, it since then. because it wasn't a massive spec upgrade to have Quattro. Not been able to make any serious gains on catching up to Dominic Blyer. No, no. But then we go back to S2000. Very similar to what we saw from the APAC. What about is there any Fiat? Oh, I don't know. I don't get a Fiat. What, isn't it that Fiat A bath? Isn't that like a um, slide from Luke Whitehead and yet he rear wheel drive like to get himself the fastest coupe? Lap race as Van der Velde is going to set up a potential move around the outside of Dalacomo. It's not quite going to work out. And I am fully aware that I have said Dalacomo uh, is named about eight different ways at this point. So yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. We'll, we'll, MX5. We'll, we'll move with it. Uh, so this is the perfect situation here. Forcing. The driver in front to be defensive through oh, Panic Hill Bend. And there's a mistake. Dal Camo with Van der Veld. And I tell you what, the big winner in that is Seville. Seville, yeah. Seville is going to grab two. It's positions. amazing how quickly now, they put that under investigation. Too close there. He did nothing wrong. Maybe that's automatic because of the safety. There to be. But if the car makes a mistake and you're pretty much. Oh, so isn't, it, isn't that is that the fee? It was just an expensive MX5. Avoid the scuffle going on. A Camaro engine MX5. Isn't that going to be way too much to go through those rear wheels? Result of that one. Del Camo losing a little bit more time as well. So Jonathan Seville seems like he might be getting away scot-free with this one. As the next two drivers still. But where am I going to get a Camaro engine in the UK? A beautiful gain. It's certainly going to be worth some serious points if he's able to maintain it. Yeah, and, and positions are, are huge because the top four in this championship are earning different amounts of money. Surely there's uh, a lot of like you know, older Mercedes and BMWs one. and Audis so, you know, with big engines that are now, you know, from like the 2000s that are like now becoming cheap. So yeah, that's a real, that's just a Put one of those in the MX-5. Absolute gift there. Two drivers make a mistake through turn number one. And he's like, yeah, cool, I'll take that, no dramas, off, off I go. Didn't even have to move over to the right. They yep. both went into the gravel. He's like, yeah, cheers. Just keeps his line. He's like, all right, thanks, Bella. See you later. So we'll take that one. We'll continue to excel ahead. In terms of trying to move beyond that, like you said before, up again with Hartevelt. He's still four seconds behind the next placement up. Oh, he's going for it. Van der Velde. Go on, Van der Velde. Got to be careful. This guy's on the outside. Is he going to yield? Yeah, he yields. Van der Velde finally regain the position. Go on, Van der Velde. As we come back around one final time here, he'll take back P6 and can focus a bit more on now attempting to steal the position from Jonathan Seville away as well. Yeah. Other half saying an old S2000 would be better platform. What, because it's just better able to sustain this stuff. I'm trying to think of what I've done in GT. Uh, Dalcamo, and ultimately now he's in behind Seville. So Seville will be under pressure. There's only what nine, well nine minutes thirty, so still half this race to go. I think Van der Velde will want to at least, you know, be in that. What about a hot hatch? What about like a um? Normack. What can he not do? This driver, he is, you know, on ACC, probably the very best at the well, moment. Well, what about like world. a Focus? But it's just not. What about like a two o six or something? You know, it's craft too. He's so so fast. He's young. Oh, I will tell you what, though, you don't want to be doing that too often. But that was um, that was very close to him. Civic, then, yeah. The track and, uh, giving I think all things point towards just getting a Civic, don't they? Let's be honest. So that will <laughs> have puckered him up for sure. That would now. So if I got, let's say I bought a Civic. Go, Do you know what? Could I get a good Civic two for like two thousand pounds? I just need to finish ahead. But that was genuinely close to him ruining his race there. He's able to keep pretty consistent pacing, all things considered. So if I got a Civic for £2,000, I don't know if, if possible. Then I would strip it out, get a nice exhaust, keep it road, uh, keep it road legal, right? Get a roll cage. Uh, is a roll cage in case I roll it, or is it just for stability? I've never fully understood. 
Yeah, is it basically insurance in case you go over, go or is it actually you just are, makes it rigid? Darum Cormac, it is go time because give him two race victories, it becomes almost impossible for anybody to indeed over. Yeah, McCormack is looking so strong. Had the same driver finish in second position twice. Oh, you had. Down, so yeah, oh, you uh, had some civics at the half. Okay. Now or never. Tinker van der Velde trying to set Seville up. Seventh gen. What year was the seventh gen? Is there an opportunity okay, so it says okay, it says both functions. Okay, okay. <laughs> and the final sector dual functionality. They go across that start finish line. As you can see, the gap visibly is coming down through the second of the right handers. That's a mistake there from Deville. The gap comes down once Come again. Come on, Van der Velde. No real opportunity. Van der Velde on the move. Oh, I thought he really might go for that. Send it over the top of the hill. Oh, yeah, that's his house. Okay. You know, notice there, unlike McCormack, they're getting nowhere near the Okay, oh, 105 was before that big. Um, and I think he'll be Body very, work refresh, wasn't it? To be able to tell the tale from it. Uh, at the final corner, you've got to try and set this up now. Try and get as Van close did it last lap. Can, down towards Paddock Hill Bend. We're in the cockpit camera here as we see. Go on, Van Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. actually opens up the final corner nicely there, and he did not take the bait. Now Camus is catching up again. Tinker Van is trying to force. Um, he's trying to go bonkers and jonkers, yeah. Oh, Bonk my yonk. <laughs> no, yonkers is in 15. <laughs> yonkers. We're all about Van der Velde now. We want more yonkers content on the uh, on the feed here. Trying to do there. He's trying to force Seville to be defensive through turn number one. Thus I think McCormack has got this written up though, hasn't he? Pretty much. Unless he bins it in the last race. I mean, there's pressure, but. He nearly had he's either just he dominant, he's got a good setup, up, whatever. Uh, but he's got to try and be a little bit closer next time. They were first years of McPherson. Okay. Okay. It is going to cost Vanderbilt of any opportunity to potentially catch up to the remaining top four here now. Nice from Rampage, coming Vanderbilt home with the P3, bring, bring the P3 home out. for us. Vanderbilt still keeping the pressure on to Vanderbilt here as he looks to very, very desperately steal away. P5 positioning here and may very well be able to make a run for it as we come back. So if I had a car like that and if I stripped it and whatnot, then I would drive down to Brands Hatch. Would I put it on a trailer or would I would I be able to drive it? And now we've got uh, Dal Camo, who Presumably, if you're really going to use it as a track day car, you don't drive it at all. So you have to sort out a trailer, you have to work out where to keep it. But then you drive it to the track on an open day, and then I would get the race logic. As we come through turn number one, I'll get the race logic right, right connected. Perfectly executed move up towards turn number two. There we go. Moves over. Oh, defensive what, move. Defensive move is a late move there from Dal Camo, but ultimately just about holds on to the position. And well, you've got Whitehead's only half second behind PT. Apostle now, Sebastian Apostle also Don't buy any pro of 20. What about the 208? Isn't the 208 uh, regarded as like a very good car? Side by side, you lose so much time that you give cars behind you. Why is that overthinking how to get it to the track? Looking to try and move up into second spot again. No real overtake. Go on, Whitehead. If Whitehead does get a P2 here, big pressure on McCormack. To be fair, he'll have a 10 point lead, though. Or oh, a 10 point lead. They'll have to basically finish out. We'll need to work it out. But Whitehead, I feel like, really needs this. Five minutes to go. You can have a street legal oh, weekend track to it. Okay, I just need to not thrash it too much, right? We'll have very good road recovery. So Whitehead has Brown to go for it, I think, into they, turn they one. Up with four left of winning this race. So Whitehead has to look to try and get that. Whitehead, position. surely, how defensive is he going to go? He doesn't go that defensive. He's going to go for it. Limit of the car. Here we go. So Whitehead looks for a move up the inside of turn number one. This is now going to make. <laughs> oh, great defense! So great White defense. Blacher is catching up as well, though. Not Hartevelt has hung on there. That's exceptional there from Hartevelt. That was to be fair. That was to such good defense. He didn't go defensive, but it was insane defense. For me, forced him off line through one, but ultimately up towards turn number two. Hartevelt. Okay. Brilliant job. So we keep some wrenches and stuff in the back. Okay, I'm liking it. You run side by side. I'm liking it more and more. time, and it gives drivers behind the opportunity to catch up. I'm liking it more and more. Actually, fight is on. Dominic Wire sees the festivities from What about a Ford car? People in the UK do Ford car races. Putting the pressure on to Whitehead, and we can see him losing that little bit of extra time against Chris Hartevelt, dropping down by nearly a second behind him here. Focus more Harvard on the defense. calling, yeah, is that, it was such good Wire psychology from Hartevelt. Oh, he's gone off a little bit, but again, looks like he's able to maintain it, but once more, it's going to cost him Hang heavily on, on the timing side of things. So we'll allow for that gap, which has just been opened up to reclose one final time. Positions two through four, not certain as of yet, it seems. Yeah, Hartevelt will have dirty tyres now as well. So the next yeah, Fiesta's and Ford really car racing, indeed. Okay. 
It's called like Open Car or something. K8. Another opportunity at this cherry. Maybe or it's called Enduro Car. Do Enduro Car. Back. As well, so we do like 24 hour races to absolutely send it here around that go on, Whitehead. They come. I think he's in a perfect spot right now. He's not too go on, Whitehead. He go on, how good are you? So I think he made a mistake by trying to make oh, it's too far behind this time. Around. He's got to force Arteveld to be defensive and then Into reap Druids. rewards on the exit. He's got the momentum. Good exit. Here. He's go absolutely got the momentum very defensive. Here, but moves over, if he can hang it around the outside, he'll have the inside, and now but he can't quite do it. Oh, my word, this is so tense. Towards Graham Hill, they come and they are still in formation. Spitting second, some flame out Blyhead the back. Third, and Blyhead oh, Whitehead with a bad exit. Seville, they're having a, more, a bit more of a ding dong here as well. I think Seville is back up ahead. So Van der well, hang on, keep an eye on Blacher. He might overtake Whitehead. Wow. As much as we've not seen a crazy amount of overtakes, it's like a game of chess. Yeah, look at this. Really good. Great defense being shown by quite a few of our drivers as well. Most notably, Jonathan Seville continuing to defend all Too the Too much cylinder in the UK boost. Why in the Fiesta? Alive from Tico van der Velde. Nicely done as he still stays in P5 here, coming down to the final two to three laps of contention here on the track. Yeah, it is coming down to that final couple of minutes here. Blyer mm. needs to you get think they'd be quite a good car, though. But they're all front-wheel drive, that's the thing. Hartevelt, Hartevelt. That is, that so is like, how much fun are you going to have in a front-wheel drive car? In P2 as You're just going to be limited, now, aren't you? And making a little bit of a, a buffer for himself on the final couple of laps. We'll have two as they next cross the line. I mean, none of, none none of the cars we're, we're seeing today are front-wheel drive. To Jonathan Seville for that top five. Two-tenths of a second between them. But Darren McCormack is out on his own. He's got the fastest lap. Once again, he is Man, Whitehead this just went a little bit of ride on the uh, geo block the there. I don't doubt he can catch up. That's really quite region, but it's only one not great for Whitehead, is it? In of of oh, Bladger, a big slide. Van der Velde, go for it, go for it. Van der Velde then tries to force a defensive move from Seville up ahead. Seville. Seville's got a warning or under Seville investigation or something. Van der that makes a mistake. He's now under pressure from okay, just stick to FF, as well okay. As we head up towards turn two. But then why don't I get a cheap RCZ? Gap, but because they've been battling so crazily, this why don't I get the 276 brake horsepower RCZ? Held up traffic quite a bit here. We'll get it separated mid from our front runners. So once more, Jonathan Seville's continued to defend his position. We're going to contain this P5 start, and more importantly, not wanting to give Tinko Vanderbilt an opportunity to retake it from, and all the points that would come with it here. It was quite a bit of a pile up as well. Quite the intense battle between Motor the racing is such a funny hobby, isn't it? <laughs> constantly exchanging it, at least as of a lap or two ago. Well, from from, from maybe looking like he was going to get P2, Whitehead's now looking under serious pressure to go down to P4. Well. Yonkers is now firmly in last place, by the way. I agree, Al Capone, but think of the pressure he's got in the last race. But like, he he knows if he wins that race, he gets ten thousand dollars. Yeah, Whitehead has become the prey. Once the predator on Hartevelt has now become the prey for Blyer. Support. Blyer potentially make a move. When you say support, you mean in the chassis? In the middle of your shot, there currently in P7. He's got Van der Velde just. What do you mean? Ahead. What do you mean, he's like um, just in behind? Here we go. Um, momentum garages around that final corner, and I'll be about to see Van der Velde under pressure. Number one, the defensive move is in, and there we go. This is where you're going to see the car in front, the orange and or the papaya and blue McLaren, a little bit slow on the exit. They all check up, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, job still not done. It's so difficult to make over okay. around this circuit, John. It is almost. I think in the UK we're pretty good to part, so in most of the big men. the defence on show today has been exceptional. Swiderek, oh, Swiderek's dropped all the way Swiderek down. had a huge yeah. moment behind Yonkers. All the way at the back now. Boxed. Oh no, oh, who's that? Yep, there's two cars facing the wrong Big way. crash. And we are Is trying he? to figure out... Oh, well, there we go. A bit of synchronised reversing. But that's not ideal. Wow, look how Swiderick dominant and McCormack is here. Four seconds. And I think Swiderick might have... Uh, McCormack is just obscene. Two maximum points. He's got one hand on that $10,000 in the um, trip to meet Lando. Star McCormack once again still dominatingly in charge as he, he is rounds through the final few turns here to roll in he is dominating Zara McCormack has looked untouchable today two yeah positions and now so, two can you imagine it in like this is like a global competition on that trophy. We've only and got he's one race won to it go. by four seconds I'm not sure. it but that is be, mad might be mathematically impossible for him to be caught up here we'll have to go look at the uh, points after that is absolutely mad Zara McCormack has looked absolutely Fair exceptional hard to vote with some defense in this Nathan, let, us, let us know if you want to join in on the um, chat, by the way. You, have you put, did you Van race against any of these in the qualifiers? 
position. And then we've got, oh, uh, Whitehead lost it on the line, did he? Good spot, Garzini. Good Dara spot. McCormack. What does that mean? Oh, I think that just means so domination for McCormack. I think he's everybody's favourite, but he's backing it up once again. He is you have a soggy, a no one wants a soggy in the space of sim racing. He has been round for a while now, but in terms of age, he's only 18 years old. Like the, the sky's the limit is that for McCormack? this young driver. His 18. consistency is his biggest trait now. Uh, just ridiculously relentless. A bright future to be sure. Not even just in sim racing, but wants to see beyond that as well as he continues to really dominate the turn. Let me give you a call, Nathan. If you're free. The placings as well when it comes down to it. You let us know about pole finishes both the G Challenge. Now. And like you said, may very well have already nearly claimed one. the trophy. We'll have to get a bit of a, a scope on the points to see where exactly that is sitting and if anyone is going to be able to potentially encapsulate him. So I don't, I don't have a good idea on FF suspension. I think it's fair to say. <laughs> I don't really know. Right now, and a mistake to send him off the track, I'd say, would be a, a fall, a fall from grace with the way he's been able to race over these first two. Yeah, 100%. Well, we will look at the official... Wow, look at that. Well, two, he's got Sarah 40 McCormack points then. Whitehead will have 26. Second. Whitehead in third with so... 11. Dominic Blyer is in fourth position with nine. Seville in seventh. I don't think it's mathematically seven, impossible, but he's basically Bowder. there. Got, uh, he would need Whitehead to win and McCormack to get two. no points. And rounding out your points finish is Iamulo with Yeah, where's, what's Harvard point. looking like, actually? as well there with the fastest lap at a 123 and why wouldn't he have that when you consider the fact yeah. that he was pretty much on his so throughout the so there's 20 time. points up for grabbing last race so only Whitehead and Hartfell can beat McCormack, McCormack now Luke Whitehead currently sits in second at 26 so, so as long as uh, McCormack doesn't McCormack, get no Luke points or Chris Haltevet are actually tied in second place right or now, to be able to overtake him and claim four, if he gets four place points place he'll be tied probably with win and we've seen it happen in the G Challenge we have absolutely seen that happen so yeah don't go anywhere it is going to be very, very exciting. But Dara McCormack, like I said, does have one hand cool, on yeah. the trophy. But is there a potential? Let's welcome Nathan Maxman to the show. Car next as well. So I would say there's the there's less of an opportunity of a surprise. But one mistake we saw Dara make Jeez, a mistake like. in that previous race, and he got away with it. He ran onto the grass into the final sector. And normally, if it's me, um, that's my race done, right? I'm <laughs> probably not going to be able to sim race for a week after that. But he managed to save it. Has that kind of put hey, me in the like, I need to just dial it back Evening. and touch. How you doing? You do start dialing it back and touch. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks, you. Not too bad. Let's so, yeah, close now. So, of it, of it all coming undone, but... what do you know about these drivers, basically? <laughs> Uh, well, why, do you, why do you start? Let us, them, let us know your story. A lot the of G them are very, very fast. Where did you get to in the G That's Challenge? Um, I got to the finals, so I got to the round just before this one. Yeah. Um, it was the McLaren 720S's at Hungaro Ring. Yeah. It was a one-hour race. I I messed up a little bit with my strategy. Yeah. Um, it was a one-hour race. Um interesting dynamic about it was that <clears throat> for the last two and a half minutes or so it started pouring down the rain of the hour um yeah yeah uh. yeah like literally two two minutes two maybe two and a half minutes before the checker flag yeah um <clears throat> i mean by that time i think i was, I was down in 10 how it panned out for me was i qualified i think 11th yeah out of 14th um, it wasn't really a strong qualifying for me. I think I worked my way up to about sixth position. Okay. Um, what, what was the, the to get through? Is, what was the what was the like cut off? Uh, top four went through. Yeah. But for me, my downfall, yeah, was my strategy. Um, there was no obligation and there was no mandatory tire change. Yeah. Which meant what I should have done, which is what everyone else did, was fill up with enough fuel to last you for the race yeah. at the start um i mean the fuel stop that you will take you'd only top up like one liter yeah so you'd only stop in the pits for about i think it's 3.2 seconds minimum yeah um pit stop time for fuel instead of changing tires and refueling which cost me about 25 uh, seconds so you took tires when you didn't need to basically yeah yeah i took tires when i didn't need to um yeah it was just uh, i didn't really look as hard as i should have at the mandatory you know the interesting thing nathan is that so you were in basically let's call it semi-finals then for like this final so um well they, they called that one the final this one that we're just watching now is the grand final okay 
But you were the the lot of the the base had just won before this. So Yeah, I was in the finals, yeah. You were up against people presumably from like Williams and like G two and Yeah, I was up against a lot of these guys. So a lot of these all these people they them. have strategists, right? They have employees really. Yeah. Who are yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. That was my downfall. Like I I didn't have any of that. Um I mean my pace was okay. Yeah. Um I was probably probably slightly misrepresented because I was running lighter fuel loads for the first stint. Yeah. Um but either way, you know, it was it was a good fun race. Um the rain at the end really added another dynamic. Did people um, really lose out from that? No, not really to be honest. Yeah. The amount of grip that was still available was a lot. Like you you you'd see the rain in in the sim. Yeah. And you'd think, oh my goodness, there's gonna be no grip. But there yeah. was actually quite a lot of grip there. I just wonder um, like if we there's maybe something for next year, but like we can actually support you more or maybe put a few people through the G challenge. You know, mm. we can do like a pre competition or something. And then mm -hmm. we can you know, do the strategies. Because it doesn't seem yeah. to be fair to like you're going in there with like one arm time mind you back, aren't you, against like esports um Williams Esports and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because you is. did your own setup. Um, well, you, I mean, these lots, they, they do all their setups as yeah. well. Like, there's no... Unless you go and buy the setups. Yeah. Which, to be honest, you know, I did. Because, yeah. you know, that would have given me the best chance to compete. Yeah. But these setups that you can buy, they're never... They're never what the pros are actually running. But they have I've that always, secret sauce. Yeah, I've always had the, the feeling that, you know, if I spent hours and hours on a setup, even if I was to sell it, yeah. Why would I give my exact? <laughs> you know what I mean. Why yeah. would I give the exact setup? Yeah. Like I, I, because I always end up tweaking something anyway, just suit my driving style. And that's the thing; they've all got their own driving styles. They all know the game so much more than me. Yeah. Um, and you know they've got this time to finely tune their setups a bit more than what they're selling. Yeah. No, it's um. It's uh, it's, it's difficult, and I feel like maybe that's something I I need to think about, and like, how can we put together like a maybe that's something we can do. I don't know what stops us. Um, yeah, but no, I mean, it's, you have to really when you when you get to the stage, you have to have all of that behind you. Like, you have to have all that assistance. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, putting it quite brutally, honestly, like, there's no point. It's just like really amateur, amateur versus professional, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But at the end of the day, you know, it was great to take part. I was with a lot of these guys that you saw today. Yeah. I was on track with a lot of them. The only guy I think really missed out was the guy who finished fifth. Mm. Um, I don't know if you heard about all these cheating allegations. Yeah, that's been going on. I know McCormack was In... the person who exposed some of it. Yeah, yeah. You see that guy, I think that Kirill guy. D Dimitri or something. <clears throat> no, it was Kirill Sadirov. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think he was in one of the races. In, I, I think he was in that 720S round at Hungara ring in the finals. I'm not sure what happened, but after the race in the G Challenge Discord, they asked for everyone's MoTeC data from the race. Yeah, he didn't give it or something. I think, yeah, I think some, and they didn't say who, but someone failed to give the data. No, Jimmy said it. So, Jimmy Broadman, because Jimmy owns SimRacing.gp, I think. And he said, yeah, this was our oh, contract right. with Logitech. It was like, if you don't give it, you get the keys. Because it blew up on Twitter. Yeah, I don't know who it was, but it was definitely someone in the top four in my race. Um, but what happened was, I thought a bit sorry for him, the guy that came fifth, no, no, the guy that was running in fifth yeah. thought that he didn't have a chance of getting through. So on the last lap, he actually went back to the pits. Oh, that he shoot, because then they bumped up the guy in, in P5. Yeah, and it was the guy who, the guy who actually came fifth, who yeah. was running in sixth before play, the guy had Play to the whistle, pitted. isn't it, though, you know? Yeah, I know, and I'm just thinking, like, you kind of deserve that. <laughs> well, I mean, because why would you give up? Do you know yeah, what I mean? you wouldn't do it in real life. I don't think. So. Yeah, you got you got one more corner to make before you make the checkered flag. <laughs> but you know what? Off. People in people in esports like that, Nathan, aren't they? They're so yeah, there's a lot of pride it's in it. Just, it's power, and I'd rather stay where I am now 
them yeah. become <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's. But, um, yeah, th they, they called it out in the Discord. They said, you know, the guy who came fifth <laughs> now gets bumped up to fourth. But he even said, you know, well, the guy ahead of me pitted, but he kind of deserved it more because he was faster than me. But at the end of the day, yeah, you finished ahead of him. You you finished. You actually finished the race. Yeah. You didn't finish the race. Yeah. Um. So he was kind of fighting for the other guy's case. But they told him if he was to do that, then you have to forfeit um, any chance of winning any prize. Or he, I think he won a prize already, but you know he would have had to forfeit that. Yeah, you won a prize, didn't you? But like for an earlier round. Yeah, I've got one of the Pro X wired headphones, but they haven't come yet. I need to. Yeah, get hold of them they might be waiting until everything's done and send everything out. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. We have to look. Well, of course. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's still the um, oh yeah the big sweep stage prize. yeah but there's still how many is it eight spaces they're giving away for that is it just I think one? it's eight and I think it's all of the regional finalists definitely regional winners definitely go yeah uh, you yeah, see this race that they're doing now this combo this is the combo that I took part in but it was one hour um, not twenty minutes is this a twenty minute race yeah because I think they're doing three twenty minute oh, okay. races. Okay. I, I think it might still rain there. They rain down on it. Yeah, yeah that would be interesting. Let us know in the um, comments, by the way, if you went if you enter the G Challenge, because it'd be good to kind of see if if anyone else wins something. Yeah, it wasn't really my strongest combo, to be honest. I think my fastest time that I got was a one forty two six. Yeah. What, so, what do you think is a good qualifying time here? Do you remember what you got? Some of these guys were like a one forty one seven. Yeah. Do you want to put a prediction um, for what you think Paul's going to be? Uh, I reckon a 141.5 or 6. Okay, let's see. I remember the curbs here were brutal when we were doing racing here. Oh, actually, the, the track temperature is cooler than what I was running on. 14. Much cooler. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, for what is this now? Is this practice or qualifying? It's qualifying, but it's green. It's not optimal. Yeah, okay, green. I'd probably say 142s then. Yeah. Maybe, mid 40, maybe low 42s. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a cool journey for us, Nathan, hasn't it? Because, like, we unboxed the yeah. wheel and the pedals and the headset, and then we. Yeah, it was I nice, yeah. yeah. And I, I hope next, if Logitech are happy with kind of what we were able to do, I hope next time we can get involved a bit earlier and maybe yeah. shape some stuff. Yeah, because but... I mean, to be honest, until you mentioned it to me, I had no idea they were running this tournament. Yeah. And they had already been running it for a while, but was it something like they they wanted to they wanted you to help out to promote the accessibility the tournament kind yeah. of thing? But I think I think before it's been on iRacing, it might have been on R Factor too. I think this is the first time. Yeah, it's they did mention actually. Yeah, yeah, they did mention that they run it on different sims, and they don't know which one it will be on next. Yeah, <laughs> which I kind of I kind <laughs> of like in a way because it's become you know like the F one esports crowd. It's become yeah. a, at the moment. It's very toxic because of all the cheating, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of oh, they're, yeah. they're so connected to that particular game, right? Where there's a bit of freedom in being good in different games. McCormack just done a 43 dead in his first one, half a second quicker than Van der Velde. I don't know if you remember racing against anyone in in this final. Um, I've been in finals with Van der Velde, Bertil, um the El Carmo yeah uh, Iamulo yeah yeah that's all because I think yeah that's the thing yeah because it was four four from my split which was Van der Velde oh, yeah. oh do you know what yeah. who was it it must have been Ooh, who else was it that... no there was someone else in my final who I don't see there now. Because yeah. um, I remember Pierre Carmo, Fertil, and Van der Velde. But there was one more driver in my split if he didn't make it through. But as in the guy who didn't give his Motec, but I can't remember his name now. TJ Ziff. It might have been, it might have been Sadirog, to be honest. Yeah. I thought, I thought that sure was the guy who said... Sadirog in my split. Because I know McCormack tweeted, so McCor was McCormack wasn't in your split though, was he? No, he wasn't. But no. McCormack drives for G2, I think, maybe. Mm. So maybe there was another G2 driver. Isn't in it Williams? 
I don't know actually. Going, going, check. Going, going. I think he drives for Williams. I don't right? think I know Van der Velde drives for Williams. I'm not sure. Um, from some proper... But yeah, what what we should? But yeah, I was I was saying actually, but um, I remember the the round that Brands hatch right. Yeah. I went through all the data on the website to see the fastest lap times. Yeah. Um, the fastest lap times were always set during the race. Yeah. Because in qualifying trim, it was always on a fast track as opposed to an optimum. Yeah. And when we went to the, there was a practice session, an official practice session. Yeah. And Sadirov came into the lobby. Yeah. Bearing in mind, the fastest times I'd ever seen were 131.2s. Oh, and he smashed one thirty one threes, And he came in and did a 130.5. Isn't that just, doesn't that just then, raise suspicion, though? Yeah, and then left straight away. So he hang on. within, so you, like, four minutes. So you raced with the guy in your split who has now been accused of being this big cheater in his seat, right? I, I, think, I think he was in the 720 at Ankara ring round. Yeah. But I remember seeing his name for the first time at a practice lobby, a Logitech practice lobby at Brands Hatch in the McLaren oh, okay. Okay. 570S's. And he just came just, in and blew just everyone. An, yeah, just, just a random practice lobby that Logitech ran. Because this, this controversy and, is like really destroying F1 esports. And obviously the, the thing yeah. F1 esports can really do, I think is get there's complications but it's get everyone to like their studio and you all race on the same rig now the thing is it's quite an international competition but i think most drivers are based in, they'd have to fly people in basically but that would be the ultimate thing because there's this big controversy with Tom, this thomas runha they accuse of running these hacks and then there was another driver who when he was streaming <laughs> he alt tabbed and his windows had like like yeah, grip grip hacked hacked. exe <laughs> And then, the, yeah. and then he said, "Old oh, Codemasters were asking me to test it." So there's a big mess. And like, what I found interesting, and I've commented a few times, is that for Ron Ha, who's like I don't know, probably some 18-year-old kid, everything he posts and does, he gets an army of people saying, "Just like you're a packer, grip pets, whatever." That can't yeah. be good if he's if he's not cheating. That's got to be terrible for his mental health and everything. So yeah. I feel like yeah. his team, who I think are RHG, Roman Grosjean. They have an obligation to, if he's innocent, to actively do something and say, we know he's innocent, right? And yeah, if they don't do that, it just raises happened. the question that he is cheating. Yeah. So it's like... They haven't. They haven't said anything. He hasn't. Yeah. And he's he's rejected um, Jimmy Broadbent's request, well, not request, for an but to, yeah, to do an interview of some sort. And he said that he doesn't want anyone talking about it anymore. Yeah, that um, Nacho makes a really good point in the chat, which is have at least two to three lands in a year. Because interesting that Ren Sport yeah. did that, right? Ren Sport did it land at the Intel Extreme Yeah, they Masters. did, yeah. Yeah, which is like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But cheating in esports is just, you know... Yeah, yeah James Bolden called them the lowest of the low. Yeah, but, did, but no, yeah. So Jimmy interviewed Yano, right? I did think mm -hmm. I, I didn't have seen Jimmy's video, but I saw that he he commented and said, "Oh, now I'm going to interview Ron Hart." I feel like I want to be careful what I say here, but like because I, in a YouTube sense, it's, it's good to make those sort of videos, but in like a pure journalistic yeah. sense, you might want to get both sides of the story. But we're not expected yeah, he to be journalists. Yeah, yeah. So it's difficult. He did say he wants to get both sides. Um, but I just feel like there's a, it's on the companies like Codemasters, F1, RHG to just sort this out. <laughs> because yeah. I, you know, you might know my view on cheat in inverted commas cheating. I think in esports, individuals are going to push all the boundaries. Right? We've had this in like GT7 with wall riding. I'm like individuals are just going to push every. Otherwise, you're not really a racing driver, right? It has I to know, be, I know, but yeah. there is a line that you don't cross. It has to be up to the framework of the companies. If you think about some of like the devilish things that like Michael Schumacher did, or like you know any other driver like that, they push the boundaries and then then some, right? Because they're just obsessed, and it has to be up to the regulatory bodies. Didn't Michael Schumacher get banned by the FIA? Or was it the move on Damon Hill or something like ninety six? I can't remember, but it was very cool. Yeah, so it need, this needs to be investigated but anyway it need, the, the whole drama seems to be coming into ACC now and I'm inter actually interested to ask you directly as someone who got very close to being in this final with I know that you 
I probably should have supported you more actually with like we maybe should have got a coaching or something I don't know or like a set a strategy person but as someone who got really close to being in this final does it make you do you think about the fact that some of these people might be cheating uh of course yeah I thought about it um but at the end of the day, even if they were I don't think I was at the level yet to to really challenge yeah. um, for those positions, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't make it right that, you know, I might not be fast enough to be up there in the first place. But yeah. um, I don't know. I guess I wasn't really thinking about it too much. I haven't thought about it too much. But there's always going to be that what if. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't really bother me too much. I know it's probably happening. Yeah. Um, well, apparently it did happen in one of your, literally one of your races. Yeah. Yeah, I think it did. It, 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 it could have, it could have been, it could have been I mean. you. Like, I, I you could have been the fifth place. I think, I finished, <laughs> I think, I think I finished like twelfth to be honest. Yeah. After all that bad strategy. Um, as in, <laughs> as in, I was still dead last because two people DNF'd. But, but you were um, a million, you know, the rain, you could have lucked in and you could, you could have, it's not that unlikely you could have been the person in P5. So, yeah, I know. There's, there's always that chance. There's always that chance. Yeah. But I mean, I'm glad that they had that in place where they'd look at the Motec data. That's true. Did they ask you to provide it? Up. No, it was only a top four. <laughs> Makes sense. Do you know how to provide yeah. that? Is that just a file in ACC? Um, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Maybe we didn't set you up with it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, think, I think you have to save the re... I'm not, I don't even know. I don't know if you save the replay or... Yeah, come to think of it, I had no guidance. Chat, let, let us know if you have any questions for Nathan as someone who was in the round before this and anything. Mojo just saying cheetahs suck. Uh, Alcapay yeah. saying, does this starting grid take some of the pressure off McCormack? I think, was it Van der Velde second, maybe? I think McCormack has this sewn up, to be honest. He just looks obscenely fast. Um, Mojo just asked Nathan... By the way, are you watching on the website? Are you watching on the Logitech website? I'm watching on Twitch. Okay, I'm watching on your stream, and I think it's a little bit behind. Yeah, I'd watch but Twitch. If you were to, I'd watch you like watch this on Twitch. I'd be a little bit behind. Yeah, if you also watch on Twitch, we'll be the same time, and then there'll be seven seconds for the stream. With a very nice fourth place start to this one, Marcus Sidorik as well in fifth, Dominic Blyer in sixth, and um, Hartzell in seventh. I think Na Nathan purchases his setups, but then does some tweaks on them. And we we actually um, yeah I I use uh, it depends either go setups or um Hymo setups yeah for me. it depends what car I find some of the Hymo setups are a little bit extreme. Yeah. But I guess it's, it's people like Dan McCormack um, that use Primos or help develop Primos setups. Uh, but that's, that, um, that whereas, makes your point perfectly that he helps develop it. He's in the mix here to win it. He's not going to give away his best setup. That defeats his main Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, why would he? And to be honest, he, when I purchased Go setups, they give a lot more options, so if I, I bought some go setups to the Porsche the other day, and you've got three extreme setups, um, three safe setups, a wet setup, and six race setups, and I think it's, it's very good value. Um, what I have to do though is I have to pick and choose what I like from each setup. Yeah. <clears throat> so setup one extreme would be the most extreme. Yeah. Um, one would need to be the most razor sharp to drive it. Setup two would be a little bit more easy to drive, but still on the extreme side. So some of the dampers, to be honest, the main thing about them is the dampers are completely different on each setup. So I kind of have to. Let's get on the Twitch mate, by the way, because it's going to start. So we'll be watching it at the same time. Yeah, yeah I'm on the Twitch so the now, yeah. The See if McCormack, because remember when Bottas went bowling here, the only way McCormack yeah. can't win this is if he finishes out the points and either 
Shh, look how low white head is. Staple food didn't really. Oh, I don't know what the was like on the last race, but as well. the snake in left I think it might be another walk in the park from the corner. Yeah. In the there. Do you know much oh, about his background? I don't, I don't. I've heard his name a little bit, and obviously he exposed his tweet uh, cheater. I know um, Dan Whitehead's quite a big name. Or, uh, White, Luke Whitehead, sorry. Luke Whitehead. Yeah, but to be honest, both of these guys, uh, Whitehead and McCormack, are always in the top ten for um, time trial okay. in ACC. So they are some of the fastest in the game. I think Whitehead, I mean, I think McCormick's got the edge on yeah. Whitehead. But probably in a time trial setting, it's probably less than a tenth. But again, he does have McCormick just looks so good here. He's just, he won the last race by four seconds. He was dominant in the GT4s mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So, you see something that was really frustrating me? The setups that I got from McLaren. Yeah. If you notice at the chicane, they completely hop over the sausage to the right hand off. And they don't get bounced over it, basically. And they don't get bounced over. Yeah. Whereas I would try it and I get bounced over every time. But Nathan, that's kind so, of like, you know my point about drivers are going to explore everything. It is a bit of a, setups are kind of a grey area, right? Like if you do something that's unrealistic to gain the time. I don't think anyone yeah, would regard definitely. that as cheating, but it's still exploiting the it's game. Not, yeah, it is. It is. But again, it's, I think it's something that is available to everyone. Not everyone's going to work it out. That's true. It's in the game, I suppose. But, oh, Yonkers is. Yeah, it is. Yonkers has had a. I back Yonkers to win this thing, I think. I've been last. It's interesting that the track condition is still green. It's weird. Is that? Yeah, I don't know why that would be. I reckon it will get to. It will probably get to optimal by the end of the race. Because of the amount of rubber that's been laid down. And does that weather forecast mean guaranteed dry race, basically? 10 minutes, 30 minutes? Yeah. 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 Mojo saying Yonkers having a bad day. Yeah. He's just. I think he's quit, hasn't he, as well? So, just something not right there. Do you, as some as someone who races at very high level, do you? Um, it looks like McCormack's just in the zone today. Like he's just in the zone, not flustered. Do you? How much personal tolerance do you have, like with just consistency? Do sometimes you feel really on it? Are you? Do you feel like your consistency window is quite narrow? If that makes sense, or do you sometimes like, oh, today I'm just not hooking it up? It depends on the track. It really depends on the track. Um, when I did the challenge round. Uh, the 570 S at Brown Touch. Yeah. After I finished that round, my uh, in game consistency stat was 99. Oh, yeah, because it gives you that. Yeah, so. I mean, I was I was on it in that round. I think I came third in that round, but I was yeah. faster than second. I qualified fourth. Been yeah, um, got into That's third and I was definitely faster than second, but I didn't push too much. I was right behind him for That's like the last seven minutes of the race. Yeah, but I thought, you know, the faster than fourth, I'm not gonna do anything silly. Yeah, but my consistency uh, went straight up to 99. But it really does depend on the track, like a track like I'm borrowing. I'm not 100% confident at it yet. Yeah, um, there's some tracks that I am 100% confident at. Um, at Brands Hatch, um, Zandvoort, I've got really confident at recently. Yeah. Zolder. Um, what else? It depends on the car as well. Yeah. I like the Porsche, but the Porsche is very, very difficult to drive um, consistency, uh, consistently. So my consistency stat would not always be great if I'm driving in the Porsche, but cars like the 720. Yeah. The 570. I was very, very eight those sausage curves there. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know what. Because I remember being in the game, like hitting them and just everything going clattering and like going into yeah. space. <laughs> yeah, they get nothing. Al Capone saying I was bonkers picking Yonkers. That is true. Mojo saying what wheels and pedals does Nathan use? Um, I have a Fanatec CSL Elite. I got the F1. Esports rim, and I've got V3 pedals, and I run the performance kit. Um, which, I, to be honest, I've taken the brake force down, make it less 
resistant to get to 100%. Yeah, yeah, I found it was a little bit tedious trying to push it at full strength every time and try to be consistent. It's a lot yeah. more consistent to, you know, push maybe 70% of your power to get to max. Yeah, there's no Rather prizes for making it as difficult as possible, basically. No. No, I've, I've come to the point now where I'm starting to just try to make the game a lot easier for me. I find that with force feedback as well on the wheel. Like, often if I turn it down yeah. a little bit, I just become a lot faster. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's true. But the one thing I'm really not liking is eye racing at the moment. Yeah. What what I just, sort of eye racing you doing? Any feel. Um, even in the GT threes. So I'm practicing for the next round of our um oh, yeah. top 100 league. But going through the last two three corners at Fuji. Yeah. Painful corners. Absolutely anyway. terrible. But that's terrible corner. The camber's all off and like. I know, I know that they're bad corners, <laughs> but it just doesn't feel like it should be. I'm going around the second to last corner yeah. at 60 kilometers an hour sometimes. That left hand there with the little but, marker post on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm spinning and it's doing a full 180. It might be set up maybe a bit too um, uh, stiff set up. Oh, it's a fixed, it's oh, yeah. a fixed set up. Fix setters are regarded as not being very good, though. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're terrible. But it's better than the Ferrari setup, I think, to be honest. I mean, well, the BMW one, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Mojo's it's saying, curious if any of these guys are using VR headsets. I doubt anyone will be using VR headsets. I can't give you a good reason why that is, because... Do you know what camera what camera angle... Well, camera angle... You can change an ACC, right? Mm. Do you... Okay, no. Do you race in cockpit view? No, I run the hood. So do you think most other people run in hoods? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know that some of the pros, like Nils, what's his name? Nils Nalux. Yeah. He would always, always know what's going on here. <laughs> oh, is that the contact there? Yeah, Whitehead might get, because that guy's lost two. But oh, he's gonna hold more contact. It's getting a bit um, odd. Oh, he's running wide there, hasn't he? And he's lost a position. <laughs> he was so focused on running in wide. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, they've gone now. They've gone oh, now. My he's gone. Days. <laughs> I think that could have been avoided. Yeah. But I think that was a green car kind of started that a little. Well, he didn't start it. It was a, yeah, it was a cascade of like... <laughs> Yeah, Whitehead went for it in turn one, and I think the yellow, right, the car, the driver of the yellow car was a little bit straight. Yeah. That uh, might be his penalty now. I'm not sure I've noticed any penalties. Um, but yeah, I, I did so round, I did so badly in the I racing round. I didn't do any practice, which I can't afford to do at this level anymore with my time. Yeah. But the 80s, no, I can't even, I didn't do any practice, I did terrible. I know the 86s, I saw you a few times. That was yeah. such a painful yeah, round at Okayama. And then, I hated it. Master I should, the track. Yeah. But that car was just awful. Yeah, I, I just didn't. I felt so distanced from the car. It was such an uninvolving experience yeah. driving it. And I think I got three penalties in the MX5 round as well. <laughs> what post post race penalties? <laughs> yeah, it's because yeah, yeah. he was that guy. Is it Tim Hart or someone? It was on the radio. He was on the radio all the time. Was anyone watching was our stream? We streamed it. He was like, my car. He was like, oh, Nathan just doesn't know how to drive. Nathan doesn't know how to work with me. Even though he didn't know you were speak you were on radio. So he was like, Nathan, work with me. Work with me, Nathan. And I wanted to read like, I don't think Nathan's listening to you. <laughs> you know what's funny? He, I've never seen him ever work with anyone, ever. <laughs> like, he literally, like, he's the most, one of the most aggressive drivers. He'll, he'll go for the move and drop you down two positions. Yeah. But if, if you're fighting with him, he'll complain about it. He'll be the Let's first be honest though, Nathan, that's, that's, such a, that's such a Club 100 thing to do, isn't it? Wave yeah, your, it is, flap yeah. and wave your hands. You're just you're the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like if someone someone gives you the lightest nudge here and you lose a position to him. Yeah. Like I think there's always a difference between bumper to bumper racing yeah. and actually putting someone to gain a position. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the back of someone and you give them the lightest tap going into the corner, not in the breaking zone, but going into the corner, give them the lightest tap, if anything, is helping them 
yeah. around the corner. I genuinely yeah. think that's the case. So again, never trust the commentator's man. But especially wow. when it's live. I've seen so uh, many times people touch each other like that in Club 100. Yeah. And they'll look behind me if their hand, for example. Do the flap, yeah. <laughs> so what it does, Marshall is looking on. Yeah. Marshall looks you know, you, at the guy behind, multi, multi, keeps an eye on him. If he makes another contact with anyone, uh, it's like a yeah. penalty. There's been some controversy about yeah, this here in Club 100. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just like raising we, 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 awareness. Yeah. For Dark cards, but whatever. Yeah, the marshals to get there, something. There else is to a bit of politics in our in our championship as well because they're all on Discord after the race and like, I think I got protested once. And I was like, what? <laughs> For what? Um, Mojo noting that yeah, McCormack is just dominating here. Van der Velden PT. So Willi Williams won two maybe maybe a really good setup. Zach is saying Perez won. Saudi Verstappen and Alonso on the podium. Alonso looking good. But yeah, I, I struggled in that round and. I know the, there was, what, 45 drivers or maybe 14 in the end? I know the first round's the most popular, but I, I really enjoy that format of racing, and Steve is quite good at organising it when stuff goes wrong. Yeah. So I want to pay yeah, a bit of respect. I didn't going to be an extra round. Oh, yeah, you win the I'm final. Just... They were waiting for you. Yeah, You're in the final. Yeah, yeah I didn't even oh, know. Oh, Nathan, do you see that? Know. Nathan, do you see that on the screen? Ooh, that is yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the kind of thing being, for me, too close. Who was that? Is that Bladgen? Is that Hartfield? That was Castorino, I think. Because it's just like, if you make that contact as a car's turning, especially with one wheel up on the up on the air, it's too risky. Yeah. Karting's a bit different because you rarely have that sort of load. Oh, he's pulled over, has he? So he's pulled the car over. I'm wondering quit? if he's been told you've got to give up the position you gained there. Was Probably going to quit, isn't he? I thought it was oh, was it him? I thought it was the. I don't think it was him, but I don't know why he's doing. But no, Swiderek has dropped all the way down. He's now down in P15, so this is helping out. He's got going again. Carter has gained some freebies. We're on board now with Whitehead trying to make a move around the outside of a possible. This is for real money, though. It's ten thousand. McCormack's going to win ten grand. Of that, I presume some of it goes to Williams, by the way. But that makes sense because they pay for his setups and well, they support him in that way, doesn't it? I presume he has a close back. Oh, look at this move! Look at this move! Yep. Do you think the yellow car could have defended there harder? Or do double movement? Because the car no, behind made some more movements. He just kind of set his line. No. No, there's a point where you have to give it up. Yeah. Is that Whitehead? And he, even, I think he turned in a bit on the exit. Which... Yeah. There was a bit on the exit. Yeah. 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 Because I'm trying to do maths at the same time. I'm trying to put the, piece, the puzzle pieces together uh, of the race. Well, Whitehead's making his way through. Uh, I think it's pretty well, I wonder what the battle is for PT. I, where's um, that's for sure. where's Hart? Uh, oh, it might be close between Hartford and Whitehead. That's the thing, right? Uh, for PT, it might be very. Yeah, six and a half thousand dollars. Remember, Whitehead lost. Whitehead lost the position on the line. Yeah, he did. Three. That's true. P4. I don't know where Hartfield finished in the first round, though. He finished second. No, no. Where did Hartfield finish in the first round? Oh, I didn't see that one. Because Whitehead's got a P2 and a P4 right now. Hartfield right. has a P2 and a, I don't know if he was higher than P4. But again, if you've got an esports team, they're, they're telling you right now. Like, in the battle, yeah, I can hear it. He is in the battle for P2 overall. Yeah. But if you have a team, they'll be telling you in your headset, like, you need to get this position otherwise with P3. If you're just on your own, you have no context, right? Yeah, that's the thing. That's it's very hard for the for me, for example. Mm. You know, I don't have anyone working hours with me on setups. Yeah. Um, I don't have a team who's looking at the you know the race layout yeah. coming up with strategies for me. I didn't even know that they were running these three rounds. I thought it was just one race. Yeah. Because what was the first combo? GT, was it Misano uh, GT4. See, that's so weird because they ran the they ran the GT fours at Brands, Hatch yeah. last but they, time. But out. they ran seven twenty S so, at Hungary, right? Yeah, this this combo I've done before. The other GT fours at Misano. So you would go in, maybe not even well. you you. There's a possibility you would have gone in like, what the hell is this combo? And how is that? F I'm not. I don't know. I don't use the word fair, but it puts you at a massive disadvantage, right? Yeah, I'm not sure at what point they would have known. To yeah. be honest, but I'm sure they would have had enough time to prepare. Yeah. Which means I would have as well. But 
Oh, the amount of time I spent learning the 570S at Brands Hatch. There's no way I would have same amount of time to felt as comfortable. Once again, though, Darn McCormack still yeah, in that short amount of time. Al Capone saying Hartfield was third in the first race, in which case Whitehead needs to. Oh, oh, I don't think it will even work if because they're, they're fighting, they're scrapping for lower points now. But it's good intel. But yeah, I, it makes me think about what we can do, Nathan. I, you know, I set up the esports team and. That was really centered around GT7 kicking off, which it didn't, mm -hmm. didn't really do yet. But something I need to think yeah. more about, and whether we can, whether I can pay for a strategist. There's more stuff popping up in the sim racing. I'm I'm very highly exposed to like YouTube sim racing, but like there are certain like there are certain thumbnail artists now that are really skilled in sim racing. Like if you see all the F1, they all use the same guy. Same with some editors, and I'm. Have you seen the uh, near Tobin Lee? He was the team manager at McLaren Shadow, and he was also involved in. Um, I've heard that name. I've heard that name before. Yeah, he used to be quite high level in Forza. Then he went to Veloci, sort of behind the scenes. I've met him personally a few times. He was at McLaren Shadow last year when Lucas Blakely won. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, a bit naughty. But to be fair, he held it around the outside. Let's have a look. Onto that apex, trying to make him so slow through there. How are they got through there side by That's side? great from the white Any car there. Inch of that curb used on the left hand side normally sends your car over into purple the car's in trouble now. <laughs> oh, that to me, that's a bit of like doors. that contact a little bit more than it was. But let's see what happens here. Yeah, yeah to get an overlap through the um, but he's he's oh, um, yeah, we might, we might hold it actually. Let's see, it's good racing yeah, to but... So he's he's quit to set up his own. He set up a consultancy now called Pace Note, and basically it's meant to be a one-stop shop for sim racing talent and brands. Always using the yeah. So there's more stuff popping up in this space, and I wonder whether I can. What what is he doing? Is he like pairing drivers to brands, or I don't know fully, and I'm not sure it's fully fleshed out, but. It's definitely in a space that I think is open for. The, there's a market there, but I think if you're an upcoming sim racing driver, then he might be able to con. To, um, we should get in contact with him actually, to be honest. Like link you up with brands and support. And I think if you're on the team side, he kind of knows how to popularize your brand and whatnot. Um, we should have a chat with him to be honest but i also think you know what kind of stuff can we do in this space with like a youtube channel and built around sim racing and like an active community and can we out of that you know have people contractors to kind of do this and support a team and then we can i don't know i need to it takes a lot of effort it really does um um, but in a championship. it kind of, if to me, kind of Nathan, quite, it feels right, it feels like a waste opportunity if you're so close, right? And with a bit of support, you could from, you could we could give you the best chance to get in this final, basically. That's my thought. I just don't know what a bit of support is <laughs> because I don't know how much these. If you look at the ESL ESL stuff, they're throwing like obscene amounts of money at this, aren't they? Um, so I just don't know behind the scenes. Maybe we should have a chat with uh, Toby. Overall placement for the finals here. That's how well Dara McCormack's done. He is in a Mojo says to start interviewing drivers. Yeah, the thing that the GT70, I have interviewed like Mikhail Hazal and like Valeria Gallo and and I'm into okay, okay. and people uh, Baptiste Beauvoir. The GT7 esports scene is like it's a bit like the BBC. It's like you can't brand it, you can't advertise it. It's very it's very neutral um, and this is actually a bit similar because none of these drivers are running under their esports flag or livery but you look at something like ESL R1 that is like full steroids esports branded stuff so GT7 is the opposite end and it's kind of difficult to be that space I think we should just see the last 30 seconds or last lap because McCormack is going to take a very dominant victory here which is very impressive. Yeah, on the final lap of this race, so either Dara's letting Tinko catch up, or it's a case of he's taking so much lap. Welcome, Justin. Sorry, I missed you there. Sure well, he gets in, uh, and has the triple, triple crown again. Something that I've made up. Um, maybe it is a thing. Ah, uh, Nathan dropped maybe off. We should make it a thing. <laughs> <Check>. <laughs> <laughs> triple, triple crown. I don't think it's He'll call us. 
we head up to but it's really cool to kind of hear the perspective of someone that was by the way let me know what do you think it's not he's not going to be worried about it is it a quote unquote mistake what do you think in the comments know, everyone what what do you think we, we have people like nathan we have other people in the community who are very fast but basically we are not supporting them at a professional level Position. Do you think this is something we Does should go happen? for? Do you think is we should for the triple, spend money, hard-earned cash to, you know, create something here? I tried it with Curious Esports, which exists, but, you know, we... More cash than he was going so what I did with Curious Esports is I set up an Esports team about a year and a bit ago maybe Don't and i paid every driver on it i paid them credit from start to finish. whatever platform they're on that was the big thing it's like if you're if you're on the team three i pay you credit three pole positions and three race wins for the but that wasn't it that's not enough to is you're a mayor logitech mclaren dominant challenge dominant from mccormack dominant 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 what a performance the most dominant display we have ever seen in this competition Remember the name, everyone. No Dare McCormack. Van der Velde coming up to PT, but the fact he did this in GT4, welcome line bus. The fact he did it in GT4 and GT3 is a little bit mad. $10,000. Yeah, he dominated it, Mojo. He embarrassed the others, really. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's enough. Maybe they've done the mathematics and gone, do you know what? You don't need to give that spot up. Uh, and Tinker van der Velde has done it. I'm not, my brain isn't big enough to be doing... No yeah, well, he, but he came second and third. Coming into this. So we'll figure, Did van der Velde come third, out. maybe? Um, 15 points at last race. Times, that's for sure. So it will be <laughs> correct. But Dara McCormack, let's talk about him. You know, oh, what, yeah, what sorry, Nathan. I think he dropped off. This young man oh, yeah, I'd take a phone call. Over the last 18 months has just become a consistent um, machine at getting... We were just up. Good. That he showed pay yeah. yeah, I saw him. He's a bit of a mistake and now he held it. That, that's interesting psychology that he's pushing it so hard to the end isn't he but that's that's what it requires to be a winner isn't it you don't you have one yeah. speed which is absolutely everything yeah that's what i struggle with with the one hour races and i think a big part of it is the fact that i use um brake pad one do you think it fades a little bit yeah it becomes a little bit inconsistent after like half an hour can you see after the race what are the other drivers use no you can't actually um, but yeah it's a very interesting thing that i heard recently about pad two it's probably about a tenth this, this difference in lap time between pad two and pad one but pad two is noticeably easier on the tires and is much more consistent over a wider range of temperatures as well yeah over pad one pad one is the absolute extreme for you know extreme quality lap times yeah but pad two is a lot more consistent during, uh, over race you can qualify on pad two as well it's less likely to lock up um, and it's better in a wider temperature range so if you're running in a very very cold race or a very very hot race yeah probably better to go pad two yeah um line bus saying alonso got a 10 second penalty after the race going out to fourth was he on the podium that's big drama was he in that podium he was, yeah. he was. bet that was spicy uh, mojo asked what i'm drinking is coke and i think it's quite a lot of rum Define says maybe some internal training in the yeah, community to fill in those positions the needed for esports. Welcome back, David, as well. Um, and Justin, the thing is, I just feel like I'm going to be really honest about it. I feel like if we wanted to sustain an esports team, I feel like we would need to employ someone basically full time, and that's a full time job and money, and obviously we can't support that. Again, the stage but i just feel like esports is just that's the trend from the front three. now becoming Bruno so professional and you really see it with the esl stuff um, i don't know how i feel about that i think obviously intrinsically i feel kind of sad that you can no longer just be a guy playing in your bedroom and get to win a championship because i three of them in that race again but because the reason is nathan we both do karting right and we know how expensive karting is in my opinion we know we've been around people who think of like um Nicky Richardson, who mm. unquestionably mm. have the talent, but because of money reasons, haven't been able to go to F1. And yeah. but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just need to recalibrate. I'm thinking, but people like Dale McCormack are just like so unbelievably talented, and then they go in a team that supports yeah. them. That's just like the best yeah. of both worlds. 
run. Yeah, it's difficult. It's, like, it's not always the case that a fast esports driver can do that well in the real world. But like, it's, it's not always the case. I think James Bolden's obviously is a great case. Yeah. But it's very, very rare. Um, we need GT Academy back. Very, very yeah, it definitely. I mean, it hundred percent is a good indication that you would be a good racing car driver. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's not always the case that, for example, you get to F one. There might be another, another form, another category of racing that suits you really well. Yeah, there is an opportunity for someone to become. But the competitions that you're running for might always, might not always lead you to the correct category for you. Yeah. Um. You know what Jimmy Broadbent's doing at the moment? Yeah, I've seen that he's doing his teammate seven right you do yeah. it and then you get what car what what's it leading to what's the real world thing um you do the rest of the club 100 season with him oh is it club 100 yeah you, you would do the rest of the club 100 season with him is he doing club 100 again i didn't know that you know that two time I didn't know that actually, no. But, and then it's next year. Um, I don't know if it's onto the Pragas or actually driving MX5. I think it might be an MX5. Yeah, but definitely yeah, as part of you know, his team. Yeah. It might be work. It might be all working towards the progress. Let's just confirm the leaderboard here. Cartville did win, and it was level between Luke and Tinko. And I guess Tinko won race two, having a better second race result, right? That's dollars right there. So, so close for Tinko. Unfortunately, wow. So far but McCormack, 2020 20, I mean, he races in the ESL as well, I think. I, I, I've got to put, a, put yeah. over the performance there. That's just. He didn't qualify well, and that's a mistake from his part. But to, we haven't seen I think the, the tracks that we, we are at. So I think so that it's fair to say nothing. Like, we didn't appreciate how big the Logitech G Challenge is, right? But when we, the more we start doing it, we're like, oh, hang, this is really big. If you get, yeah, if you yeah. win this whole pyramid in EMEA, um, and you dominate, you kind of morally deserve a chance. That's something bigger, right? And the only yeah. when you get to this sort of level, the only stuff that's really bigger is real world stuff. But there's not really that bridge. Maybe that's something McLaren could do in the future, right? If you win the, we give you a seat and you know something. Yeah, I thought that's what the Shadow series was for. As we said, we still have our North Maybe. American circuit coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned, as during the break we have the debut of a But yeah, I'm taking part in that Team 87 competition. Oh, um, nice. At the moment, as it stands, yeah. I've <laughs> I have set out of 7,020, no, 7,200 um recorded lap times, like yeah. lap records. At Brands Hatch GP. Yeah. I am sixth. Six. I thought you were like 600. You're six. So you're in the top <laughs> yeah. 0. less than 0. 0.1%. Yeah. That's mad. And uh, yeah, in the MX5s. These ones are now. What's, what's this that they're showing now on This Twitch? is Shroud, is a really big Twitch streamer. I think he's one of the biggest on Twitch. He's did some stuff with Lando. Let me pump this volume up. They actually. reveal in the prizes. Let me see. Let's see. Just like pump the volume up. The, sport, right? the best drivers are the people who can do it. Yeah, yeah so I'm, exactly I've set the sixth fastest so lap time like the gears, yeah, for the MX5s. Right. Like this is a one, two, three. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. And you like that? From what I've seen so far harder. from all okay. the competition races that's happened so far no. in <laughs> Team 87, <laughs> yeah. It's just a different... They call it Rank Builder Series, it's, yeah, it's just um, like, I love where people now. who perhaps may not have been on Team Race and GP yeah. before yeah. can take part in these Rank Builder Series races to uh, gain uh, enough rank to be able to take part in the competition. The yeah. and, and I'm only one tenth just, off the fastest lap time that's been set. Nice. And that was at Brands Indy in the MX-5. I haven't spent as much time at Indy as I have at GP. 
Of course. You so can. essentially, it's like only one coin that's or, different. Yeah, kinda, like, no, it looks good. We'll have, have to get you some KCR branded, branded liveries for that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. definitely. Uh, I'm, like I'm def wheel, and it's a UK only like, competition as well. Uh, so I don't know who. Out of, I don't know who out of those five ahead of me at GP are British drivers. Seven thousand is quite a lot of entries. Think about it. That's. It's not seven thousand for just for this tournament yeah that's that's all the mx5 records ever recorded on ac oh i got it got it on a set of oh that's why you've been doing some more ac recently i guess yeah yeah to be honest i'm really impressed with ac ac2 is coming out next year yeah there's a lot of overlays that really Help me learn like my driving style and how to get the most out of the car. Like, I don't know if you run ACC. Oh, drive. Let's have a look at this. This this must be their like um, esports center, right? So this is all they have. I imagine. I might be wrong. Actually, I'm not sure these. Would they use these? Yeah. It's that Alienware PC, isn't it? That's quite. Big. They got lost tip pros. The <laughs> they got lost tip. Oh no, they're not. They're not lost tip pros. They're just. Um, well, Lando's not on a pro, is he? Yeah, no, he's not actually. Shroud's on the pro. Oh, Shroud is. Which one did you do earlier? I was doing this one. Oh, you I, I did this one earlier. But... We should. Have you been to the um, McLaren Technology Centre? No, I haven't. We should go. We should go and take a camera. We we just look at everything, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I want to show us this room. We asked for it. Okay. Why don't I ask? Logitech? Why don't I ask Logitech? Yeah, for a tour. Yeah, I'll ask them. I think it'd be awesome. Maybe yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah. up my headphones because they haven't delivered them yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure they're going to send them via McLaren, but we can see. That's been a while since they've contacted me saying that I've won them. I imagine it, they might do it all at the end. I can imagine that being. Yeah, ad maybe. Ad ad I did see a little clip of Lando oh signing God, so a box of headphones Dude, for Shroud uh, just like, a wheel? couple of minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all you. Look at Lando's seat yeah. position. Jeez. That's in the play seat formula, right? That's like Alrighty, so, so. Oh, here you go. That's probably your headphones, Nathan. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Trout definitely just beat me fair and square. Fair and square. Um, I got a few gifts for him. A little hat and a um, Clarity Sports team hoodie. Lando's so good but at this old, stuff, isn't he? Well, I also have a few gifts. Presenting. Yeah. <laughs> He's quite smart. Uh, I haven't seen this video. It's in the small box. Here we go. Uh, mouse, I think. Pleasure doing business. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. I gotta sign that. So. Define saying the wheels are high. Yeah, that's proper formula position. Goes up in price, so. Lewis misses passing Alonso by 0 0.3. Oh, man. Welcome, Harry, back, by the way. Um, There's your headphones. Oh, no, they're, they're Astros. Aren't they? Are they Astros? I think Logitech owns Astros. Wait, what's Astros. going on? Are they, are they doing another race? No, this is, this is North America now. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, they're going to be here for a while then. Well, yeah, first half was Europe, second half was um, North America. Did they have the Africa one as well? Was Africa its own region? I believe so. EMEA. Uh, I don't know. And they've got LA. What was the other one? LATAM? The TAM is uh, South America. I think for time zones, yeah, they probably yeah. happen different. This is North America. Yeah. So they must have Latin. Was it? Did they call it Latin America? Yeah, it's LATAM La is. Um, it's basically South America. I can't remember what it's called, LATAM. What's it called? Um, <laughs> Anyone in the chat though? Yeah, because I'm sure there was five different or four different. Well, there'd be uh, probably Oce probably Oceania was one, EMEA, North America, LATAM, and then maybe there was was Africa, but I'd be surprised, don't know. Let me check the. Welcome, Phil, man. We're watching the finals of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. We just saw McCormack win ten thousand dollars by utterly dominating everyone. The masterclass. I would love to see his reaction, actually. That's what I love about F1 Esports. You see their reaction. Mm. And you see their, like, their strategy members like, patting them on the back. It's like... It's such a... For me, it's quite iconic. It looks like LATAM and Asia Pacific were, they had finals for. Yeah. Uh, I mean, final highlights for. 
and it looks like North America and EMEA finals are live. Yeah, that's tonight then. So this might be the last live stream. Yeah, this is the last bit. This is it. Mm. I love this view, by the way, of the um, Pro Wheel, like how they designed it, or this mock-up. That's quite a BMW. Yeah, I remember seeing seeing all these things when we did the unboxing. Yeah. Just how precise they've got it, how nice the buttons felt, how nice the shifter felt. Yeah. So a few things I did, Nathan. Firstly, I... I'm still only running on two bolts, but I really right. tightened them to the max. Yeah. And also, these bolts were the ones that I think we took them from my uh, CSL Elite, and mm -hmm. I think they have some washers in there, like spring washers. Yeah. I think I can take them out, basically. But it's a lot. It doesn't go up and down as much now. And on okay. the pedal plate, the pedals now just... I, I disassembled them. They're mounted directly to a pedal plate. And then they connect to the box, right. yeah, and I've got yeah, yeah. brake and accelerator. That's it. And finally, I feel Where comfortable. Where do you rest the peel then? Um, what I did is I moved the plate as low as possible because now you can unscrew the plate, and my yeah. heels just rest on the pedal board. I was worried about it on on the um, you know, like the GT Mega tray. Mm. I was worried about it at the beginning. I think I've got used to it, but I do think I need to add a tray because then you're the point in your foot where you can apply the most precise and hardest pressure needs to yeah. be like right then if your fit is lower down it's yeah so but it's working a lot better i really had to do quite a lot of tweaking and now i feel really comfortable a bit about yeah. disassembling them is absolutely great i think i kind of i feel like they're better disassembled is my instant reaction i think i also you know we put in like a really long um foam spacer right or something i think that was causing some weird compression and sticking, so I removed that and I put the original back one back in. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay. Andrew, the wheel win is if you do it in the there's a link there's a uh, link in the pin comment. If you enter that and if you click terms and conditions, you'll see the ton. ton Nathan, just come up to gents. Do you mind keeping chat warm? Nathan's gonna look after you, chat. I was literally about to do the same, but I'll stay. Okay, give me two, give me two minutes. All right. Back. So, chat, what are we watching? We're watching the Logitech G Challenge NA Regional Final. We've just had the EMEA Final, which Dan McCormack won all three races, which put him as champion. And now, South America. South America Final, they put highlights up on YouTube. They haven't, they're not doing those live. So it was the South America and Asia Pacific highlights that are up on YouTube. And we're watching the NA1 live. Um, I, Andrew sees, I don't think anyone's won the wheel yet. I don't know if it's Kirov's giveaway or Logitech's giveaway, but I don't think anyone's won a wheel yet. I think Kirov's given away a, this is on the top, G923. I don't even I don't know what I don't know what wheel that is really. But the Mojo says two days left for the draw. I wonder if that's gonna be the overall prize. The prize to go to Austria and meet Lando. Thing interesting about that is that they've only opened up the opp opportunity to win that prize if you've won a prize in the sweepstakes before. I'm just reading from the Logitech G Challenge page now. It says out of split one, they're giving away 15 Logitech G5 3 5 headsets. Split two, they're giving away 15 Logitech Stream Cams. Split three, they're giving away 15 Logitech Pro wired headsets, which I've actually won one of those. And split four, they're giving another random five 
of Doing each of the products well, listed, yeah, um, listed above. I was there when North America started in okay. 2019. Um, it was the last region we next added to the Next statement, it says Challenge. each of the 60 and sweepstake winners talent, will also be entered into a draw uh, to win the Grand Sweepstake prize of tickets like and a trip to the 2023 F1 Austrian Grand Prix. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, in Greek with Lando Norris, Norris um, Logitech G Pro Sim Reel and McLaren drivers jacket and cap bundle. So I think what it was saying, Kirif, yeah. is that if you've won one of the prizes before, yeah. then you're entered Agreed. into winning um, so you, the So you have a 1 in 60 chance of winning that? I do. <laughs> I do. Good luck. Two. Oh yeah, they're going to show that after the uh, NA races, they're going to be showing the winners. Who's won, yeah. Oh shoot! <laughs> if you win that, I'm going to give you a camera, GoPro, oh, a microphone. Yeah. You know, I, you know what? I've been thinking about so much. You know those GDI, uh, DJI, DJI, yeah. DJI mics that you yeah. have? I've been arming and aring about buying one ever since I saw you with yeah. them. And you know what I was thinking? Next time I go karting, yeah. I was actually going to ask if i could borrow one of yours yeah go for it because yeah. i was gonna buy a twin lavalier mic set yeah so i can clip one you know maybe just under my um chin curtain of my helmet yeah and i'll clip one around the back of my neck yeah go for it let's do it so yeah so you're not going to get as much wind noise if well, I am going to say something, you'd hear it very clearly while I'm racing. Yeah. You'd also hear the engine very clearly as well. Yeah. And you're not going to get that nasty wind noise as well. So that's what I was considering doing. And let's do it. Try, all you've got to do is take them out, manually hit manual yeah. record on them. Let's try, yeah. let's try it. Yeah. In fact, if we go, if we're going to go on the 31st, if you've got a space, yeah. I might see if I can go. I can be there to like help set it up. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See if you can come because. They're running the three for twos till the end of the month. Yeah. So if you book for two people, you get they give you uh, another another driver space free. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to be taking a possible sponsor out. For a for Client a, meeting, so I like it. Yeah, for an evening of racing. That's bad. Yeah, yeah so that, that should be interesting. All right, I'll follow up with it then. Um, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, yeah. I, definitely I want to try with that twin lavalier set because if I can get one mic at the back, you're going to get no wind noise, all engine noise. Yeah. One mic at the front, you know, you're not going to get any wind noise either. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, I'm breathing fast or whatever. Yeah. I'm talking, to you obviously you're still going to get all the sounds that you need to hear, tire squeal, engine sound. Yeah. I think having that dynamic of one. talking, uh, then see Vinny I mean I hardly talk when I'm driving anyway, but Renato, yeah. knowing that I've got a mic there, I might say a, a thing or two. They will try it. Yeah, it's a very interesting dynamic thing. Yeah, and I've got a new camera as well that's just like... You know when we shot our Logitech stuff, a lot of stuff overheated? I, just, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I bought a new camera that's just obscene. It's just quite good value. It's, it's so good. What is it? It's it's a Sony ZV-E10. All right. And it just shoots like, it's great. It's so good. Oh, are you watching these highlights? These guys are a little bit dirty. This is a tap. This is a tap. race victory of the day in race number two and setting himself up for the final race. It was at the Hungaro ring. And oh, it was wetter than an otter. It was wetter, oh. ladies and gentlemen. And well, as we headed down in yeah, this was what it was like for the last. It was Mariah, and it was. So, so was it? Was it not as bad as it looks? Oh, oh no! no, it wasn't work out <gasps> no. Felipe that's just an awkward accent because you know you when you're facing backwards, like right, you're looking at the person that punched you. Behind. <laughs> yeah, you got you got flattered by a couple more <laughs> going around that corner. Get yourself sorted. You're going to become a Logitech McLaren G Challenge champion. What was happening behind him? Well, it was like the end scene of End Game, the Marvel film. It was just mistakes are plenty commentators are so wide good this. contact with each other like it was just treacherous conditions it definitely caught a lot of drivers out a few drivers Defined would have made an attempt at least setup, yeah. uh, maybe pre oh no. Oh, no. other drivers have gone aggressive hoping it was going to be dry one driver that just didn't
didn't worry at all. There's that must be in front so gutting. Like second for me, I know I didn't get out through. Of the three yet. Races. Yeah. He does but become the to be running Chilean in a decent position and, and to have it end like that. Oh, it's in Estrosa. From GT7. He... Yeah, he was quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Chat, that's, he's um, one of the best GT7 drivers. He just casually just like beat all these Brazilians in ACC. <laughs> there is a lot of Brazilians. <laughs> he got really unlucky in a, in a GT7 round last Yeah, I can't remember what happened, but he got really unlucky. Oh, was that with um, Was it Koke? Yeah, Koke took him out, didn't he? Yeah, there was quite oh. some controversy around that. Mojo likes the rain race, yeah. Yeah, we certainly I think, do. Um, uh, again, it's a chance for I never really liked rain racing in Sims before, but with, with GT7, mm -hmm. I'm beginning to enjoy it a lot more. Actually. Back on do you know what? The more I get exposed row, to in ACC, whether it's rain races or a track so I haven't learned Ryan before, Yee, yeah. who has been I realize how far I am really from these guys. Like, yeah, that's whereas, what I know some real life in this race. <laughs> that Brian Tatch, right, in that 570 yeah, round, yeah. I did, for my standards, I think I did really, really well. Yeah. Like, the kind of names that I was up against, I think it was a really good performance for me, but the hours I spent trying to get that good in the first place, yeah. there's no way I'd be able to learn and every track yeah, like that I'm, I'm sorry, in, yeah. in every in any reasonable amount of time yeah you, you like, can sort of brute, I, I don't want to simplify but you can to an extent you can sort of brute force stuff right but you can like, I, I, I basically took myself on a crash course to learn brand touch yeah, in the group 4 car yeah. GT4 car um, I spent days like maybe two hours every day for like a week yeah trying to learn stuff about the track about the car because that car remember we did that video about the 570 yes yeah that car is a very, very different driving style yeah. to any of our, uh, I mean, to any GC3 car. Yeah. If you press the brakes full when you engage the ABS, you're not going to turn, basically. And to learn that, to implement that, a uh, track like Brands Hatch was very, very difficult. Um, but like I said, like to be able to get that good at every track like these guys, I don't know how, like I said before, I don't know how early they got the notification uh, that they'll be driving the GT4s at Mizano as opposed to the 720s S's at Mizano. I think, if I recall, there's a big uh, terms and conditions at the beginning. I think there's like a list I've been somewhere. Into, uh, racing games for, mm. you know, as long I mean, as I, I got to the finals first, and I didn't know that this was going to be the layout. Would have been in the, uh, I see, so, I see, I see what you mean. Sure. Part of that is but like, that, if you had a professional like, team, they'd let you know and, and they'd prepare for it and have the strategy ready. The I think yeah, part of, course, of it... These guys yeah. would have it in their locker already, you know, a setup ready, a strategy ready. Formats, it would all be ready to go for them and, uh, you know, but i think the, part uh, of it i think this is what i see the real uh, value as sim racing variables, coaching which, which is something i've very interesting considered from time to time and trying to put something together mm -hmm. but it basically saves you time like out. anyone can go to track and just do 100 end, laps it, uh, and there's a point of like for every round of the event, you know brute force exactly you kind of work out where your markers are and whatnot kind of style, but so if you can if a, a, a session of coaching could enable you to get to that position much faster and make it more transferable to the tracks that's just Definitely. inherently really valuable when it comes to your time. It allows you to spend more time yeah. racing and having fun. So it's, it's something I've thought uh, about a lot. Major highlights, but, uh, Quite yeah, Quick question. The, the guy yeah. on the screen now. Yeah. During that entire those time, headphones, are those the was, uh, was pro the headphones? So Let me see when he comes up again. No, I don't think the pro ones light up. Okay. No, I fully get what you're saying about having a coach so the regional grand finals, I, I have my, considered uh, it but is just gonna be, then again you know, i like the satisfaction of can. Uh, learning just something for myself yeah. it's gonna take some really and getting getting good at something you know, myself because yeah. uh, what it's like for every, everything spot, i do in sims especially concentration wise I use it to help me when I get out in a car. Yeah. I'm not always going to have someone talking in my ear. But that might change, Nathan, that might change with age and like, you know, you might. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, it could, like anything could change, definitely. But I think for now, you know, I'm really 
focused on learning it myself yeah. like doing this ac thing so with the mx5s uh, for the jimmy broadband competition experience and i didn't have any coaching i've done the setups myself yeah specifically and, and you know, while i'm currently not the sixth fastest lap holder yeah equipment in the mx5s yeah like put in those fast laps not 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 just for this competition for the whole of a set of course yeah for the mx5s um and just having that satisfaction of knowing that I've done that myself, like it probably puts me in a position to be able to yeah, coach agree, someone, for example. Yeah, maybe um, that's something we can look to, I don't know, put something together, but I think there's yeah, so much value I'm, in that. I wouldn't, that's I wouldn't turn my nose up against, against coaching. I know it definitely, it would still benefit me. I know that for sure. Yeah. But I feel like I've got so much to learn myself still before I consider that avenue. Chat, let us but know in chat. It would be a fun avenue to go down. Let us know in chat whether you think coaching is... is. Let us know in chat whether you think coaching would be valuable to you because it's kind of... The way I approach it is that rather than doing rather than feeling slow or not performing at your potential you can perform at your potential sooner or a higher level and have more fun racing to do that i think nathan your perspective coaching benefit to you would be at a much more specialist sort of east genuine esports level slightly different tell you what the only coaching i've ever had was when i went to cart sim oh yeah but they said they could they said they can tell you you knew everything already yeah, he basically, you know, he, was, he said to me, I'm trying to pick apart your laps. But if I had, because I had to do, firstly, I had to do a lap familiarization. It was doing X30s at PFI. Yeah. On, on the cart sim software which not long prior before i went there i had taken part in I'm, I'm a cart sure sim tournament yeah in the tillotson t4s online um yeah it was on the cart sim software you know i i got to know a lot of the tracks i got to know the software in itself very well so I pretty much got to car sim up in Silverstone, yeah. and he said to me, you know, I know you're quick, um, what we'll do is work on consistency, um, and looking ahead, with, you know where they put the glasses on? Oh, the eye tracker thing. Yeah, they track your eyes, because yeah. I said one problem I've always had is I feel like I'm not looking ahead enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, the main challenge for me, after I had learned the track, yeah. he said to me, right, well, we've got to do an eight-lap consistency test now. Yeah. I think my fastest lap was uh, a 1... So many drivers that are back 50, no, sorry, a 59.4. Yeah. Um, after 29, my film familiarization. Then he picked up a few things on um, advice on how to drive the track a little bit faster. Yeah. I didn't get to practice that. I just went straight into the 8-lap consistency challenge after what he had told me. Yeah. After implementing what he had told me, my first lap of my eight lap consistency challenge, bearing in mind that I had just done a 59.4, yeah. my first lap after that was a 59.0. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I crossed that finish line so going into turn thinking, one. How am I going to match this thought, every lap? Yeah, I thought, how am I going to keep that up? Yeah. Um, my slowest lap time was actually a 59.26. Yeah. But it so is in eight laps, Canadian, I had Sinard, lost, you know, I mean, the difference in my fastest and slowest lap time was less than two temps, I think. Yeah. And after that, we went through the telemetry very, very deeply. And, you know, to be honest, I, I had a friend with me at the time, mm. and that was my last challenge. And he got my friend all set up. But while he was doing that, I was on his computer. I was looking at the telemetry myself. Yeah. And... By the time he came over, I said to him, "Look, I know where I've lost my time. I know what I, was, I know what I did wrong. Yeah. My slowest lap time, I'd lost it on the bridge. 
I was too aggressive on the turning for the right hand off. It's PFI. I mean, yeah, yeah, coming off the bridge. Yeah. And yeah, I basically lost most of my time there. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, do you know what? Like, <laughs> that's all I would have said as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like I could coach. But then, why don't, why don't you go down to PFI and do some O-plate stuff? So he said to me, my drive and style, based on what he had seen from people who had come to him for coaching, yeah. said that if I went into an owner driver, if I implemented that drive and style, I'd be top 10 in the country. Yeah. Are we going to see this in the sports car? They Which have improved I didn't read too much region. into, no, but mm. he said my driving style was the, the cleanest driving but style have been the he'd most seen in a long, long time based on telemetry. I know that when you go into a car, it's I never really possible to be that smooth. In a real car, because you've got all the vibrations. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably, you're probably always going to be a little bit more aggressive and your telemetry is most likely going to be a bit more all over the place yeah you'd still be different you'd still be fast but but does that yeah, do, you, do you look at that and think because if you got that as a quote signed off or mm. something as like a report on your session you could mm. presumably that's not a million miles away from going oh, off to people and trying to finance a drive be right and say, Look, this is my reference in a way um yeah I really believe I can get top 10 if you provide me with a car and I will run under your name or whatever. Nothing. Woodrow still in four. Yeah, that's uh, true. There's a lot of admin in, in, in terms of and qualifying each business and every time. So there, right? Yeah, in the pit. but then there's always the question of, you know, it, you know, enough for it might not translate into done. real driving. Now done. Yeah, that's got true. Snookan, done. Moaning. Yee, but why like did, I said, I've done, I've done a lot on that software before, so I know how it works. Why don't you do another Club 100 round? Danny Engels, isn't it? Danny Engels. Yeah, oh, I don't know, man. They've just been getting so expensive. But as a sort of litmus test of that track you've already done. I'll tell you what I was, what I was thinking of doing. I was thinking of going back to Kart Sim, because you know they've got their own pro kart team as well. I didn't know that, no. So they run pro kart at PFI. I think... For four hundred and fifty pounds, yeah, you get six hours with, with an Alfano telemetry. Exactly one tenth. Yeah, with everything. And has I was thinking, you know, to split that between three people. Yeah, that's one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, and you could get up to two hours of driving. Obviously, you're not going to drive for the whole time because you know you're going to get tired and yeah. you got to look at telemetry. But all of that time is is beneficial. I see, and that's a good translation for you, right? A PFI to see if you translate it onto the track. I know it's pro car, not a X30, but mm. it's good. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So, I think I'm very likely to do that over. Oh, late around. change, by the way, Nathan. That guy who had the headphones on just beat the, the reigning champion in the last the lap. Runner up to Simar. They've had battles <laughs> over the years, and it was a really like nice interview sequence between the both of them. Could be a bit and more competitive in North America. Came out on top, so Simar finally beat him. Is that everyone there within a second? Or was it two seconds? I can oh, see. Oh, here we go. Uh, we might see again, but it was just a last minute swap. I think Simard just won two, twice before, I think. Um, but yeah, that's the reality of like, um, you know, karting's expensive, but, and this is, this is the pathway that so many people have struggled on, right? When, imagine if you were a kid and you were doing it and you had the same speed, and then, it, you know, money talks or something right to get that seat in even if you look at like james baldwin's story um a lot increasingly a lot of the people in esports are like this as well even someone i think like jardier one he streams he's streaming now and they are second and there's a potential new champion set up absolutely perfect but this thing about something like gt7 at its core is i know people will dismiss it as a sim whatever but there's something so pure about the competitive experience and i know that i'm quite cynical about people that post on twitter like oh i've got a number another number one time trial in the world this week whatever but ultimately there is something quite pure about yeah, so the concept point, of you can just do this from anywhere with no outside help and say I was the fastest in the world this week. Nine, 
for four. Yeah, okay. definitely. It is seven and it's five. That's four, definitely. Three, um, two, one. The GT drivers, now, they're good. You know that. Fifteen drivers. You've we got have, uh, only ten people to score points. All the races that come up in the series. All right, so you're starting grid, ladies and gentlemen. It does lay it out. You know, you know what you're dealing with. You know how long the race is going to be. Yeah. You know what multipliers you've got to deal with. Yeah, it's very transparent, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, as much as fierce as the competition is, everyone does help each other out. Brandon yeah, and, and work out the strategy. That's true as well, because there's less at stake, well right? You're not, there's not money on the line, really. So. Yeah, I mean, these team teams like Williams, they'll hide all their... I don't think they, they set up their own esports mansions, some of, the, some of these teams. Yeah, we should go down to Williams as well, by the way. We should ask Callum yeah. to, to hook us up. Yeah, we should, yeah. What exactly are we going to see in this race? Will it be out of um, chaos with the qualification being so close, even within our top 10 or so? Or just want to drink. Just like we had back in the EMEA. But yeah, it's like, you know, I think David as well, he's, I think they're Apex. Is it, um, Apex Racing, they have something as well in the Midlands, don't they? Like an esports house, so. Yeah, they do, yeah. And we've seen one race where it started out as a, as a bit of a mess. That was a Latam final race, but that was very... But yeah, wet. something for me to always work out, I'm sort expecting of. this to be nice and clean. What's my role in this? What's our community's role in it? It is time for race one. How does eSports... Is eSports an inevitable part of sim racing? Does it turn people off? Does it not? I'm really interested at the beginning of this race, Nathan, because it's so tight and twisty, isn't it? Last season yeah. Before you get on that North next straight. Philippe Simard, the winner, the reigning champion. It's trying to so defend the reigning crown champion. and Alif, Muhammad Alif P3 let us know in chat by the way if you've got a region, somebody thinks it's going to win this to become the first person to ever win across two different regions we are green light racing 20 minutes to go in this race and it's a wonderful start then Ooh, from Kundakio Simar can hang oh, oh. Ryan to go around the he might lose a lot there actually bit, he's run wide though and maybe an opportunity he's going to get swamped Muhammad isn't he Muhammad Alif I'm not sure that's going to work out but the lead car is Kundakio it's a great start and well, if you want to atone for coming Woodrow, second round, go for that? this is the best way of doing it. Oh, Levic. Oh, oh, what a send that is. <laughs> oh, no. So that's, just ruined, that's a send that just ruins it for everyone, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Behind the leaf as he continues to try and maintain. Oh, Levic there nearly sends everybody round. But you know, from Levic's position, probably it was all um, condensing, wasn't it? He was like, well, I've got to go somewhere. I may as well go up the inside. Perfectly yeah. well. Um, this corner I'm interested to see because I've I never really worked out this corner. It's such a weird corner to me. From O'Brien, I think O'Brien looking to it get is a weird corner. Five. Um, Ryan Woodrow, by the way, has made a move on Mohamed Ali. If you uh, break on the outside, Woodrow, yeah, that's given the opportunity then for the come into the corner. Sometimes the front of the car bottoms out on the curb and you end up losing braking power. Yeah. Um, I don't know how. I see every other pro doing it, but every time I do it, I end up putting out on the curb. Sounds like a setup thing, maybe. Mojo yeah. going for Simard, Al Capone going for a Leaf, a Leaf P4. There's a this tight hairpin is going to be quite. Is it this one here? I feel like it's tighter than that one. I do. it. <laughs> Misano, this would be such a great circuit in GT. Yeah, would, yeah. Leaf is going to have a great one here, I think. The thing is, if you go around the outside for the, term, for the first corner, you're unlikely to make it stick for, ten, for the next one, are you? If you think about it. And, you know, he's, he's done a great job yeah, so there's, there is only one line through turn one. Um, even if you miss it by half a car length, a never mind the whole car length, well. yeah. I mean, car whip, you've lost probably about well, two to three tenths in that whole complex. Yeah. Like that whole complex, there's there's not really used one line a lot of through that whole complex that you have to take. Uh, if you get it wrong, then you lose uh, a lot of time. Same with turns uh, four, five, and six. Yeah. The double right handers with the left hander at the end. It's interesting how good their lines were. One way to take it. The fans then curious how they sell their dampers. I think dampers are sort of a bit of a dark arts, isn't it? And these setups. Yeah, they are. Yeah, dampers. Is... Oh my goodness. What a move that is. That's a bit lazy to turn. A bit lazy to turn, isn't it? Yeah. You'd have the visibility there to. You know what you're doing. Yeah, but you've got a radar which you cannot turn off. <laughs> You know that there's someone on the inside, but you just keep turning in. I think that's quite naughty to turn in there. Yeah, it really winds me up, actually. The Vake might go for this up the inside. <laughs> I, I, I like his rating style. He deserves to lose the off one for that. 
but it's head down towards the hairpin in towards the final complex at least really lost out Travis in all that this is a podium this could be and stop any 10 grand on the line here does. so there we go uh, it goes from one potential move being made if on you're road, if you're in p2 Mahamadou right now nathan are you thinking there, i'm going to yeah, do everything we'll i can to get p1 or are you are you thinking right now i'm going to really race. conserve the tires is that in a 20 minute race does that p2 20 minutes you're not really worried about the tires yeah unless what's the temperature it's all 29 What's a... Your setup should be um, able to manage like tire temperatures. Like you should be able to open the docks um, or make sure your setup's not too extreme that you're wearing out the tires too quickly. Yeah. But 29 is fairly hot, and in this car, I always found that Brian's hatch it was very front limited. Yeah. So the front, you'd think in a mid-engine car, you'd think the rear tires would be under more stress. Yeah. But in this car, I noticed the front tires are under more stress. Yeah. So you do have to be careful with those. And this is quite a demanding track as well. So at 29 degrees, I can't imagine that the front tires are getting a little bit hot. At the end of the well, it looks like Simmar's in the. Well, he's not in the best position. He's not winning the race, but he's not under pressure because Woodrow is like the gaps yeah. are. For me, of course, I'd be pushing to try and win. Um, but if I realise that, if I have to change my driving style so drastically, yeah, to try and catch first place, that is actually a bit risky for me to be pushing like that. Yeah then I would probably tone it down a bit. Is, if you, I'd focus on managing yeah. the gap to third instead. If I know that there's no hope of me catching first place, yeah. then I would drive as fast as I could safely while managing the gap to third. So I think from my foot, if, if at this race I'm racing at absolute max, like this guy has just got something on me, I would think from my perspective, I'd be like, I'm, I'm going to really take the P2 here. And I'm going to have to just, you know, roll the dice again for the next two races and kind of hope he has a has an issue or something and put some fur down the pack. Yeah. Um, but the temptation is always just to push and push and push, I find. It is. And it's, it's a weakness of mine. I'm always pushing, sometimes to my own detriment. Mm. Um, it's where I really fall short in iRacing as well, because I don't know anything about the tyre model or yeah. the tyre wear in iRacing and in the one hour race for example I always end up really slowing down in the last 15 minutes yeah can be brutal in iRacing welcome catch racer that was pretty intense at the beginning of this race it's calmed down a little bit now <coughs> I've had a really bad cough the past week yeah Trying to make any moves I think it's been one going around. Um, yeah, this looks a lot more. But so to go back to like the so the first round of the EMEA one, you had McCormack in yeah, P1, and then you had Whitehead in P2. Oh, 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 oh. Um, and if I feel like if what if Whitehead felt like he had the pace there in GT4 because GT4 is a bit of a different class, right? Yeah. In hindsight, if he'd really gone and disrupted McCormack there, it might have put McCormack under some sort of pressure. But McCormack was able to just stay in this space where he just was so dominant. So I feel like the de the downside is that if you don't push, if you don't have that delta sort of. Com coming down in some sectors at least where you're really on it it allows the guy in p1 to just feel so dominant feel more relaxed in a way that i think enhances their their sort of driving style in a way becomes more subconscious yeah. kind of hard to yeah. exactly explain what i'm saying no it's definitely there is there's a mental aspect to putting pressure on definitely um it's 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 all based on circumstance and situation to be honest like when i was in the 570s round that brand hatch yeah I qualified fourth, got into third, and was faster than second. Yeah. As in, by the time I had got into third, um, I was—I think I was a couple seconds down on second, but yeah. I think seven minutes left of the race, I was on his tail for the rest of the race. Yeah. I knew I was faster than him. Like, go out there and do your do your best. Yeah, go get him. Yeah, go get him. Fourth and fifth. 
I go, yeah, you can do just it. Just behind, um, like three real, seconds really, behind. Really yeah. I didn't want to very, very uh, pressure second. I didn't know Plus if he realised I was faster, I would have let me go. Which like if, if he was uh, thinking conservatively yeah. as well, to catch up, but or just keeping Simard at an if I had to force right my way saying, through, you know how hard would he fight? Yeah. So I've, I've done some similar stuff like that at Daytona in heats when it goes like mm. three heats in the final. Sometimes I'll be behind the driver that I I just know I'm fast. We'll be at the front of the race. Like he might be first, might be second in the heat. And I think I don't want to overtake him here because it's a heat. I don't want to show him my lines, but I just feel so confident behind him. I'm just going to sort of sit behind him in the heat and then in the race back myself. And I can't remember if it's worked out or not, but I've definitely had that sort of psychology where I don't want to show my hand that early. Yeah, yeah. But it's weird. You could interpret it the other way. They, they could be feeling really strong it's interesting here that simard just dropped a purple lap and he looked like he was getting really close um sim racing is so different because you have a delta the psychology is so so different yeah your psychology i mean for the person in front if you're always looking behind and you see someone catching you yeah you're more likely to start overdriving 100 percent and you should probably start losing more time some people, you know, they manage to find that extra bit of time over the person behind them. But most people just start overdriving. But I think you need to be a little bit superhuman to look at that delta going down and for it and for it to actually enhance your driving style. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a difficult thing. Yeah, but see your example of you in the heats and how you're thinking about applying pressure. Yeah, it's a different dynamic to how I was thinking about applying pressure in the round at Brands Hatch. Yeah, like I know I'm never going to be racing at Brands Hatch with this guy again. Yeah, because it was a knockout round. Yeah, these two um, one and done. Could get very spicy. Yeah, so I mean, I could have pushed and and shown all my all my skill, all of what I was thinking of doing. He's not going to use it against you, you in the future. Yeah, yeah, you you knowing that whatever you show this driver ahead of you, yeah, there's the possibility that they could show that back to you if the positions were reversed yeah. in the next heat or or in the race. So. Yeah. <laughs> There's never really a definitive answer about what you should have done. Yeah. Because you never know what the other person could do. Whether it's, you know, the next lap or the next heat or whatever. Yeah. yeah P1, P2, this, this level Even at the next meeting, for, for there's something that you might want to hide up until the next meet. You might know that in your heat, yeah. you're in a better position so, to stay behind him. Sort of and, for example, you'd still start in the Unless race ahead of him. Yeah. But there's something that you might want to hide in that particular heat. Maybe even for the next round in a month or so. That's my approach. When you're going at the moment, I'm still, I think, going toe to toe to like win this championship at Daytona. It becomes even. I don't want to sound too obsessed, but like even the conversations we have after, it's all very friendly. But I don't want to. I'm not going to go in and say like, oh, I really struggled. You know, it's there's a little bit of a not an edge, but like res reserving stuff, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to win that championship, which is quite a cool thing to be part of. Simard, by the way, looks like he's within a second here. It's all about whether Woodrow can keep his cool. I, I remember when yeah, we when we did our league in GT Sport, right? Remember I, we had that race at Monza where I ran in a rare turn of events, I was in the lead. Yeah. And I remember, I think you and Super G and Steve were hunting me down, right? Mm. And I remember seeing that Delta grow at the beginning as you guys were all fighting, and it made me feel great. Yeah. Probably see it on the stream. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember the last, what it was, five laps or whatever, it started to come down and it started to come down significantly. And I almost accepted that rate of it coming down, if that makes sense. Because mm. mm. it would be very demoralizing to reject it coming down and then see it coming down. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, it'd be interesting if there's any psychological tip. There's a great book, but there's a guy called Alan Dove who wrote a book on karting. I can't what it's called. It's called Secrets of Karting something. Terrence, Def, check it out. Terrence Dove. Uh, now, Terrence Dove. Got the book. Yeah. I never finished yeah, that it. Was a great book. In this competition. Yeah. It's a read it again. Fruity here. I think he talks about some of this stuff in there. He's a very like interesting style of writing. He's got some great stuff on wet weather driving in there. 
Very close to your yeah, his style of writing really, to be honest, I didn't really improve in karting until I read his book. Mm. Um, I got in touch with him as well about it. Yeah, but, he's active on the forums and stuff, isn't he? Some people might think it's a sad thing to do, but I thanked him, innit? Yeah, <laughs> it's a great um, book and I think it has more respect than just in karting. I think like a lot of racing drivers recommend it as well. It's, yeah, it's a lot of a mental thing as well, like uh, how to control your emotions. Kind of thing as well. Yeah. Um, Run away. Simar, and how to think, how to be able to think instead of instead of reacting emotionally. A nice battle between those how to really think in a situation and assess your options. Yeah. Side by side one more time. There's every opportunity yeah, I invited him to come down to the um, 24 the hours if we wanted to come oh, and nice. visit our team. Yeah. Start finish rate just isn't long enough. Turn one is a little bit yeah, too great to stuff really make this. Set it up for turn Psychology two. when you're karting. If anyone's three, watching who really does sim racing the but doesn't do karting, the difference in karting is that still holding firm. it's very loud and noisy and by you know, but you are kind of alone in your helmet and. Mm. If you have an inner voice or whatever it is, then it, that feeling in karting when you're, let's say you're second and the guy in first is just getting a little bit further away from every lap and then suddenly you can't see them through a few of the corners. Yeah. That is a really testing time of your mentality. Do you just settle for like, or do you, that is all, that is, at that moment, it's, I would say, Nathan, it's all psychology, isn't it? Yeah. And no one really talks about it apart from that bit. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, it's inevitable that it's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But it's understanding why, you know, it might just be the case that you've got a bad car or you're a little bit heavier than, than the person that you're yeah. fighting with. With me, it's usually the case that the person is a bit lighter than me. Yeah. If they're getting away from me like that. Um, but at least I understand why. Yeah. Instead of asking the questions, why not having any answers yeah at least you have the answer you know i think the key thing is if you have untapped potential which we all which we all do to actually yeah. unlock it and if you're just frustrated you won't unlock it if you're that's obviously the bad thing to do that's almost like if you think about your brain you have like was it like lizard brain and then like primate brain then you have like cerebral cortex those like basic frustrations are like lizard like anger and frustration denial whatever but then if you if you, that sweet spot of extracting more pace if you can be in that zone um like if you were like what well, he's not i don't think I actually think he's lighter than me and i actually when we were on the race i didn't think his cart was faster coming at the corners so I, he must just be finding time somewhere on the track right then you can kind of see hang on he seems to be gaining here what if i break early here or later or whatever a little bit more Conduct yeah that is definitely Simar, that's a sign of someone who's got a strong mental capacity when they're racing to yeah. be able to yeah. not get flustered not get annoyed that Simar someone's getting ahead of you but actively thinking about what you're doing in comparison to him yeah. and when you find yourself uh, yourself clawing back that time you usually end up beating him or p1 at yeah at least so and that's Simon such a good feeling. On here, um, go. you know it what? is one of the best feelings, yeah. Really yeah, because be like, there's obviously something that's happening. Let's say the cards were sure actually absolutely manage. equal, your weight is absolutely Especially equal. Right now, the only advantage the that he's got is that he's doing something differently to you yeah. in the corners. It's most likely that it's better. Um, but regardless, it is different. Because what will happen is you'll end up changing something that you're doing yeah. and you'll end up doing something better and it'll be different again to what he's doing. So whether you're gaining massively or gaining a little bit, you've actively changed something while you're driving, while you're in the car. You haven't, got, you haven't had to go out, look at any telemetry or have a think about it outside of the car. You've managed to do it on the fly. No, it's, a, it's a good tip. I imagine people that are in like the special forces or what, these kind of high pressure situations have to think 
in similar ways. It's kind of, you can't rely on anyone else. You can't make excuses. You can't go over and analyze something and come back. You're in the situation. And um, I know Nico Rosberg has this, he has that podcast, right? I don't know what it's called, but like, he talks about some of the steps that he went to. Um, like, you know his story about um, this battling. Just you know, he was like, he knew he was so close at Monaco or something to Hamilton, and one tenth is like 100 grams or something at Monaco. So he shaved all the paint off his helmet, and then he got pulled by like half a tenth or something like that. It's that sort of, it's not just that, but the fact that he did everything else to maintain his ability, and then that was the other difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The final thing, I try and shut down emotions and focus on executing nothing else, but frustration sometimes build up under the surface and ruins everything. I think that's just being human. And I've definitely, I don't race for that high stakes when I go karting. It's not particularly like high stakes, you know. But yeah, that's you've part got of the... to somehow, you've still got to learn how to shut the frustration out because it's only going to slow you down. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you can translate that into, you know, like something powerful yeah. to make you change something. But it's more than likely to slow you down. But you have to learn how to harness that. These gaps like, aren't right, by the way, Nathan. By the way, that's not 0 0.3. <laughs> that's like 0 0.0. Sorry. These gaps on the uh, stream, yeah, 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 yeah. that is like last lap neck and neck. Where do you think he might... Is he running out of chances to go for this? Maybe he's happy with... Maybe he thinks he's got the measure of this guy. He's just sat there and he's like, over the next two rounds, we're going to beat you. Maybe. Rather than both crash out and then he... He's already, he's already a champion. Yeah. That's, that's what he's got going for him. And he's clawed back a gap of, what was it, 1.5? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 1.3 in the last few laps. So he already knows in his mind. That's playing on, on yeah. the leader's mind. At the moment, that this guy has caught me. And for the rest of the tournament now, the remaining two races, he's going to be thinking, oh, he clawed back 1.3 seconds in yeah. in a few laps on me. He might second guess it in qualify. If it really plays in his mind, or second guess it in qualifying. Like, I need to be a bit faster here. Then he might overdrive it. Yeah, yeah. Like literally, the guy in second has done enough now. Here, even if he doesn't win it, win this right race, he's done enough to boot the lead off. Very just supporting Simard, but round, this might be a case of you, know, you lose Kundak the battle, but you kind of you're going to win the war. And he is um, yeah. and there it is. Mental war is definitely won. In the North America. Gee, of course, you know, it would be got it that he didn't win, and it would yeah. be a huge boost to, for the winner that he's actually won it. Yeah, that's going to be a huge boost. But he's going to have that pain in the back of his mind that he's that the yeah. guy's caught him. Um, and on the opposite side, you know, the guy who came second, Simard, yeah. he's going to be thinking, you know, I've come second. Where did he start, by the way? He started in second. He started didn't he? second, I believe. Yeah, they finished as they started in the first two. Yeah, so he's going to be thinking, right? You know, I didn't win this but you know i had the measure of him yeah in that in the last remaining laps of that race yeah but then again what's the next track is it the 720 yet no no it's, it's six it's the 650 yet brands yes it's quite a similar track it's probably a little bit more difficult to overtake at brands hatch perfect time to put in the quick Remember, there was a last there was a last second, the second change of pole there, wasn't there as well here? I think mm. if you start pole at Brands and you don't get punted at Druids, then yeah. Yeah, the psychology of racing is so interesting, and I think it, everything is a battle. If you think about that feeling about going side by side with someone into a braking zone, yeah, the thing that excites me that doesn't get me going against AI at all. I have zero passion yeah. about it. But 100 passion against real people is who's going to break latest? If he get yeah. if he breaks a little bit later than me, can I release the brakes a bit? <laughs> and try and just, you yeah. know, that, that kind of dueling is just, I can't exp there's not a word for it, is there? There's not actually a word for what that means, but all racing drivers, we know what it means. And that's what we love about testing ourselves. And that requires respect, by the way, doesn't it? It requires respect that they're not going to turn him or punt you. And this, we need, maybe we should, yeah, that's the essence of racing to me. And then you amplify it over many corners and hear many races, and then you win a championship. 
Um, and I, I think it's interesting that a lot of people who race together really don't become good friends, even though they share all this moments. You think like Prost and Senna, you know, I don't think yeah. Schumacher and Barrichello gone like they share these moments of great trust and respect, but almost you can't live if. And Peter if someone comes out on top, it's very difficult to live with that, isn't it? To just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, love all this stuff. Let us know in the chat, by the way, what you think about this. I think um, a perfect example of that was Hamilton and Rosberg, uh, 2014 Bahrain. Yeah. Like, is that the first night race one? Yeah, it was a great battle. Yeah. But, I mean, despite, you know, the hugs that they gave each other at the end. Something had broken. <laughs> and the handshakes and the enthusiasm that they were showing each other yeah. after having such a great race. You could tell that that, that lit <laughs> a flame yeah. between them for that would, that would last for the next few years. Well, I think they should be great mates right they went through karting together formula series and they've raced together for mercedes and they both won world drivers world championships they should be if you look at that on paper you think these should be great colleagues but i don't think they'll ever rec you never see them together these days do you? i don't think they'll ever no. reconcile that because that's just it's almost no. like to reach those highs i can't phrase this correctly but it's like to have those such insane moments the sacrifices, yeah. you'll never just be able to be cool with each other. Because otherwise it didn't mean anything. I wonder what it was like when they progressed. I wonder if one of them progressed before the other. Well, um, Rosberg got there before Hamilton, didn't he? He was at uh, Williams before. To, to F1, yeah. Yeah. But I wonder in the other in the other series, like, what who progressed first? Or were they literally always together? Um... And how did it, how did it, what was the concept between them, the dynamic between them when one of them moved up and then the other joined them, whether it was a year later or whatever. That's always an awkward dynamic. It's like if you're at school yeah. and your mate gets into a better university than you, if you both want to get, it's, it's always, I think the really telling thing for me about that relationship is I feel like Hamilton actually just retired Rosberg. <laughs> so I think it mm. took so much out of Rosberg to win that championship. He yeah. just quit, which is quite a rare, well, it's unheard of, really. I think, isn't it? Because it's, I feel like he was just spent, and Hamilton yeah, could, was he... not was not cruising, but like had some in the tank, if that makes sense. That's how I viewed yeah. it, anyway. Yeah, he might have been, um, he might have retired because of it, but then again, that might have been his only goal. In Maybe F1. that's what he said, and he was satisfied with it. To me, I feel like, I read between the lines, he didn't want to go toe to toe with Hamilton for another season. <laughs> kind of, that's yeah. what I, but I, that's just my context interpreting it. I might be completely wrong. And he did say that was his objective and then he'd reached it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, and I feel that's partly why they can't be cool. It's almost like they, I feel like they they couldn't exist together for, for another season. I, I'm not sure that would have no. flown. Um, you know, you could see no, with Bottas, there was, there was it, it weighed no on Bottas a bit, it wasn't the same. Hmm. He no, they'd never come back to the paddock smiling. Yeah. After a qualifying session or after a race. Not with each other anyway. Define saying Rosberg assumed a fleeting form. What do you... What... I think... I need to look back at that season because that season... I probably... I think I went some of the GPs actually. But must have just been absolutely insane that personal battle and the mm. psychology and that story i said about like he, sh he shaved the paint off his helmet and things like that um i think what rosberg says is he he f he had to create a war mentality in mercedes where you were either on his side or not and that meant there was less information sharing and whatnot if you have everything on the um, He's quite, he's a little bit more, well, he's quite, I think he's quite transparent about some stuff. He's a little bit insane, I think, Rosberg. I think he's yeah. in a position where he doesn't, he doesn't need to be responsible. <laughs> so he yeah. just kind of says what he wants, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been in a battle like that over a course of a season. Uh, I mean, you had, no, I don't well, you, you've had with Ryan Sandal, 
quite oh, yeah, 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 that's true, actually. Is the race itself. Um... Perfect starts. Yeah, it was, Reaction yeah, times. I guess so. I guess so, but for me it was always like, oh, it's only GT Sport kind of thing. Yeah. It's not like it's Formula 1. <laughs> but deep down, I mean, I remember that race at Fuji where you were both ghosted and you were still like lapping within like, you know, a couple of tenths of each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, I think for me that was very powerful because although I couldn't see him on track. Yeah. And he couldn't see me on track. We were just giving it our all. Yeah. You know, like, just, on the table. just 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 the thought that you could be losing <laughs> to someone to to your rival that you can't currently see on track. Yeah. I think that was very very powerful for both of us. Yeah. And we did finish the I think what was it a twenty minute race and yeah. we finished it within a second of each other. So it's a really inter I should almost make a I should find I'm sure Andrew streamed it. I should make a video of that because it's the concept of mm. what happens when you can't see the opponent you're racing against and Yeah. I, I, yeah. There's a very deep thing to it about, you know, just what if you're losing to the to your rival who you can't actually see? What if he's just taken that corner better than you? What if that lap was faster from him? Yeah. Kind of thing. And that forces you to actually race to your maximum potential, right? Yeah, and I, I can't, I can't honestly say that that's what I was thinking at the time. Yeah. And welcome back once again, ladies. At the time, you know, I was creating, I was in the zone, you know. I think you saw some of the screenshots of how close I was to the edge of the track at some points. Yeah. Just trying to maximize my entries and my exits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't honestly say I was thinking about what he was doing at the time because I think. It, if I'm being brutally honest, I think I always had the measure on him, like, you know, whether it was half a tenth or a tenth a lap. Um, he definitely pushed me. But didn't he, didn't he win? He won, yeah, he, he won the first two championships. Yeah. And then you won the next two or three, right? Uh, yeah, I won the next three. Um... But yeah, I mean, it definitely taught, I didn't have the discipline for for the first two championships. I don't think I was disciplined enough. So did he, did he push you then? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that I... I don't know how to say. I think discipline is the right word. That like I'd make a silly mistake here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff that didn't really have to happen. Um, for example, I think... One of the examples was the when we had the Aston Martin Group 4 League. Oh, that's a difficult car to drive that. And we were in the Tokyo race in the wet. And I pulled away, I got about six seconds away that one you spent. From, from everyone. And I was just pushing like crazy. Like, I wasn't even thinking that yeah. I was on track with anyone else. I was just trying to do like qualifying laps. Yeah. And I ended up losing it. Yeah, infamous um, moment. Yeah, and coming like sixth. So, so, if, if you don't know what we're talking about, so we, so we used to do a championship with Super GT was in it, I was in it, Nathan was in it, Roswald was in it, who you might know from GT, Trevisio was in it, who's a um, kind of a very, very hot top spit driver. A guy called Marky Boy was in it. He was a top 10 GT driver and that has since moved on to other things, but he actually went to GT Academy. Callum Brule was in it. He's an engineer at Williams who also went to GT Academy, but I think he went through the back door. And then we had a few other people. We actually had two uh, splits. And we did that. We started it around 2020, sort of in the pandemic. Kind of just a all by happenstance, really. So Super GT was making videos. I was streaming it. There was quite a lot. There's probably tens and tens of thousands of views on this championship and the context is that Roswald and Nathan were always the fastest two drivers pretty much probably then you had a class of like Super GT Trevisio and on my day maybe me I don't know um, I think maybe Callum as well and it was really interesting as we developed in that time where it's in the pandemics we were all at home we could all give it the time we'd all be on party chat and it was very good-natured, but what what I think is, 
I think that championship helped everyone become a better driver. Definitely helped me to race with people like you and Super GT and Roswald. And I can't remember if anyone was kind of a little bit slower than me. Maybe like Jay and like uh, like Pedro, whoever. I think they might. So it's just like a ladder of like racing against faster people in a good nature environment was just so invaluable because you had to raise your game. Everyone else was raising the game. Everyone else was really into motorsport. It's a very unique. Actually, I'm not sure it's unique, but well, for us it was unique. But it was unique because the dynamic of people who all raced in the same or who have raced the exact same machines, the Club 100 cars, yeah. who are now racing on the exact same software, Gran Turismo. Yeah. And you know, we we were all fairly skilled, and some more skilled than others in the parts. Yeah. Um, I think on the large part it translated through as well yeah. into the Gran Turismo Championship. That's a very good point. That um, one. Yeah. But yeah, it was very, very interesting. Ryan, obviously, very experienced in the Club 100 cards. Yeah. Me, to be honest, I was probably the least experienced in the Club 100 cards. Yeah. Um, but I'd always been, you know, a big fan of Gran Turismo and I've always been playing Gran Turismo. So I think that's what helped me. Yeah. Rather than someone who's got real racing experience, someone who's been in those battles who probably was in better decision, probably better um, mental states to make those difficult decisions in the heat of the moment yeah. over me, who's, you know, just been a sim racer um, up until that point. I think something that on that kart driver, for me, that was quite shocking at the beginning, but now I'm probably regarded as being on that spectrum, was how strong mm. people were in their moves. <laughs> Because in Club 100, yeah. it's, it's, people are very strong in the moves. It's very much about yeah, yeah. physical physics. If you're on the outside of a corner, you're going to lose out. There's no like expectation of. Oh, uh, not always. Not always. I think there's. there's a, I think there's a lot of dark. That, that, I think that's why there's a lot of controversy about the stewarding or whatever. But I yeah. think it's a might is right based system sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Do you know what I think? I think when well when you're on the outside of corners in the club 100 cards because of the way they give and the type of engines that they are yeah you're more likely to keep the position if you're, you're not the winding outside. you're not winding as much steering lock kind of thing yeah you're keeping the revs up yeah um you're not putting too much steering lock in you're more likely to keep the position if you're on the outside for most corners yeah um but the way that people try to eliminate that is just fully squeeze them out <laughs> by the time you get to the apex or yeah. after you get to the apex to, make to sure there's no space not always to push them off the track completely but just compromise them not, a little bit yeah you know make them think about putting about keeping their foot in for example yeah make them think yeah, about sure, backing out as soon as most likely if they think about backing out they've already lost they've as good as yeah. backed out yeah um, which is another, you know, one of them interesting mental things. 23.2, by the way, on pole at the moment. Mm. Mo, just on you guys for ACI racing. I think I prefer AI racing. I think Nathan prefers ACC. I definitely prefer ACC. Um, there's quite a lot of force feedback apps that I need to try out on AI racing, to be honest, before I can yeah, I think I make my decision. RB or something. Yeah. Yeah, I need to give some of them a go because it's just not doing it for me. Like, I just don't feel connected to anything. Yeah, it's very different to ACC. I actually prefer the duller sense and eye racing. That is a bit more... It's duller, but I find stronger, which ACC is, is more... Every second something different is happening, if that makes sense. So they see often... It's like a lot more One oscillating. Second. I'm just going to use the toilet. Give me a sec. Yeah. If I'm saying AC is a net of eye racing, it's definitely worth, if you have a PC, it's definitely, in my opinion, worth trying eye racing. Get a cheap three month subscription. Sometimes I think they even do it for free or like really cheap. And just try it out because you might love it. Um, now, Simard here is in a bit of trouble, isn't he? Because he's, well, I say a bit of trouble. He's eight, he's seven, he's six hundredths off. So. It's ridiculously close between the top four here. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. It's really 
lucky that we're able to have a stream like this. Obviously, big thanks to Logitech letting us co-stream this. And very interesting discussions about just racing psychology from hopefully interesting from two people that have raced in real life and racing the Sims. Um, Final see if he's going to improve. No, Probably not because he stayed wide. It actually might be his out. out that final point. attempt. Or maybe one more actually. Again, one minute forty-five seconds on the clock. As long as you cross the line before it hits zero, you will get to finish that lap time. Yeah, we'll get so another one as well. Another opportunity. We're on board Michael Mooning. Still the pole sitter. Is there any? A leaf looks like he might have just gone a bit quicker. I don't know. Or maybe we're just looking at him now. Well, but yeah, that league that we did, I don't know if anyone in chat remembers it, but the I need to put the streams in the playlist. It was such an insane moment in time. It wasn't a moment. It, this went on for, this league went on for many months, I think even years. But absolutely insane to be a part of. And they're all documented in our YouTube videos and the stories. And it's a, it's a season where I think all of us definitely grew. I'd say we all grew. We all, we all kind of put into the pot the time we spent practicing, sacrifices to be there. Think about Super GT, like sacrificing time to race and make videos. And um, I think we all grew from it. See if Simar can actually get an increase here. You think anyone in the top four could probably eke out just a little bit? <laughs> Easy to say from my position, just saying. register a real lap though at uh, Kun yeah, Kundaki yeah, Yoglu <laughs> you'd have to think is would that win by a few tenths you know Simard can't really go for it he needs a leaf to go for it a leaf might be thinking I can't win this I can't get the 10 grand I'm happy to sit in PT and solidify my, my PT or something we're about to head over to zero seconds on the clock. So if you hadn't crossed the line now, you are done ski. So as you can see, the timer at the top end of your screen. So they get two Simard. to put their lap times in. I don't, he's pit, yeah, he hasn't improved. <laughs> but he did, you know, to, to get P3 means he'll be on the seven. inside, Simard I presume, so here. Philip Simard, P2. So he might be able to race. kind of make a move into P2, we'll see. Defending champion. Only going to start on the second this is great though, just grid. chill and just watch, it's like, I would love to do this with just real world motorsport, obviously I'd love to do it with F1, for various reasons it doesn't work, because you have to pay to watch F1, but, I'd love to do more stuff like this where we can just chat about racing, maybe on Sunday, I mean Nathan and I, on a Sunday evening, if we're streaming together, we'll probably be doing VRS, we'll be racing, but we'll talk about the same stuff. No, there is not. So a leaf is going to be. Yeah, let us know if you're enjoying the stream. Levesque and Moaning are still out on circuit. They're currently. If you've got any questions fifth, about racing? There's a potential for them to. Make sure you um, enter the giveaway as well, 100%. If you want a G923 wheel and a pro no headset. Then. So that is Moaning and Levesque both in the, in the link. Brian Woodrow, one of the last drivers to cross the line. Is there any improvement here for him? There is an improvement. It's not enough. So there's up a position, a tenth almost two seconds between. Only I know there's a, there's a second between first and fourteen, which is yeah. Look at it both ways, but I think not, I think it was a twenty-three two Nathan. I thought you'd do twenty fours here, don't you? Did you do twenty threes? Um, I have done twenty threes here. So but in the either in the seven twenty s, well, most likely the seven twenty s spot. The six fifty s is not as fast as the seven twenty s, so it's a lot more difficult to get that time in the five. In the 650, they're making too many cars. I'm getting confused. <laughs> it's, not, it's very it's good value for difficult. money, isn't it? Keeping the chat yeah, saying that ACI racing is better value. Again, yeah, it's true. But I think I think they've got the most cars the in the game. And just shows everyone he is That's um, interesting apart that from BMW, is the starting grid as we have a BMW have got the M6, the M4, and the M2. Yeah. Is M2 GT4? In fourth, no, it's his own. It's Ryan like a. Uh, I don't know what to describe it. It's his own category. <laughs> M2 category. Um, but it's, it's quite a standard. Like M2, it's pretty much just M2s so of well stickers on them, we'll like liveries. Yeah. Mojo enjoying the stream. Define has entered. Yeah, I start on T1. 
Did you? What word did you start on? Just have like a one-off race at the end, just the three. Um, I started. Yeah, do you know what? I think I started on a T150. Yeah. Then I got a T300 yeah. RS. You guys know the story behind this one. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy this, Will. It's like good fun. Um, the interesting thing that Logitech have released recently, Nathan, is this hub where you can, like, you, if you have a G29, you can get the pro pedals and then it all works through the hub. Yeah, just an interesting uh, route to think about what to upgrade. Yeah, I think a wheel is honestly not as important as the pedals. Yeah. He will still be leading the championship going into that final race because of the consistency. No, just saying, only seen my player shoot seven with the controller since I got PSVR about, two and he take you to my bank and my wife. I'm one. getting all set up. What enter the competition? Player, then three. <laughs> Nathan, we need to get you on PSVR two here. See how you find well. it. So, as you talked about quite a bit, there's going to be a lot. See whether you. What we can do is we can. Um, it is pivotal. You, you can do a lap, and then do a lap in VR. You can maximize your time, maximize your see which is faster. On your opponents, so you can finally get, even though it may be a far cry, maybe get one of those overtake opportunities. Yeah, I'll give it a go. Now nah, they've got a good yeah, setup for this um, tournament. For me, it's all on. I wonder what draw is going to be like. He has to win this race if he wants to put himself in huh? that title hunt. I wonder what the draw is going to be like for the tournament. And indeed, like who's going to do it? Oh yeah, yeah. The second race here. It's going to be a quick fire thing, or maybe Lando and us. Like uh, it's interesting that maybe. polls on the. Oh, on the, on the stat, it was on the outside. Who's is poll on the outside here? Because that kind of sucks for P3, doesn't it? If you're P3 here, you're going to get swamped. If you're on the outside. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Was the yeah. runner up last time round. The vice champion last time out for the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. This, this is going to be very interesting. Simard. Simard. Third. Three, yeah. I don't know if that's race win in race beneficial one. or <laughs> detrimental. So a big chance to really extend his uh, He needs to push this, so I wonder if Elite. On pole position, elite it, it's well, yeah, the tournament, round out all of these stuff four. is in the terms and conditions. Well, I think it's pretty much what I There's a leaf ahead of him. We go down towards turn of one. I'll tell you what, a leaf. Got I'm a sure he started it. It's a bit dodgy. Sweep, sweep it if he holds outside, it around the outside, oh, he's, out he's going up. The... Simard's getting um, someone on the inside here. He'll have to hold it for the next left hand there. Yeah, oh, almost had a moment. He's going to keep it now. Of turn number two, but just about thing is, the, so, the thing here, a leaf might be like, there's no way I can win this tournament. So for me, I'm just happy to sit in P2. Oh, I, never know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Where, where did he come? Where did he come in the previous race? I don't know. I think he was up there. He might have, might have been third actually, which would. I mean, at the moment, there's no. The camera warnings are detriment to him trying to win this race. Yeah. Because I don't think he had that good of a result in the first race, but he could maximise his chances right now by pushing for the win. And that guy in P1. Oh, once again, running over Man. since limits are being tested multiple times already, just inside of the very first. I think you're safe there up to the sand, to be honest. Is that is that Ast there's that geo block or something, isn't there? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is being tested to this degree. Yeah, and to be fair, that's kind of the normal line for these drivers, but the the front two are so conservative through there, kind of threw me off. Touch you in G7, you, you get, get a wheel on the grass there, crazy. don't you, to get yeah, that rotation? Or GT Sport, you did. Yeah. That might be a GT Sport specific thing. Black thing, much better nice listening to you two chat and then letting Sunday boredom destroy the rest of my brain. Very um, nice to hear. These gaps, something's not right with these gaps, are they? Basically, ignore the gaps, chat. Levesque, I feel like he's one of these drivers that's always like shaping up, like every corner. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I do that in karting yeah. quite a lot. I just shave up. I know they, they can't even see what? me, but I just shave up. <laughs> I'm, I'm very quick to analyse drivers like that. Yeah. What does that tell you about that driver, do you think? It, it tells me he's very unsure of himself. Yeah. And he's using that to try and make you unsure of yourself. Maybe um, soon here. Obviously, obviously you know this this guy he's probably faster than me yeah but in context with this field yeah understood 
Um, he is telling me that he's a little bit unsure of himself. Um, <coughs> obviously, you know, the, you, oh yeah, this is the thing, like, this is a big tournament. You want to do what you can to ruin others' races, obviously without not crashing. Yeah. But you want to do what you can to put others off, yeah. to promote yourself, right? Yeah. So I get it. Like, I get why you do that. And that's a mistake from Kundak Oh, he's going to have to yeah, defensive here. Yeah. Yeah. Towards Druids. And I tell you what, this is going to get very spicy. Yeah, I'm saying indeed. I get. I get why you're doing that in this context in this competition. It's a yeah. big competition. Race number one, P5. Um. Yeah, like he, he has no choice but to win. But races race. I take part in, you know, it's nowhere near as as big stakes. Yeah. God, that line through there is so good. Uh, a line through there was so good. Yeah, it was. That's the corner I always struggled with. Mo just um, saying, does Nathan have a channel? Then if you, do you have a username for it? Do you have like a at I think for the channel? Uh, it's literally. Let me. If I put my. If I type in the chat, can someone look up my channel for me? <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, oh Levex off! <laughs> That's bottle in the cork now. Cork in the bottle, so. That's great news for Simard, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, this might be the chance for him to now go catch up to the front two. I missed that. Did he do that all on his own, or was I think he might have done it all on his own. Yeah. Yeah. Was he getting pressured by someone? Oh, the orange car had a bit of a moment. He lost the position. Black thing is how I learned British accents. Yeah, I'm not sure we have the best. Well, I don't know. There's many different British accents. But Simard, how much pace does he have now? Leaf, by the way, dropped to eight tenths behind Kundak Chioglu. So one lap where Leaf was piling on the pressure was enough to give Kundak Chioglu a little kick up the bottom. Said you've got to get on with this, and he absolutely has delivered that now. And also with the fast lap of the race, Philip Simard. How much pace yeah, but the got? way they take this left-hander just to like one away. The conse champion. conservation of momentum. The two time, it is slipping away yeah. with every lap. It's something I had to really learn in the MX-5s in that Assetto Corso yeah. thing I was doing. Um, yeah, I think I got it really correct in the 570S GT4 round at this track. God, look at that line. Man. Oh, man. That is that looks like a lot to me. <laughs> mm. Hawking might look up the inside too. So the the thing is, Nathan, about that corner, that tricky one, and also this one, is in AC, the steering heaviness changes quite a lot, I find. So if you're if you're applying a certain amount of force to turn the wheel, I find that the force feedback sort of fluctuates. So you end up yeah. You know, because as you're braking, as you're braking, the track starts to fall away from you. Yeah. And then as you're turning, the camber kind of catches the car yeah. and pushes it round. So you get, get, it goes a little bit light. You most likely lock up a little bit going into yeah. the corner if you're pushing too hard. Well, and then it will got faster come across as really weighty. Yeah. Oh, did you see that slide? That's a big slide. <laughs> Surely you go for such a wide entry. Make the move on See if you're hawking oh, it. Oh, oh. I got lucky there, no fishtail. We'll have every reason this guy's going to get all, all of them. That was a little bit over. Well, oh, Yee's had a big issue there, right? Ryan Yee's just let him go by. He's lost 700 positions because of it. It's pretty much his race over because of it. But he did not. Yee finished to last. Oh, overtake that way. Right. Do you know what? Fair play. But the amount they cut this corner is just so. They got a camera and was so good to watch. So that's, uh, that's really, really yeah, you have to, to be honest. Yeah. It's going to bounce you off. I mean, if you touch that curb, it's going to bounce you off somewhat. So you might as well take as much as you can. So even though you get bounced off, you get bounced off less than if you took that, half the curb, for example. That, that visibility, right, is so much... I don't say well. Phrase this right. It's much more beneficial to be in bonnet camera than cockpit camera for that blind corner. I find. Yeah. Because you're, you're cutting the corner. You have to. You're cutting a blind. You are cutting a blind corner actually because it crests, doesn't it? So like. Just seeing what's going on with Simard, he's still. 
Um, Why, we can't really trust the uh, daps too much. This is all just chaos here, though. It's a lot more lively than That's true. Okay. They are very close to each other indeed. So come in through turn number four. Oh, from the outside maybe. The outside. Ryan Yee basically trying to do exactly the same move as he did on to Brandon Hawkin the previous lap. This time did it beautifully well. Got it configured. Nice job. And O'Brien now coming through as well. So Alu Gobi has gone for a bad to work. Oh, he's so kept it in there behind. Side by side he's kept it in there. Oh, there yeah, that was not sure that was going to work. <laughs> you kind of have to yield the dead, really, don't you? It's not two lines through that. Yeah, if you take it too tight and get on them bump, it's almost like it spit you up. Like, if you touch the curb for that fast right hand, you most likely lose the car. That's what he might have done. He might have hit the other car. Let's see what's going on at the front here. Do you know what I really liked about this tournament? No? There was a livery which they gave me for the 720S, yeah. which I think only one other driver has. Oh, nice. What as a out of the whole of out of the whole of ACC, like because I think for the for the first seven which I was in, yeah. or the first eight, I was. Uh, oh, seven, eight. There was 14 in my race, so. For the first seven, they had completely custom liveries. Second seven, they used the in-game Logitech G Challenge liveries. Yeah, this, yeah. And I was seventh in the standards um, for my final heat yeah. of my final round. And there was a livery that they told me to download. That's pretty cool. See, when you drive that, people yeah. are like, what's that livery? You might get messages. Like, what's yeah. That? You deserve it. You have this. Because ACC, nah, I really, really liked it as well. You can't really mod it. People don't... Do they mod it? I don't know what the f how you get liveries in the game. Um, you can download them. Got to move all the files over to the right places. Oh, okay. I think. Did you have the files up in the first race? Um... It's quite a complicated thing to, them, to look it up. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. To fully, there's, there's, there's like, you see, you got. If you open up your cars folder, yeah. you got like. Uh, oh, what is it? It's like March Madness here, isn't it? You've got ACC folder, then you've got things like cars, config, setup, yeah. all of that. I think it's under cars. I can't even remember now. Deliveries might have been their own folder. But you have, but, do you have to post in one file or like diff different files? Yeah, no, you have, you have to put one file in the liveries folder for yeah. your car, one file in the cars folder for your car. Yeah. I can't even remember it now, to be honest. That's why I'm sure it just, the nature of a, a game like that on PC where you can just modify it must just be so right for cheats, right? If you can fool, if you can fool the server into thinking that you're legit, so it's very, that's why that Motec. But even the Motec data, that's just sort of like equivalent of like GPS and traces, right? And stuff like that, isn't it? So they're sort of trying to guess. Are you revving the in? It's still not black and white, basically, is it? You're trying to say is that unrealistic to carry through that amount? But it's for small yeah. tolerances. Like Motec, I think it will help the people, help them moderators identify if someone's cheating but it's not 100 percent yeah um foolproof yeah like i'm sure there's programs that can hide it from motec yeah which is something i heard about formula one esports like there's programs that people use that hide from the cheat detection systems yeah uh, the thing is i think if this guy is cheating I think it is such a scandal. Like, and if he's who are you not, talking about exactly? Thomas Ronha. Yeah. And if he's not cheating, I think it's such a failure of duty around those to protect him. I don't see anything yeah. in the middle of the sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult. I don't want to make a video on it because I don't want to pile on. But yeah. Like. Yano Ogme has been like the pinnacle of F1 esports yeah. for a fairly long time. Yeah. Um, and the first I heard of this newcomer, Thomas Von Haar, yeah. is that he was destroying him. Yeah. Like two tenths on a quality lap when the rest of the 
yeah, of the and gaps at top of like esports, thousands. That's cunt, yeah, same. But no, it's, yeah, like how on earth can you be two temps faster at that level when these guys literally know? But what do you, Nathan? What the, do you have to, to gain by cheating and being two temps? Well, and if um, so yeah, I don't know, Nathan, man, I just something about it is not right. Some some people are literally they don't care about if they get caught. Some people literally don't care if they get caught. They They've got the fame. Yeah. They've got everyone saying their name, and yeah. some people get such a buzz from that. Even if they get nothing else, they get yeah, such a buzz um, from that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's not sustained. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna get any deals from it. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy who I heard helps developers now. I might be within ACC so, yeah, to be honest. He was a cheater and now he helps. Yeah, something like that. Um, I doubt it works that way for everyone. Yeah. It works out like that for everyone, but... Joe's just saying people get so sucked into their own BS to understand what integrity is and how hard it's to get back. I just... Something's about it's not right. I don't want to make a video and be on the wrong side. It's too mm. important for that. So yeah, for well, the ACC side, there's there's been proven cheats. Even within this competition that we're watching right now, there's been yeah. Although cheats. they did deal with it very well because of the Motec thing. I don't know why F1 doesn't <laughs> when it's like more centralized. Well, that's the thing. F F1's not really sim enough to have that data. But they, in, in F1, they all run the game at 60 FPS because if you run it 120, you lose speed because the game runs differently. It's like... Mm. It, that's already an exploit to some extent. You know, definitely on the side of is it cheating or not, it's not cheating. It's definitely an exploit. Yeah, what, so if, I, what if he ran at 55? Yeah. He's performed well above my expectations on this sim. You know, he's a very good eye racer. You know, like in esports, you run the graphics really down normally because you don't need them. Well, you know, it's, they're all kind of exploits. So, I think we just level. need it needs to get we need like to get to the bottom of it. Really. Today he's absolutely um, yeah. So, yeah, I think he might pimp. I think yeah, I don't know. I heard I heard that they already have to log into something. Who knows? Um, that kind of reads but their data. I didn't. I didn't get the exact details on it, but there's something that they have to log into yeah. while they're racing or while they're competing. Oh, oh what, what happened there? Cheers. Thank you. What happened there? It's like he's got a button and said, "Right, <laughs> you go off the track now." Freebie. Thank you. <laughs> Walker just being pressured a little um, bit too much. But I, I kind of feel for the guy. If he's not cheating, <laughs> he's not experiencing the best, maybe the best years of his life. I don't know, because no esports life is quite short lived. And because everyone's sh yeah, you know, no, shouting okay. him down, so I, right I don't. Something's not. Grass, something doesn't sit well with me about the whole thing, and I, I'm definitely yeah. not. Get at the I moment. think from the fact he just he came on the scene and he was beaten. Oh, man. Yeah. By large margins, like, yeah. all these guys, they're within. Like so, I think you got you got like top five or top six people within a tenth of each other. Yeah. And sometimes even hundreds or thousands. Yeah. And the long comes a newcomer. Yeah. Beating everyone by tenths, about like two tenths over a lap. Like yeah. it's it's very very unheard of. And. There we go. So the Moaning, so oh, I don't know, just, just in behind Ryan Woodrow, there's no smoke of our fire, I guess. Potential move up towards the there's been enough um, accusations. Top five, there's actually another mistake from Moaning. And um, I think, right hand that oh, I mean, from what I've seen, like that, that example that you showed about, or that, that you mentioned about when the guy cut his screen down yeah. an old tab or something and you saw like grip packs loaded in his, <laughs> in his files. <laughs> Like, it 100% happens, and when you hear about stuff like this newcomer yeah. coming and beating champions by two tenths on the lap, poly lap, yeah. like, it just sounds like, like the cheats are in action. Yeah. I don't know, too much. the only thing I could do is try and do a proper investigative Something goes horribly um, wrong mm. here in the next three to four minutes. Joseph says, uh, if, if you stand two tenths over 100 people, something is up. Yeah, we'll see. Like but here, anyway, we know in this championship that you want to submit motor data. I think this is different. The guy in P1, Kandaki Loglu, is going to be 40 yeah. points. And Simard is not even going to get the next 15 here at this rate. So. 
again, he just looks like... I don't know if the Nathan, this is that qualifying is so important or the fact that the pace is just so good, you qualify first and you check out. Um, he's, he's That's what it was like in my heat at Brands. Yeah. He also had checked out, um, but he was actually genuinely extremely fast. Yeah. Um, mind you, though, I did get the fastest lap. At my round in Brands Hatch. Oh, nice. In the 570 S's. Yeah. Uh, I got a 131.3, yeah. which was fastest in my split, and I think a tenth off the split record, as in of all the splits that they did. Okay, yeah. Of all the drivers, I was a tenth off the race record. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of these guys are. I mean, there's a minute 45 left. I'm not sure if any of these guys oh, have really got it in them too. Oh my word. So nearly lost that. Yeah, there's lots of videos on it, Joseph. Um, I think what I'm appreciating here is like, brands the most, because the track I've done the most is like, just how good these people are and how consistent they are. Like the lines they're taking around some very tricky corners are just... The vice champion it's very good. To one more spot. Um, really good. To have the guy at the front winning by maybe almost two seconds is just within this cream of the cop. He's like right at the top of it as well. Same what though does have fastest lap. Mm. Be interesting to see their cameras here and kind of see if they visibly look like they're like you know in GT drivers have very different styles. Like Benelli looks like very angry and sweaty. And mm -hmm. like, um, you know, Baptiste is quite involved, where, whereas Mikel is like very sort of relaxed. To, uh, if he has ambitions to win yeah. this championship and become a two time um, Logitech McLaren G Challenge champion, but I have to say, what I want to see if if Kundi Laku is going to win this, I want to see a one to one against him and uh, the Cormac, <laughs> two dominant champions of Global. I don't think anyone can touch McCormack really um, for the moment. Yeah, like you go through the special events yeah. pages on ACC for like time trials. Then McCormack has always caught the edge on Luke Whitehead. Yeah. Yeah, it would be very, 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 very difficult. But he's on multiple, he's doing Rensport as well, which is, I find super impressive. Right. Oh, big defensive move. He's doing Rensport as well, isn't he? It's different sim. Yeah. I find that very impressive. Eight, your point is yeah, about yeah. making, you know, how much time you have available, basically. Like, he's doing not just different tracks, but different sims. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, that's, you know, you've got time for that when you're in a team. It's true. Oh, on board then with Elise. They're both catching up to Kundachioglu. Kundachioglu currently leading by one. Yeah. It's not only the team that wants you to win, it's the sponsors that want. So it's people who supply him is, head up towards that final yeah. um, is his equipment, the people who sign deals with him, they want him to win. So, again, got one yeah. of course, they're going to they're gonna try and make it as easy. They know he's got the talent to win. Yeah. But, you know, by giving him the free stop and supporting him, you know that you're only enhancing his chances. Yeah. By giving him the time, the equipment to do so. A lot of pressure moving forward. To that final race. There's it's great battling down the field, field here. Mm. But this Kundi Laku uh, guy. Just... Not get Levesque. Levesque, uh, but to be fair, Nathan, he's been on pole by about three thousandths of a second, I think twice. That's yeah. it's, the advantage you get for such a incomprehensibly small margin is so big. I don't know how to explain that again, but it's like you know in a lap like oh, 3000 it's like tiny advantage. it's tiny gear shifts and like it's tiny moments right tiny mm. and it adds mm. up to 3000 but the yeah the advantage you get is like a chasm yeah when you start first you're you know it is the best position um i think what we saw with Alif in turn two yeah. was that he was under a bit of pressure 
but P1 can touch um, your glute. No, sorry, Simo, it was under a bit of pressure in turn two. On the first lap? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he almost lost third on the, on, oh, I, don't, I don't know track uh, names, as in corner names. Yeah. Um, but turn two, he was on the outside, but, yeah. you know, he managed to hold it around the outside to keep the inside of turn three. Yeah. Which, by the time he was finished with that, he had lost a little bit of time to P2. Yeah. And as we see now, that's the order that they finished. So... The only way he can win this is if... Well, he'll have 20... We'll have, sorry, 36 points. He's, he's out, isn't he? I think that's what it no, sorry, I was really bad, Master. <laughs> He's got 26 so points and a maximum of 20 to win, so he can get 46 points, but he would need the leader to not to get lower than six points. I think, yeah, I think they just said the leader needs to come lower than six. Yeah. It's not that. In a game where you can get a tiny bit of contact and get bowled out, it's still everything to play for, isn't it? It's such a funny it is, margin. Race number three is right around the corner, so stick with us. We've got more action coming up in just a sec. This, you know this competition, Nathan, runs from... It's a huge thing. It runs from October. I'd love to know. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get the stats how many people entered, but, like... Um, I think if we can increase the visibility of it... Um, and it sounds like they like to platform hop, hop a little bit. Yeah. It's, a, it's quite a big thing. I'd, <clears throat> I'd love to next year... It is huge. It is huge, but it's this thing about... Like, I'm sure that ACC... Yeah. Like the equivalent of ACC top split is still quite a close-knit community yeah um because it is all the best drivers in the game who are taking part and to be honest why wouldn't you yeah. if you know you got a chance to True. win these awesome prizes why yeah. wouldn't you take part at something that you're good at so a lot of these guys are the top guys in the game yeah. and they're taking part in this tournament um you know it's of course it's allowed yeah. Um, it just makes it difficult for the likes of me and you. Yeah. Well, I don't think... About, <laughs> don't worry about me. But yeah, it's... Um, it's. Uh, but I think that's partly what we can do, Nathan, is I'm, I would hope that the stuff we did, um, you know, got some more people involved and then maybe on their own, mm. on their journey into sim racing and everyone start... We saw like Van Der Velde saying he started on controller in like F1 2017. And then you you might get better at it, and then you want to get a wheel and whatnot. So it's all about getting on. That's what I see my role in this. It's like getting people onto that journey, mm. and then wherever they want to go, they go. This is this is the pinnacle. On that race, and we'll see the same at Hungaroring because I find Hungaroring so brutal to drive, and to see these is, guys yeah. like take these curbs like lap after lap, and I find like almost otherworldly. Um. There was a there was a driver I think who came out recently is just getting their first DD, and everyone was like, "What? You weren't on the DD?" I can't remember who it was, but it was some huge sim racing driver. Uh, I can't remember if they I were GT. I can't remember if they were GT or iRacing. It was on Twitter. But like, mm. like what? You're not on a DD. Um, but I think that just shows like these guys are just so talented, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that doesn't really. I mean, some people make it work, no matter what equipment they're using. Yeah. Um, but I think for the majority of people, it's easier to be faster or easier to be consistent if you have higher quality equipment. Yeah. More likely. Joe's saying he'd love to get a rig, but real tools and keeping my lights on high priority. PS5 was enough to noodle budget. Yeah, I mean... um depends what sort of rig you want i mean this is that's a play seat something i think but play seat challenge is always such a great place to start because if you don't use it for a few weeks or months you just fold it away this is the xbox room interesting yeah i've noticed i thought it was a playstation product only to be honest no because when we did the giveaway the person that won <laughs> logitech said um, do you want an Xbox or PS1? So I was like, okay. What's that saying? They said, I, can't, I think someone wanted an Xbox. Everything under control, you're just not going fast enough. 
I do like in all these videos people come with their rim. <laughs> but I can't wait. If they if they release a formula rim, I'm all over that. I'm like day one formula rim. Um, I I have to say I think the best advert I'd seen for that is the Fanatec BMW rim. Yeah, well the one that works in real car. Yeah, because it literally is the GT4. I mean the the GT3 uh, car rim. Yeah. And you could take that onto your sim at home. Yeah, that. I guess if you if you pull up in your drive from your GT4, then you can um you can quick release. <laughs> yeah, quick lean. release into the house. I've got a challenge seat and a G29, but looking for an upgrade. If you got a play seat challenge in G29, I would go eight. If you're looking for upgrade, I would go 80-20, Rick. Although Nathan, you've got a yours is an 80-20, but it's still is it alum is it aluminium? Uh, mine is an 80-20. Mine's um, I've got the FGT Pro Elite or something. Is it just FT FGT F1 or something? I don't know. Uh, is it? It's the next level racing FGT something. I don't want to say it's light. No, the light is a different one. It might just be the FGT. Yeah. So, but as, as I would actually, if you want, re, if you want to upgrade and never upgrade again, and you've got the space, I would get an eighty twenty rig. And then it depends what, if you want to play on console and PC. If you want to play a console or PC, I would look at something like the Logitech or the Fanatec stuff. Those are, that's just basically it. I wouldn't look at Thrustmaster. I wouldn't look at Moser or those ones. He's not going to play on console. Time, so at the moment, I'm using the Logitech, Logitech Pro. Um, and and v an the other thing, Nathan, I've been using the Pro in VR. Race, the True Force is absolutely insane. Yeah. Like, really, it's just... The, the True Force... That, is, do you know that True Force, right? Yeah. Is it a speaker inside the base that mimics the sound? I think the True Force audio is a speaker, but the True Force is just genuinely greater detail. Well, it's just a lot of grace detail like eye racing with true force on and off is like completely different mm. it's like a greater polling rate casey has got a dd pro with gt mega rig but just bought a gt mega prime light i know you okay, I can't wait to see how you put that together i think you're one of the first people to get a prime light actually which is a really good value proposition oh what you can do always leads tv now with logitech is you can Get the hub, and then I would say for you directly, get the Logitech Pro pedals and the hub, and then you'll use your G29 and the Lotel Pro pedals. That is probably the single best upgrade you can do, actually. If you got if you play PS5 and you got 2K budget, then you can definitely get the whole Logitech Pro system and an 820 rig for that, and you'll be set. I mean that that's what I use, and I do a lot of sim racing and create content. I'm using the Logitech Pro pedals and wheel and an 8 the GT Mega 820 rig. But many different ways you can skin a car. I think the the more difficult question is actually real entry level. Because mm. as I'm using the DD, entry more, level is like, becoming such a different thing now. Yeah, uh, you say entry level to some people. That's true. We're talking about yeah. Fanatec uh, DD pros. They're, you know, Fanatec are trying to make the DD Pro the new standard for entry level. Whereas it's raining, 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 raining. Oh, raining is it? Yeah, like the ten minute one. Ladies and gentlemen. They've got to get their quality laps in ASAP. This could be a big shake-up depending on where you are on the track, right? Because if it just gets slower, because yeah. they've got to do in, they've got to do out lap, or they might actually, this might be their fast lap. Wait a minute, is it currently raining or will it rain no. in 10 minutes? I don't know what that 10 means. If It must be kind of random a little bit. The 10, no, 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 the 10, 10 means that within the next 10 minutes it so will it be raining. Yeah. Most likely 
you know, in 10 minutes exactly. Let's see. You pre if you're conductively, you'd be pricking it a little bit. I don't know why his outlap is so slow as well, like a full minute. I don't know if that's a glitch. Because uh, he would have come out of the pits. He would have been in the pits for a while and then uh, okay. done his lap. But that's, where, where is Michael that's recording his outlap though, isn't it? I think. This could be yeah. I don't know wrong. In terms of where the yeah, pretty yeah, if, yeah, if you want to get discounts, then not too far I have GT Mega okay. discounts. Not, yeah, they're, they're I think I will probably get a Logitech discount code that. as well. It's about 10% off this stuff. So they'll be, they will, they'll all be in the Discord. Save you some money and also send some money my way. Greatly appreciated. But this, this could be very spicy. We're gonna see very oh, do you know what? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, what Blue is be an actually, treat. I think, about to complete his first fine lap. <coughs> Simard's on the back foot. Oh, no, he isn't. No, Simard's ahead of... Oh, I don't know what the stand... I don't know what the standing is. Simard, this should be his first recorded lap now. I think this is going to be second first lap. So yeah, one forty four two. Ooh, tenth. Yeah. Well, not a tenth, half a tenth. Mm. So if it rains now, Simard's on pole. Mm. If, this has happened in F1 before. If he's on pole, it's not good enough for him to win and Kondiaku Blue to come second, right? Do you back him up or do you check out? Yes, Kondakshio mm. could be in the second position. It's not ideal because he needs him to finish down in sixth It's position. difficult. Nice one, yeah. Alif, Alif okay, who was pretty quick, is in sixth. Um, yeah. But the rain is so he's not going to be able to really now. challenge him from Moaning. there. I don't think Moaning was that fast. fast. He was all right. I think he was up there last time. I think Yi was a very unknown quantity. He was kind of all over the shop. Yeah. Mind you, he's only a few thousands behind Kondakshio. I would say if um, Levake Le 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 is like the kind of craziest driver I think we've seen so far, if he ends up behind Kondakuglu, then I'd be trying to <laughs> facilitate some sort of accident. <laughs> no rain yet, so again, use him. Yeah, there's another use him to your advantage or your detriment. Yeah. I'm sure this has happened in our championship, Nathan, hasn't it? In Club 100, some okay, situations so like that. Oh, rain, rain, rain! Yeah. Oh, there it is. Rain. rain! That's it! Rain. Oh, That's your yeah. order! Oh. That's your order then, I'm surely. Be very, very surprised oh, chat, this is big drama. Time now. There's too many corners between Kondakcioglu... He's not that far away if that's a pit entry line, is it? <sighs> not sure it's going to be possible. Oh, there's no way he's going to go faster, you never know, is it? That good. Uh, to, to be honest, it, it can rain for a while uh, exactly before the track starts to get saturated. To produce, if you see on the top, it still says the track condition is green. Is not yeah, I think no one's going fast today. With four minutes, 30 seconds to go, it's now it's just going greasy, no so... Now they're just going to sit in the pits, presumably. So Levesque, absolute disaster, because he didn't get a lap in, right? Yep. And that is just sometimes how the cookie crumbles. Ooh. That's about half the grid already retiring. To wow, okay. Now with more along the way. So moaning, just finishing off uh, remaining laps that they had started walking. before. Things. I think, you know, I, I don't, I don't think they did particularly well in the previous round, but they got a really, really good chance to do well this round. Do you think it's, are there some, is it going to rain now simulated to race if that make, in real time? Not real time, in like simulated time? I hope we do have rain during a race. Um, I'd like to see you see how the timer yeah. at the top is it says rain is currently raining but in 10 minutes again it'll be cloudy yeah as in it will stop raining yeah the track i don't know how for lot for how long it's going to be raining yeah the track might go from greasy to damp to probably on dry tires as well yeah we won't be able to see that information in the remaining three minutes of qualifying and it might be, a case it of, might be uh, that throughout the race, the race now, the track is going to be drying up. Does it, you know that 30, does it do the race like immediately or does it simulate another hour or something? Moisture on the track to, the, there, to the race, the that makes sense. Um, you can set the race times. To be honest, all the... 
All the temperatures have been the same, haven't they, throughout qualifying and the race, which indicates to me that it's very, point. very similar times of the day. So... It's an interesting one. I don't know if they're going to skip an hour or two, but... We'll find out in 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So when it says cloudy in 10 minutes, is there still a, are there still a chance it can rain, or is it like, it's definitely going to be cloudy? No. No, it's, it, it shows it's currently raining. Yeah. But within the next 10 minutes, it will stop. So it will stop. It's just the time, it's the time when it does it isn't certain. But... Definitely within the next 10 minutes. Okay. Understood. If they set the race time to actually start yeah. for when qualifying time actually finishes. Yeah. Then the track would still be. It's damp now. In, you know, damp. Yeah, it's just gone to damp. So the track would probably still be damp by the time the race starts. Yeah. Would you want to be on track now, just sort of getting the grip conditions and getting a feeling for it? Because I see a lot of people sat you in the pits. Definitely want to be on. Yeah, yeah. You definitely want to be on track, learning the conditions, learning your braking zones again. But to be honest, these guys have probably done enough practice in both the wet and the dry. Yeah. They're getting their briefing, maybe. But, Dirty. Yeah, so for me, I would be out there driving, learning the position, learning the conditions. Everything yeah. to try and get that race win, even though he doesn't need to. All right, well, once again, folks, your starting grid is pretty much locked in at this point. Nigh impossible for anyone to get a better time than they already had. I'm interested. I'm just back thinking now. back to Bottas. <laughs> Going bowling yeah. at turn one. Like... Smart, more than likely ending up in pole position. Michael K sitting right we'll behind find out very quickly. in second place. A few surprise additions to it as Michael Moaning has It's a very condensed so, schedule they're doing here, doing EMEA finals and do NA finals. So, when you think about this, is sort of what GT do at their big big finals, but the only difference here is that the drivers are driving in worldwide. I think everything else is pretty much on the same level. Mojo saying, let's do this right. Chat, let us know now who do you really think is going to win this championship? I think Kondaki Oglu has got to be odds on and he's still. Become easier to do. Uh, you know, he's just in a second. But so expect anything to happen. It's I think the if it does start wet, the, the kind of chaos factor is a little bit higher. Uh, but just doesn't want to put himself in a position where he might get potential penalties or or anything that can affect his final position in this championship. The Logitech McLaren G Challenge. Yeah, this is going to be it for 2022, and Nathan. Then we'll work out what to do with Logitech McLaren G Challenge 23. In mm -hmm. G Challenge history, we've had adverse weather. I know Latin. I wonder what sim they'd use next. I um. I like this. I was thinking of suggesting for the Car 100 League that we use a set of Corsa or even the kart sim software yeah. to have, you know, a proper karting championship. Not a bad idea. It does work really well and it's cheaper than I racing for sure. Yeah. Um, you can get the whole esports pack, which I think gives you 10 tracks, four or five karts. The only thing I think about that is politically. Yeah, I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm not sure it's going to fly with Club 100 to basically put them, not out of business, but take, you know what I mean? So you can do it much cheaper. One, That's the only thing I'm thinking. No, nah, no, nobody would stop doing the real climb. There's no question of that now because we're racing GT3 NASCAR, whatever. God, these guys are so. I've just been sitting here chilling. These guys, Nathan, have just been like non stop. Because they talk non stop. Uh, five minute breaks, right? And then they're talking non stop at high quality information. It's impressive. Mm. Either way, here is the starting grid as we have I've been to Hungary, it's a really cool circuit. Michael Kundaksiaglu takes second place yeah, right to behind him, uh, looking for the victory. Great trip as well, staying in Michael Budapest. In third, and Hawken in fourth. Take the train out. Yeah, I heard it's quite a nice city. It is, yeah. A lot of fun stuff to do. I mean, yeah, I was there. I've been there a few times. I have been there for the F1. Josh McKean in ninth. Take a bus from Budapest there. Will be taken on by Tyler and um, super, super, super hot. It's very low key. They're going to take this off to Canada. I can't imagine they get enough money from Hungara Rink. It's like, it's such an yeah. anachronistic thing, so... Even like Monaco, when I used to go to Monaco like last year in Times 4, I used to always go to this restaurant in Monaco. 
that was super cheap. It's like you could eat for like 15 pounds, which might sound expensive, but for Monaco that is not expensive. And you're like in the paddock, so you just get a meal and you sit there like all day and they're happy with it. It's a family run thing. And that's closed down. It's partly why I'm actually not going back to Monaco. It's just like, it's just stuff is... Vegas prices are insane. Um, I just want to talk about the, I think the cheapest ticket yeah, in Vegas is like cheapest ticket is like a thousand. One of the best drivers in North America still. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Man. This, this final yeah. was battling for the championship last time round and languishing down in 15, 14. Position. Right, let's see what that's the attitude is going to be. Here. Being worse. That's the whole region. I can't say I've ever had the desire to visit a Formula One race. To be honest, open competitions. To, to Depends what you're into. Anybody can sign up. For <laughs> I think a lot of people go into it with the wrong expectation and at this point actually because you're going to see the cars mm. flash by it's not like you go to the football you see the whole football pitch <laughs> you see the cars flash by if you're in a, in a foreign yeah. country you often don't get real intel on what's going on um, you're quite far away from the excitement though keeping track of the cars every time they come round and he's gained the position. It wears thin. It wears thin. Raining, raining, raining. It's raining and it's going to dry it up. What decisions have been made here in terms of the tyres? Looks like they're actually on dry tyres. I hope they've all gone to dry tyres. This is, uh, this is uh, Mojo is saying back in Simar, but they're both Canadians. Yeah, it's going to be a Canadian, we think. That, but this is actually high right. stakes. This is going to be Definitely in the midfield. I mean, you've got Levesque at 15. <laughs> we should, we should know who's on the wets and who's on the dries. Presumably everyone's going to start on the drives, unless someone's going to gamble, like to make early headway, right? Mm. People saying it's too wet. But then you've got ten painful minutes on wet tires on a dry track. Yeah. How long is it? It is doable, honestly. It is doable that like you can drive. Oh, Kondakli's under big pressure here. Conditions. Runs a little bit he's down he's lucky they're getting side by side behind him. Ooh, yeah, they've gone. Yeah, to be honest, he's safe for another lap. Yeah, he's got a whole lap now. They're gonna go for the next corner side by side. Because they they're not in. It doesn't matter. They may as well fight, right? He says he really doesn't want to fight. But Elif is looking rapid, right? Is he on wets? He might be on wets, you know. Well, he's just a broken clear. Oh, it looks like a bit of a jostling behind. Someone cut that. Quite a lot. <laughs> the Vex gone from 15 to 9th, by the way. Guessing he's on wets. They're up the inside of an. Possibly. Oh, my Kondakli's lost out to a leaf here. And he's got Yi as well. So if he finishes lower than 6, this is the thing. No, that is, this is the thing, though. They might be on wet tyres. Yeah. Pressure now on for Ryan Yi from Ryan Which means Yee really he's not right doing now, too bad. But it depends because he might still get sucked Simar up into something and also who knows up. whether the wets are going to be the best strategy what, because it'll be worth it to take the pits. Right now as Ryan mm. does try but I I'm pretty chat I'm pretty sure there's a mixture here of wets and the drives. My word, this is so stressful for him, right? Absolutely has. Elite moving forward. Takes At least in the lead as well. Simon oh, needs he, to win this. He, he, he needs 20 points. He must be on wets. We'll put it this way. Simon's in second now. Yeah. So even if Kandash Logu came seventh, it's still not enough. For yeah, he needs 20, not 15. His current P1 position for the overall series here amongst all three of our races. He drops one more spot. And as you said, if Simard or Elite were able to move forward, that's going to bump him out of the oh. top. Well, I know he's good. Oh, he's see, good look, the rain stopped now. He has to finish in tenth or below. So he's good. You know, he's got a lot of insurance to work with. He's done the hard yeah. work in the first. Yeah, the rain has stopped. Races. From this point on, the track is drying up. So we only had two. We had two. Um, two minutes forty seconds yeah. of rain. <laughs> so that is literally eighty percent of the race now. Yeah. 
but he's got Lim Snookin. It's going to be drying up and dry. But Kandaklu is still fundamentally in a lower position than Simard. Like Simard's only going to get a passing leaf and then try and. Simard. Oh, who's off there? Who was that? Levesque, I think. Oh, it is. It's Marek Levesque. Then he dropped down a position. Ryan Yee and McKean are battling for position. I like this guy. So you, who did you root for in the last one? Who was it? What was the name of that guy? John Jonka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard you've been a little bit uh, hopeful for Levesque as well. Exactly. Picking the wrong guy. My word, that's the championship leader. Is he going to send it? Oh, he's hung it. Can't see. And meanwhile, meanwhile, P2 and P3 have just been exchanged as well. Right? Simartos another position. This is such Simartos strong defense by him. That is such strong defense, isn't it? To keep everyone at bay is just like, that is like insane. Side by side. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a matador there, isn't he? First corner carnage. Well, Gobi, Gobi, Gobi started 15th. Simard is really struggling. Yeah, Gobi, yeah. It's still wet then, conditions. McKean's now second right it's and up to third. look how much Simard i got with the down to fourth position so our two titled protagonists are struggling in these conditions god this guy is so good it's keeping them fighting thinking, who am i defending from here which one of the surely goby's got a huge pace though right if he's from. come that far continuing to change up it's, it's one of these things if kandaki well, loses one position he'll just be a waterfall just get eaten that won't he i think that has already happened i think, I think he stemmed it i think he stemmed but, the flow you know he, he's behind simard at the moment yeah so oh, i thought it was going to be said truly on now for the final 15 minutes Minutes. Yeah, the rain's gone. The rain has subsided, so now this is where. Oh, my word! The uh, thing Lim is, that's a bit naughty if he gets overtaken. The thing is, if Kondaklu can hold on here, if he's on dry tires, he knows he's just going to have an advantage. That was worth gambling on just doing some massive defence, wasn't it? And then the, these drivers yeah, are wet from now on, he's benefiting from yeah. being on drives compared to whoever's on wet. As soon as that rain down. stops, as soon as that rain stops, he is literally, he's benefiting, he's looking up. That was so good, but though. <coughs> I think Simard, mind you, Simard's dropping back quite a bit. This lead that he's got, yeah. Yeah. he's got about... A leaf, I don't know if the timing's right, but a leaf is like Walker, Walker in on a mad one. Position. He has got a six, a no, he's got now, seven seconds on Simard. Um, I don't think if it, well, actually, no, if it does dry up, probably be about a four second lap difference between the wets and the dries. So anyone on the west has got a pit, right? It's not. It's just not going to work out for them. Pitting, is it? No, pit, pitting is not worth it. You will end up losing about a minute and a so half. Is he going running outside of Kandaklu here? It's Ali Gobi. No decision made as to be aggressive into turn number one. Gobi then on the brakes a little bit earlier. Kandaklu has missed his breaking point. Oh, he's going to go through. Is he going to hold it though? Is he going to hold it here for left-hander? Is he going to hold it? For dear life to this man, it gives it. And we were on the inside. Ducks, just cannot maintain the same pacing as we'd seen on the previous <sighs> two tracks. They're losing position. That was a mistake, to be fair. He went too deep there. Not even been seen in the top mm. 10 prior to this race. Lou Gobi, excellent. But do you know what? Well yeah. To make it up this far. The pace that Gobi's got, you could catch Simard yeah. in no time. Yeah. I still, Simard is still not anywhere near where he needs to be. Simard's only one and a half seconds ahead of Gobi. Did the Leaf come second in the last race? Yeah. Anyone know where Leaf came in the first race? Because he's going to get 20 here. He got. It will be on 35, right? So if he got more than five in the last race and Kondaklu crashes out, he'll win. And on countback, two race wins, you're good to go. Uh, Alif would only have had the one. But yeah, he loses four positions from here. Then uh, Mohamed Alif is going to be a two-time champion. Like, wow. wow. A, Who's writing the script? A Leaf wins if Kondaklu yeah. loses, it goes out of the points, basically. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> and he's getting absolutely hounded here. This is insane drama. Al Capone saying P3 or P4. Yeah, so a Leaf, he was good at Masano, wasn't he? Yeah. I just wonder if the temperature, the low temperature is 
stopping the truck from drying out as fast as I remember it drying out before. Damn. Kondaku's under big pressure here. Is he going to get a pit wall defensive? We're going to run the outside and they'll cut back. Let's see. Oh, he's oh, deep again. He might lose two here, won't he? Bit of contact. He's down to P8. Chat, if you've been watching this all the way through... Oh, mind you, Gobi's got Simard. Yeah, but I think Elite... I think, I think, Simard's toast. I think it's Elite. Look how Elite is fast as lap and checking out. Kandakli was two places away from Elite winning this championship. Muhammad Ali might be about to become a two -time Yeah, the commentators are exactly right. Look at all! Oh, oh, contact! He's gone off! He's got to stay behind him. The only thing is, Nathan, if you look at the rear view here, there's no one else behind, right? That is for certain. Smith will probably be pretty angry with himself there. Just different tyres, you've got to indeed preempt that. It has to be a different tyre situation. And maybe they, you know, the, the dry tyres. See how much he cut off that sausage. The end of this race. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Joglu, as I've just stated, is hanging on to his championship. So it's Michael life. Moaning. Wasn't Michael Moaning well up in this race? He qualified high, didn't he? Yeah, he qualified first. Game over. You can just see that for Kudak Siagli. This does not have the. I wonder if Levesque is going to have it. <laughs> He's only about five seconds. Smith, Smith up inside, maybe. Closer and closer to the overtake against him. Oh, that's a strong. Round the outside. Go. Oh, oh what a move! Oh my days! Someone was going across ahead of him. He's moaning. I'm wondering if Kudak on the wet tires now. Very quickly indeed. It's definitely a tire situation. Oh, you. It doesn't make any sense, right? They. But he went backwards in the beginning. Because Elif is losing time to McKean. As we see Simard now, Walker battling for position. Simard's Simard also down, going down. <laughs> uh, into what will be P... Well, now down to P7. Walker's moving up the order. Apparently... Who would have thought... Apparently, in the pits. A leaf. Yeah. Oh, down. there's no point in pitting, man. So apparently, a leaf is uh, going quite well a lot here. slower now. Fell off earlier in the race, got spun off the track, had regained a few positions... Halfway point. ...has run himself out, and is now just going to go inside and call the race for himself. Moni's going to get it. Moni's going to get Kundak Gioglu here. So the battle for P10 is happening right now. I think Moaning is about to put Kondakti Oglu for the, the thing is, who's behind Moaning? Woodrow is so far behind that Kondakti, he just needs an issue in any of the top 10, right? The That's it. To win this. So Let, let's say he... To first and he had oh, so by the big slide! Oh, the top nine. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is, that is some story. Great story if that comes out. Philippe Samard still trying to fight for his positioning over by P6 as well. This is backing Walker everything up to Kondakli. <laughs> <laughs> it is. He's right there again. And now going into the chicane will block him off from any sort of retake. Oh man, this can just change so quickly. Still damp conditions. I don't understand the tyres, Nathan, at all. But I just don't know. Alu Gobi currently in fourth, Lim Snookan. It's literally a crossover point between. Ryan Walker, seven. You know, like on, on Gran Turismo, you've got yeah. that bar that fills up. Oh, right oh he's like a no no rear end there. Tide, but on countback, he has two race wins, and the Leaf would only have one after this one finishes. If Kundak Chioglu loses this spot, which is looking more and more likely each and every corner we take, Mohamed Alif then, by one point, I think, wins it. Moaning. Alif might win it by one point. <laughs> Our championship <laughs> leader, second last season, looking to go one better. Over who? Is that over Simard or No, over Kondaktio. Simard's nowhere, because Simard's not. So if, so if Kondaktio wins or gains one more position, then he wins, right? If, if Kondaktio just stays in this position, he wins. He gets a $10,000. Oh, he's gone deep again. Maybe that's his line. I don't know. Oh, it's nail biting time here. Kandaklu is Joglu. one position away from Joglu losing ten thousand dollars here. Closer, Getting six and a half thousand. But. Or worse finish here. Once more, the Hope you're enjoying it, Mojo. It's been quite dramatic, hasn't it? Josh McKean has the fastest lap. And he's catching a leaf. A leaf needs to win this, doesn't he? Mm. I wonder who's racing for what team, Nathan. If 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 McKean's racing for team seeming as a leaf, you'd say. To stay behind. Head a little bit here, starting to gain a bit more distance in front yeah, of Michael Moaning. So things maybe starting to take a turn for the better as we enter those final ten minutes now. McKean, fastest lap of the race. I think Moaning sort of slowed Could down a little bit, hasn't he? Have a say in how this championship 
is he's, indeed he's dealt dust. out. Elise loses one position and he cannot win the championship. He has to win this race. So there might be another seven twist, minutes there to might go. Be another turn as we see Walker trying to keep Simard honest. We've got Smith just in behind. Looks like Moaning's just dropping a little bit further back now to Kundakchioglu. I don't know if Moaning's just got, it, got it in, in him. Championship winning yeah. position. This is absolutely fascinating. Walker I think Woodrow. Smith, can they get I'm not sure who you're catching. I can't work out what tyres can that slog lose on. Do you think he could have just overheated something? I think it might have been a mistake. No, I, I don't see how that would be possible. Like, you definitely wouldn't overheat the wets. Yeah. And anything, and I mean anything. Even in these conditions, because right it is okay. still damp. But Which one's gonna the dry tyres would no wouldn't be overheating in these conditions either. See if Moaning's going to get a run. I think he might be too far behind. I don't know if these drivers are trying to go on the wet line there or something. Mm, to pull down their tyres. So Smith and Walker must be on the wet then. I th so I those are guaranteed positions for Kandad Shioglu. Well, if he's on dry, why did he... F did the track get... Currently with the fastest no, lap on the I don't track know what happened. And aside from that as well, the time between him and Elite still slowly shrinking. Because I just noticed in Streamlabs for, yeah. for the Logitech. Yeah. That pass opportunity may very well show up oh. for Josh McKean. It's, it's telling the people they've won yeah, the, and the, then um, removing the them from the list. Water on circuit right now is at a bit of a premium. Really? So I don't I don't know what Streamlabs... I mean, they're on the Twitch... On the Twitch I think that's, they're doing a giveaway there on, um, like, exclamation mark McLaren. You win like a. Um, yeah, okay. I entered it as well, but it said Jardier won something, <laughs> and then it said has been removed as a winner due to inactivity. I, I don't know. I do, I seeing the same thing we're doing now. I don't think I could enter it because <laughs> Logitech have asked me to stream it, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, Logitech G said he's not eligible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now starting to pay off for Simard. He's starting to close up and move back up through the order. Kundakchioglu also doing exactly right. the same. I think Simard's on the dry tyres as well. Five minutes to go. I think the, the other thing here that is unlikely, it's very it's unlikely, but if Simard were to get to win this well, race, he would win championship. Yeah. But he's like 20 seconds behind <laughs> me, basically. <laughs> oh, Kundakchioglu lost out to Smith. No, he was always there. He's he's. Uh, I'm sure he was eighth. No, he was always ninth. He was ninth. If he goes to tenth, I think he loses. Smith is getting all of that wet stuff on his tyres. Yeah, we definitely got a race, Mojo. I feel like if Levesque had been in this race, I feel like he would have created a story here. You know what I mean? He was actually up there, but he just decided to basically throw it in. Does not want to get involved in that. He, maybe he knows, maybe he doesn't. Right now, he is tied on points. He's got it on countback. He's going to be the champion on countback. The last thing he wants to do right now is catch up to a group of cars in front. Have yeah, so maybe Kandak actually, he, at the moment he's level on points, but he's going to win it because he's 1-2 right and a leaf full of 1-1, one, one, which is completely fair enough, I think. Not a part of his playbook. This is but... not something he was going into this race thinking, oh, maybe... <laughs> we weren't even looking at a leaf. He was looking to push Simard and go out for, to win three from three. It's not quite worked out, but I'll tell you what, this has been amazing to be a part of. This has been a phenomenal championship. This is a heat format. McKean, McKean is, is slowly catching. That's, that's true, yeah. Second has gone out in the last few laps. Always can make a mistake as well, Nathan, even at this level, right? Yeah. I think Moaning's best chance is if Kandaklu get, gets a bad last corner and Moaning goes into it in T1. Walker seems to be catching somewhat again. No further mistakes yep. are made over the remaining McKean's catching a leaf. Yeah, yeah definitely. Here he is, that's the gap there. I think that's to me that's less than two point one seconds. The leaf's taking a wider line. Keep the tires cool. Is well, it's up for a battle. Running out of laps, eh? I think we have got one more lap remaining after this one. So I think we're on the penultimate lap of the G Challenge Championship this year. Uh, Kundak Chioglu is now 1.3 seconds clear of Moaning. 1.5 seconds. Oh, I'm not sure, you know. Moaning. There might be two Kundak laps Chioglu left. Just hemorrhaging time has 
by this Yeah, they would have gone over. How long's the lap been? Managed to, to get himself in a position to win this championship. Uh, about a minute 50, I think, like in these conditions. A minute 50, I don't know. I'll, I'll go as far as I can go down, but now I'm just going to just consolidate my position. I'm good. I'm good to go. Minute 50, I don't think so. So actually, I don't know. Solid footing and like you said, the Where's the leader? Yeah, actually, we're not watching. Like, yeah, we are watching really leader. I think that'll be just short. Mm, yeah, that's true. Do you know what? I think McKean might get this. I think it's a Leaf will have to defend this like crazy because he knows he, he will cross the line. It'd be like Massa Hamilton thing, won't it? He'll cross the line and just yeah. <laughs> hope something's happened. Mm. It's greasy now. It's gone from damp to greasy. There is conductor here, right? So, yeah, uh, Moaning's properly dropped off. Yeah, Simard just... But I think maybe they went on the same tyre as the top two or something, I don't know. Uh, do you think pads and it's cool? Do you think they have setups, Nathan? Like, maybe they got it wrong on temps or something, I don't know. Ducks. He went out there and he did absolutely just seems weird that they both dropped like a stone but maybe they just weren't that comfortable here i don't know it's about being the fastest out on circuit it's sometimes about making that right strategy call being bold with your definitely something different has happened that elite has done as we head then through turn number three up towards turn number four it's just a really think, good performance i think he's going to cross the line first here so we will the margin of nothing have to wait another 20 seconds to confirm and on count back it's not quite going to be enough Likely once again, Michael Kundak Siaglu teeing himself up to be our potential champion here. The Logitech McLaren G -Chow. He'll be the champion for 20 seconds, basically, because he'll have the most points. Yeah. Coming around over here towards the chicane, just kind of looking for a I don't think Kundak Siaglu is going to lose out to Moaning. Nah, I, don't, I think Moaning's dropped off. I think he's been sensible as well about just maintaining that gap, not getting anyone ahead of him a bit frenzied. <laughs> the final few seconds of racing. No, we're heading into the final. You That's really interesting, though. Hungara I don't. He oh, didn't really seem to have the pace to indicate he was on the wet tire at the start. Yep. And there was the opposite, even. He still hasn't. Yeah, he still hasn't really got the pace to show that he might be on the dry tire either. But you could argue, say, he's done. Exact. Well, not exactly, but he hasn't dropped below what he needed to do, right? So he's given all of the margin. <laughs> He was like fighting, he was defending like crazy at the beginning. Today's championship is going mm. to go to the 2019 Wow, a Leaf won it in 2019. Sorry, the APAC uh, champion for the Logitech McLaren. There he is, though. This is going to be it. By the if the mass is right. <laughs> it's, a tie. it's a tie on points if he doesn't make a mistake around that final corner. Came second last in the year end, in I the think, McLaren, Logitech, McLaren G Challenge. relative to the split, I don't think his pace was that good, but he almost, a Leaf ran out of drivers to overtake him, in a way, I think. The job done. Oh, it wasn't easy. There was definitely so Woodrow's a seven seconds behind. behind. As the race was happening, but it doesn't matter how fine the margins are. I wonder if they know for sure. Has Late penalties won. as well, maybe. Michael Kondakchog. Oh, I'm, I'm losing words. <laughs> I don't know what's going to say that. That was incredible. Nice. Incredible stuff from Michael Kundas. Yaglu gives us a near dominant performance. Yeah, that was interesting. Unfortunately, the wet track throws him off, and the tire Maybe we'll get some interviews after. They'll come out after or something. Final race, but he is just forums, Discord. I want to see these prize draws. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, if, are they going to draw everything? That's pretty and crazy if they do. I guess the competition is now closed. They know everyone that has entered, right? I guess so. Yeah, it makes sense if they show all the winners in one go. Man, these guys are so good and they speak so fast. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm... I love this championship, always have done, like it's something I've been involved in from, from the very beginning and I'm at a loss for words there. Struggle to get words out at the end because that was, it was genuinely like if you wrote a script you couldn't make it mm -hmm. that dramatic. It was perfect, it was nice to see a bit of weather. Uh, um, I'm glad, I'm glad he hung on, he deserves it because he Absolutely. was so dominant in the first few races. But I'm glad it happened like that because it was really exciting that <laughs> final race. In North America, I said, could they steal the show? Absolutely, that was phenomenal.
constant change-ups too in terms of who we were seeing at the front of the pack in every single race like we mentioned at Lou Gobi who had been struggling in the first two races Welcome so Smush the back of the pack for a lot of it. Thanks everyone in chat who's um, been watching and enjoying this to us it's obviously really important to us as a community that we have this relationship with Logitech and so it's absolutely insane to see the support and hopefully we can do more stuff get more involved do more giveaways welcome back Michael but a P2 is a phenomenal performance. Ryan E as well, finally having a good consistent race of his own. We had some pacing issues with him race. on races number one and two, but he holds it together and actually ends up in P3 at the end of this How's one. It? 11 <laughs> points. But it's our Muhammad Alif that takes wow, the yeah, full spread of 20. Josh McKean, 15 in P2. Alou Where does Simard come then? Simard come Tyler third, Lipsukin presumably, yeah. Takes se seven points, excuse me, in fifth place. Philippe Simard takes only five points in sixth place, which is going to potentially hurt his finish. We'll have to see in a second. Ryan Walker takes four. Quinn Smith takes three. And of course, moving down from that, Michael conducts. It was crazy at the beginning with everyone going up and down. Nice yeah, that is the best two points he has ever earned in his sim racing career. It is, is this the final standings? The final standings oh. then. And there it is. It is a tie, but on count back, it is Michael Kondakcioglu, who is the champion. It's a bit like Premier League, isn't it? On, on the one hand, it's very mm. close. On the other hand, America, it's like goal difference. He was so far ahead on goal difference. Came out there and mm. got it was close. It was brilliant to watch, but he gets the championship. Man, Muhammad he'll Alif, be maybe he'll be thinking in the first race could have relief have done better. He only got so, so on seventh close, third place so, there, isn't so it? Philip Simard, last fourth place. Uh, is it? With this class of car, and I think it might go 20, 15, 11, <laughs> 7, 20, 15, 11, 7. So he came fourth. Okay. So he's had a free. He's that. come Ryan first, Monroe second, and fourth. I mean. Michael Moaning in seventh. Ryan Can't. Finishes in it's had a pretty good show. Snookin finishes in ninth himself. position. Rounding out the top ten, Alu Gobi with that exceptional result gets that top ten position. Once again, good bounce back from Ryan Yee as well. Already I mean, Le if Levesque had got 15 there. points there, one, Nathan, points as he, he would have come third, I think. Race number two just <laughs> barely sneaks yeah. his way into the top ten there. And then finally for race number three, has a really solid finish in P3. Gets some serious points in there and is able to get him a much better Seems overall. like he was involved in there. Yeah. A few too many incidents to be honest. Interesting they don't do like, another point of fastest lap, right? Oh, this is very interesting. This is very nice graphic, actually, isn't it? Ends up with the fastest overall time. So what you were saying about McCormack. Why don't you break down our next two tracks as well? Yeah, I love that. Splunk I think Kangaroo Ring's not representative because it was wet, the, the but. Dub there. I mean, they got Dara McCormack. So actually, hold on. That means that Dom Dara McCormack didn't do the triple triple. Oh yeah. Yeah. True. So Dominic Blyer picking up a fastest lap there in race number one. So that's uh, one thing. You must it's quite a big difference in Masano, uh, isn't so it? Dara McCormack and then Dara McCormack. Who well, it's half a second in Masano today. and uh, Brands between North America and EMEA. Go Canada, yeah. And they're on getting the win. Dara McCormack with some beautiful performance over the course of the EMEA finals, but as we saw as you know what Nathan, it it rained in um, APAC as well. So I wonder if some people would have looked at APAC and be like, this is what exactly what happened. Because Innistrosa won it in the wet. Oh, I didn't even know it's the winners. Oh, are those the driver sweepstakes then? Yeah. For these ones. Michael Kundak Sioglo from North America. But as well, so it was two prizes, State, Daniel Lobau and Daniel A big congratulations Kutu to Sinski. Daniel Lobau and Daniel I think so, yeah. Kostienski. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing That's a huge prize, right? <laughs> mm. That is a huge prize. That's a very same package in the driver sweepstakes. And ladies and gentlemen, that does it for the 2022 oh. season of the Logitech McLaren. That's it's quite good. Challenge. They they um, did the whole draw there in that package. I'm quite impressed by the presentation. Yeah, Maybe we'll get more involved enough to step to, uh, up our game. Made this possible. It's a pleasure to be involved. Yeah. In Logitech McLaren G Challenge. Um, I just hope they it's, send out my headphones now. It's been fun. It's been fun. Oh, <laughs> a little bit different this time. Last year was uh, was stressful. <laughs> no, that was really good. A little bit more streamlined, and uh, we don't have twelve different winners. Uh, but ultimately, I feel we have four very worthy winners and some some new names. Four winners, ten thousand pounds for each winner. They all fly out to Red Bull Ring. Two driver sweepstakes as well. And we've got our own giveaway in the chat. There's a pinned link there where you just enter and you can win a G G923. Yep, that's the one. And that chat is going to wrap it up. Nathan and I have done a um, quite an interesting journey for us, isn't it? I, just, oh, I can't type in the chat. It's been interesting and a lot of fun. Yeah. I've learned a lot about ACC. Yeah. 
think it's um, been good. I think we can hit it next year with even more. Okay, let me just see if I can get in the uh, center bit there with me. Well, I'm tired after all that. Yeah, we'll have to think about how we can take things to the next level and, um, you know, get people. Because the thing is, the thing about the G challenge is that it's just racing all the way through the splits, isn't it? So you just, the idea is you race against people mm -hmm. of your level. And obviously, as yeah. a pyramid, it progresses and you have the very top split. Similar concept yeah. to, to GT like World Series, except people have issues with like the quality and cleanness of racing in GT World Series, but this is a bit more curated. Um, yeah, but yeah, nice. that's the thing with GT. It's not GT is not regulated. Yeah, like you literally have just a sixteen people in a race. Those are the only people that know about the race. Yeah, you know, and this is videoed and sent off to. Um, I'm I'm talking about you know the stages that we do at home. Yeah, before they get to the final. No, there's no there's like no, there's no regulation at all. Yeah, but yeah, I think that would encourage a few more people to behave. Yeah, a bit more than um, some of the stuff that we see. Yeah, we'll have to think about it, see what they do for next year, and have to package the content, and put it in a playlist so people can look back at all the stuff that we've done, like unbox the wheels and the pedals, and oh, I'd see the the race logic video went live. I think yesterday when we were mm -hmm. using that kind of stuff as well. But yeah, thanks everyone to chat. Thanks Mojo. I know you've been through here all the way. Michael Smush, Al Capone, Kip, anyone else that's watching now, really appreciate you coming along and joining us for something different than we normally do on the channel. It really means a lot, actually, because um, I think building this relationship with Logitech is, is really, really, really important. They've shown us a lot of love. And I'm trying to do the best I can as well and in, in um, what they want me to help with in terms of accessibility and sort of promotion. So... It's a really good relationship we have here, similar to the one I have with GT Mega. And yeah, Nathan, maybe I need to check these dates for the 31st. Maybe we'll do some karting and clip on um, the mics. Maybe we can, if we're going to race together, maybe, I don't know, some intercom would be great. I don't know if we can make that work. I have to think about it. Um, get get these mics and then produce a video yeah. of us racing. Yeah, we can make that work. Yeah. We can make, for me, it'd probably be headphones and a discord call yeah. most likely um yeah nothing too fancy if we do intercom we could one i don't know what races there are but we could do one session just like a open session and just do mm -hmm. like some techniques and stuff it kind of <laughs> means you, it's basically just like having a it's, track day for that amount of time isn't it yeah it's gonna be a sprint race i think so i think what is it 10 minute qualifying 20 minute race Awesome. Is that Sodis or DMXs? Yeah, probably Sodis. Yeah. Nice. No, I, I, I really like that. It's those so new Sodis that I really like, actually. The steering wheel, the chassis. Yeah. I thought I wouldn't like the engine, but it's just, it's worked out quite nice for me. Thanks, Kip. Cheers, Kirith and Nathan. Yeah. Right. Let's wrap this up then. And. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe next stop you see me and Nathan will be be some karting, hopefully. Do some cool content. Mojo saying it was great having Nathan on for chatting. There we go. Oh, thanks. It means a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does mean a lot. We're just we're just people just like I think just chatting about motorsport and stuff. There's no Yeah. It's that's the core of it, so hopefully you've enjoyed that. Alright, but yeah, but thanks everyone for joining. I'm gonna end the stream now and lots of videos and stuff coming on the channel this week nathan's channel if you go to my channel and then go to like if you scroll to the bottom of the page it has nathan's channel so you can make sure to go there uh, drop a like subscribe for that karting content and ac and ac content at the moment and yeah uh, we'll a bit of ac acc karting bit of everything i i racing as well yeah a tiny bit yeah yeah all right but yeah, thanks everyone. Really appreciate the uh, support on the stream. And we'll see you again very soon.